Hey, yo, Flyers! I am the Flying Fabio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the channel. Man, hoo -hoo. Yeah, we are the overcoming Fabio this morning. Yeah, Ninja, yep. <laughs> well, you should see what it's going to be like when we get to Iceland. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening. Had some issues this morning. I apologize for being almost a full hour late, 50 minutes late. Um, yeah, had a had an interesting time this morning. Um, by the way, here is a time when I appreciate that Microsoft Flight Simulator does its own installation. Steam automatically uninstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator for me. It did me that favor last night. I don't even know if it was last night or this morning because I was using the sim all the way until I shut the computer down yesterday, right? And it was fine. And then I fired it up this morning. And actually, the first sign that there was something wrong is I ran Orbic Centro, and Orbic Centro said, "Hey, we can't find any Sims in your in your computer." What? What? Rescan? Nope, can't find anything. Um. Okay. So try to uh, run Flight Simulator, and uh, I have a little desktop icon, right? Double click that, and I get the installation prompt for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the Steam installation prompt. Hey, you want to install Microsoft Flight Simulator? What? So, turns out what happened is, yes, Steam did, by itself, uninstall Flight Simulator. But it, it only uninstalled the same thing you guys download when you first install it, which is, I think, 1.6 gigs, maybe some. Uh, it's a small, small-ish thing. The sim itself was evidently still here, right? Um, so, I reinstalled, um, reinstalled the Steam sim. Hey, hey, kitty. How's it going? You missed that start by a few minutes, girl. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now everything works. Super confidence in everything at this moment. It's a great, great time to take off in this kind of weather and fly five hours over water, isn't it? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I know, Oral, yeah. By the way, chat, thanks for helping. Uh, appreciate you guys being on Discord, trying to troubleshoot this with me. Ah, uh, man. <laughs> what, what a start. What a start. It is indeed, Pahan. How's it going? Thanks, Ninja. Hey, Sappy, how are you? Scob, what's up? Araco, Findle, by the way. Hey, Kirk, how are you, man, Oral? Mountain Man, Addy Boy, Rodopsin. Kalinskald, what's up? Coulter GP, hey man, how are you? Daiki, uh, bom dia, Coulter. Uh, Mineirinho, bom dia, bom dia. Mechanical is here. Tickle Parts, hey buddy, how are you? Mr. 90. And yes, I saw that. I don't know if it's three Shiamenon or S Shiamenon. Hey, thank you very much for that, uh, that hosting, that raid. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Snowhill. How's Norway today, sir? Skippo and Prowling Panther. Let's go with those subs, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, that's seven months for Prowling Panther. Hey, Deuce. How's it going, buddy? How are you, man? Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate the sub. Skippo. Thank you very much, too, man. Great stuff. Oh, JW with three months at Tier 1. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I have them all muted for now. Let me unmute because I think for now it's okay. We don't have any craziness going on. Patrick, good morning. Triple seven. Hello, hello, sir. Uh, let's see. Kaspar is here too. Hey, man. How are you? Sticks. And of course, the one and only Fort Anubis. Burator. Hey, man. I'm normally a lurker, but enjoy your streams a lot. Got Piper bundle yesterday. You have a lot to answer for. <laughs> uh, Burator. Hey, man. Uh, I'm sorry and you're welcome simultaneously, right? That's awesome, dude. Enjoy it. Hey, Kaspar, thank you very much for the 100 bits, buddy. Travis son, what's up? Guys, Orbix has a free Iceland mesh download for this. Yes. Yes, well, not for this, for the sim, right? As you said. Uh, hey, Jim, how are you, man? Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe that's all in our Discord, in announcements. Let, a, let a me show you. Check this out. All right, so if you go into our announcements channel... Uh, you're gonna see all the sceneries that I'm using today. There's actually quite a few um, This is a uh, you know, you wouldn't think so perhaps if you think about 
popular areas of the world, but Iceland has a lot of stuff uh, for free on Flight SimTO and a little bit of Orbix. So um, both Reykjavik and Keflavik airports, because as you will see very soon here, because we have to do a little flight planning before we go, ha, weather, ha, hmm, exactly like I like it, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to get into either of these airports. So we're going to have both um, and try our luck. Hey, Flies, how are you, man? Goblin Zeus, hello. Kopi, how are you, man? How are you? Uh, let's see here. Oh, Norway is blistering hot these days, so can't really complain. All right. Good. That's good. Edo. Hello, hello, sir. Um, Konnichiwa. How are you? JW, how are you, buddy? Kristoff, let's go. Uh, so, we have Kefelvik, Reykjavik. Then, there is a uh, tree fix for... Iceland, because, uh, well, evidently the sim is putting trees where they shouldn't be. There is an Orbix free mesh, and it's high quality free mesh for Iceland, so you want to get this. And there is an overall awesome package uh, on Flight SimTO called Iceland Overhaul. And it fixes a bunch of stuff too, and works with the Orbix mesh. They updated it to, works with the, to work with the Orbix mesh. Very awesome, very awesome. Just like the weather here in Narsarsvak at the moment. Hey, Drinking Timmy, what's up, man? How are you? How are you? How are you, buddy? Sneaky! Leia! Hey! Buenos dias, Leia! Sneaky, how are you? My daily dose of five years screw is necessary as coffee. Oh, buddy! Let's go. I have a, Actually, I'm gonna make some coffee, but I'm rocking an invisible drink at this moment. Oh, no, Mort. What's going on? Oh. Oh, boy. Got a little buffer. Okay. Okay. Hey, kitty. All right. Well, guys, let's get planning. And let me tell you, it's not just the weather at the origin and the weather at the destination that's going to be a challenge. Today we have en route challenges also. Hey, Deuce. Just working my life into the ground is per usual. Also, did we miss the ND yesterday? Was it yesterday? Ugh. Sorry, buddy. I'll, uh, I'll catch up. Normally, Abby and I are on top of that, but... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Oro, I heard from a couple of people. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're already in there. Hey, in a box, man. How are you, man? So, uh, our flight today, let's, uh, let's get, let's get, let's get it, actually, right? Let's go with our flight planner here. Load it. And we're also going to load, haha, <laughs> great success. And we're also going to load this guy right here. Skew T diagram. Riss, are you here yet, buddy? Are you here yet? Because Riz taught me all about skew tees. I didn't know about these guys, and man, they're very interesting. I showed you guys one already, right? Very, very interesting. Okay, so... Uh, actually, let me go here. Uh, let's do flight planner. All right. Well, last week was Father's Day, right? And we said we're going to reschedule for next Sunday, but it wasn't. I wasn't home yesterday. Oh, okay, so it's... You see, I was here. I was waiting, Deuce, and uh, you just didn't show up. Alright guys, if you haven't seen this, you have different plugins you can use with Windy. It's pretty handy stuff. Pretty handy stuff. Um, basically, you can create waypoints on the map. You can create a, you can actually load an entire GPX flight plan. There's a couple of other formats too. Our flight is straight, so we don't really have to worry about it. Uh, we can just create waypoints. And I believe, yeah, we use this as a start. And let's go over here to Reykjavik and use this as the... And there's our flight. And we can choose a speed and altitude and things like that. Uh, but what I wanted to show you guys, what I wanted to show you is that at the surface, okay, nothing, nothing too bad. I mean, a little bit of crosswind. We should be able to handle that. And it's going in the right direction because if it pushes us off course a little more than we thought, well, we're going to be on the north side of the route and we should still be able to find Iceland, right? If it's pushing us the other way, uh, if it was coming from the north to the south, eh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Deuce. Oh, nice, Ninja. That's awesome. Okay, so the problem, though, well, not problem, but the challenge, I suppose, is when we go to 10,000 feet, about the altitude we like to fly. Oh, okay. Okay. 47 knots at 10,000 feet. 
All right. Still going the right way because it's pushing us towards the more island that we have side. Also, though, it's going to be a tailwind, right? There's a tailwind component here that's going to help us on the crossing. So that's good. What's not so good is that we don't have GPS. We're going to be doing this all by calculating what headings we have to fly for how long. And if we get that wrong, um, we could we could miss Iceland, right? Hey, noise boy, how's it going, man? Uh, Coulter, this is Edge. Hey, Guybrush. Bonjour. So, uh, it's Edge. I used to use Chrome for a long time, but uh, somebody tipped me onto Edge, and I actually like it better than Chrome. Ugh. I need to wash my mouth with soap saying that, but it's true. It is true. Hey, Zasran, how are you, buddy? How are you? Okay, so. Uh, let's see here. What I also did, what I also did is I created a little flight plan for us to make things go a little faster, right? Oh, great. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, we'll create it again. We'll create it again. Fine. It's a bit of a pain to create these with the intervals that I like. Because I like to divide them and create user waypoints. Okay. See, that's not exactly in the middle, so we have to move it a little bit. Let's try that. Oh, too much. About that much. All right, I'll take that. Brave browser, huh? Don't know it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it uses the Chrome engine, but it's actually better than Chrome. They added quite a few things um, that Chrome doesn't have, or at least doesn't have yet. And uh, yeah, it's a better experience. It's incredible, actually. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. All right. Moving these guys around a little bit. Why? Because I want to have about the same time in between waypoints. It's You can do whatever you want, right? You can put these waypoints anywhere you want. Uh, I like to have close to the same amount of time between these waypoints. So, and by the way, because of the wind, we need a lot of waypoints, right? Because I want to have checks every 40, 50 miles or so. Make sure that we're going where we think we're going. Okay, right there. 43, 42, that's not bad. That's not bad. So it's just tedious. It's not hard. It's just tedious creating this kind of stuff. Okay. Let's get the middle here. Okay. Oh, 78 and 78. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Okay. Another one here. Now, one of the bad things about using these waypoints in Sky Vector is that... You can't name them. They're user waypoints, right? I mean, they're really just latitude and longitude, but you can't give them a name, which is fine over here, I suppose, but it's not fine when you look at the nav log, right? Hey, Mark, how's it going, man? Yeah, Ninja, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I love the other uh, syncing to my phone, too. Okay, maybe here. Uh, close enough. Close enough. Famous last words, right? 80, 87. Let's get a little better there. Little better there. All right. Split this guy up in half. Okay. Good enough. Split this guy up in half. A little bit this way, buddy. Okay. And now... And now, for our conclusion... And you can already see that Keflavik and Reykjavik, uh, not the best VFR day over there. But the thing that's even better is it's about to get worse. It is about to get worse. Alright, and here. That should be 40 there, yep. Okay, 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 okay. Leaving for Sao Paulo in a few hours. Oh, triple seven, that's awesome. From where, buddy? From where? And how long are you going to be there? And 
Do you want recommendations? <laughs> I'm sure you've been there before. Yeah, red box. That's one of the biggest differences that I've noticed is is a much smaller memory profile than Chrome. Chrome is awesome, but it eats RAM up. All right, here's our trip today, boys. Hoo-wee. But, but, well, so first of all, let's start with the origin, right? I think you see it. It's right there. But the weather currently at Narasarswak is wind 040 at 4. Okay, cool. So we can use the same runway we landed at to take off. Visibility 8,000 meters, light rain, fuel cloud 600, broken 2,900. Temperature 9, dew point 8. Okay. Okay, but perhaps not okay. Why? Well, because it's raining, right? Great. What's the problem? Well, the problem is as we climb, it's going to get colder. So eventually, if we're still in the clouds, all this water is going to turn into ice. 41 hour layover. Whoo! Triple seven. First of all, it's a huge flight to begin with. How long is the flight, triple seven? Is that a, uh, hold on. Is that a 13 hour flight? Hey, Sin, how's it going, buddy? Ah, pie wraps are pretty much a US only thing, DC. Most of the, the rest of the world doesn't have pie wraps. Doesn't mean that pilots are not talking to ATC, but they don't have a formal system of reporting and then reporting back. So we're going to use another trick. We're going to use another trick. Um, okay, so we have to contend with some potential icing on the way out. All right. But then, on the way in, of course, of course, the side of the island we're not going to be at looks great. The weather is pretty good. But we're going to land either, either right here in Keflavik or right here in Reykjavik. Right? Check out the weather. Oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. Nice, and that's good to hear, man. Um, so I basically just looked at this, right, and said, okay, so the weather we know at the origin here. Let's go to the destination. And I said, look at the, look at the uh, the side of the island that we don't we don't need. That's pretty good. All right. But Keflavik currently winds two four zero at six. Variable between two ten and two eighty. Okay. Visibility greater than 10 kilometers, overcast 900, temperature 8, dew point 7. Not too bad. Overcast 900, we can deal with that. They have an ILS, right? That brings us down to what? What does a regular standard ILS bring you down to? A minimum of how many feet above ground level? The problem is that temperature, right? Temperature 8 to dew point 7, there's only one degree spread between the temperature and the dew point. And that means there's likely low visibility either that just happened or that's coming. So let's look at the TAF, Terminal Air Forecast. That second line, it's issued June 28th at 1047 Zulu, and it's for June 28th at 12 Zulu, slash until June 29th at 12 Zulu. Okay, okay. Um, so it covers the period that we're gonna be, we're gonna be arriving at. Winds 240 at seven, visibility greater than 10 kilometers, scattered 600, well, okay, coming down a little bit, overcast 900, okay. But then you keep reading, you can skip the TX and TN. Look at that prob 40. That means a probability of 40%. And then it says tempo, temporarily. Oh, sorry, that probability is for that first line, right? It's a freighter only flight, 13 hours, yes. I augment, so I sleep for half of it. Eh, not bad. Drink Caipirinha for a night and deadhead back as a passenger of the PAX flight. Perfect, man. Perfect, you know what to do. You got this. <laughs> nice. Caipirinha, oof. That is a delicious but dangerous drink. All right, temporarily, and then it says 2817 slash 2823. So, June 28th from 1700 Zulu until 2300 Zulu, which is the period at which we're going to arrive there. Visibility 4,000 meters in mist overcast 500. Okay, a little bit later. Uh, next line, temporarily, from June 28th at 2300 Zulu until the 29th at 1200 Zulu, visibility 2500 meters, light drizzle, mist, and overcast 300. All right, so the weather is definitely getting worse, right? And these are forecasts. They can be off, they can get worse beforehand, or maybe later if we're lucky. How about uh, Reykjavik? It's not much better. 
It's overcast at 1100 right now, so it's 200 feet higher, right? And there's a bit of a bigger split between the temperature and the dew point. There's three degrees here as opposed to one, like you have in Keflavik. But if you look at the TAF, right? Uh, temporarily, I'm skipping in one line here. Temporarily on the 28th, between 1700 Zulu and 2300 Zulu, 4000 meters of visibility, mist overcast 700. That matches what Keflavik is doing. And then it gets worse later on. So, 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 yeah, it's going to be interesting. We think we're going to get in, but if the weather gets worse than expected, mm. could be could be interesting. We're definitely going to carry full fuel, and if we really have to, there are other airports in Iceland that we can try and go to, right? Um, it's just, you know, it's it, it's not a comfort comforting feeling to launch like this, but of course, we're going to. Kitty. <laughs> Why sub? I know. Why sub for the cats? For the cats, man. <laughs> yes, yes, DC. Now, we're going to help ourselves here a little bit with our origin. Let's go back to Windy. Oh, and by the way, probably save this flight plan like I thought I did yesterday. Okay. All right, because... Yeah, okay. So, you can put a flight plan in here. Very cool. Okay, got it. But, but... And by the way, here's the... Uh, Here is how the weather will progress as we move along here. Uh, it's going to fly level 140 for some reason. It should be going to 12,000. It's showing 1,400 or 14,000 here. Not sure why. Not uh, sure uh, why. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to be catching some good tailwinds. Ground speed is going to be 174 if we're doing 150 true airspeed, right? No, so triple seven, I don't, but sort of. What do I mean by that? Well, skew T diagrams. So this is something Rhys Chandler showed me the other day. I had, guys, I've been in aviation since I was, geez, a, a wee little boy. And I had never heard of these until Rhys showed it to me. Uh, they look complex, but they're really not. So let me turn on skew T. Okay. Got it. So, let's do a skew T right here. All right. So this right here is a skew T. It looks complicated. You don't have to really worry about what exactly everything here means. Uh, basically, first of all, forget all the green lines. Don't worry about the green lines for now. Focus on the solid black line and the dashed black line. And what those are is the solid black line is your temperature varying as it moves up in through the atmosphere the okay i said forget the green lines right the horizontal green lines you need to look at because those are pressure markers see how there's a thousand hpa right 900 hpa 800 700 600 etc that is the atmospheric pressure which you can convert to altitude right does anybody know how to do that no oh, mort sorry about that man Callan Scout, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. In real life, Jay Weasel, if I didn't have to go for whatever reason, I wouldn't, right? Um, flying five hours over water to an island in the middle of the North Atlantic where the weather is supposed to be close to minimums, it's really asking for trouble, right? If you had to go, it's a military mission, it's a, you know, whatever. I mean, you might get in. You might get in. It's just so risky that I wouldn't go. Oh, Christoph, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Hey, hey, we got to know these things. And I'm, I'm, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm not up on that either. So let's go HPA to altitude. Multiply atmospheric pressure in hectopascals times 100 using scientific calculator. Divide your answer by 101, 325. <laughs> I like that they say using a scientific calculator. Only a scientific, not just a regular calculator. Not just a regular calculator. Hey, hammers. Oh, yeah, 777. But hold on. We haven't even seen what this chart is telling us. This chart, this chart right here, is going to tell me the cloud tops. 
It already has told me the cloud tops. Now I just need to convert. So, let's see. Uh, looks like I have to multiply by 100 and divide by this. Okay. So, let's go back to this chart. Do you see how the dashed, which is the dew point line, is basically the same as the solid line? That means that your atmospheric temperature and the dew point are the same. Therefore, clouds, fog, right? All the way up till they split. And when they split, you're not going to see any more clouds. What? Yes. And then up here, look, they join again. Oh, clouds starting here. And clouds, 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 clouds. Oh, and then they split. No more clouds. What? Yes. That's how powerful this chart is. Because remember, if the dew point and the atmospheric temperature are the same, you can expect that what that means physically is that the air can no longer hold any moisture in it, right? And that moisture is going to condense and turn into little particles. Like what we have inside a cloud, right? Yeah, Clumsy. It's super. Hey, Clumsy's here. What's up, man? How's he going? Check him out on YouTube, by the way. Um, so, if they're split, then their condensation cannot form. You have no clouds. So this chart is telling me that from the ground up until 800 HPA, I, I can expect clouds. That's going to help me determine if the freezing level is going to be above the clouds or not. But I can already see that in the chart too. And then, starting at 400 HPA... Hey, two cats, how's it going? Don, Don, how are you, man? Uh, let's see. Then you can expect clouds from 400 HPA all the way up to about 350, 360 HPA or so. How cool is that? Oh, man, really? That's right, Findel. That's exactly right, dude. Plus, look at this blue line. Freezing level, right? Freezing level. That is at where temperature is going to reach zero. And it looks like, look, it looks like it is reaching zero right above where we have the split between dew point and temperature which means which means right hopefully uh we're gonna be out of the clouds before we get into the freezing layer this chart is called the skew t just like this watch skew t this add-on for Windy allows you to see the skew T for anywhere in the world. Can you post some more of the link here? You can select an airport or country specific. Wait, 777, are you talking about this chart right here? Because you can just get it on Windy for free and for anywhere in the world. There are a bunch of sites that do uh, skew T charts, but they're all, most of them are country specific. They're locked to the, only that country. Let's have a look at Reykjavik then. Click over here. Oh, this is pretty good, right? Look at this. No clouds, no clouds, no clouds, no clouds, no clouds, no clouds. Ah, getting close. Mm, I mean, it's, they're not touching, but maybe I expect a little bit of here, right? And then no clouds again. Let me ask 777 something. So 777 driver is a 777 driver. That's right. 777. How long have you been flying? In question number two, had you ever seen this chart? Because I'll say it again. I've been... Guys, I've been in aviation. My, my father was in aviation his whole life, so since I was born, I was in aviation. So, of course, at five years old, I don't expect to see this chart. But I've never even heard people talk about this chart. And it is extremely powerful. Extremely powerful. Being glitchy, yep. Just hopped in. Hey, yep. How's it going? It is temperature versus dew points. Yes, we're trying to predict cloud tops on the departure from Narsar Swap. Now, boys and girls, remember the fact, the fact that we expect the clouds to end before we get into the freezing level does not mean that we're not going to have icing. Because remember, icing can happen from about plus 10 to minus 10. Right? Hey, fanboy. Okay, look at that. Triple seven driver has been flying for 23 years and he also never heard of this chart. I don't understand how this chart is not more popular. I don't understand how I've been in aviation for the better part of 30 years. And I I had never even heard of it. Daza, what's up, man? 
I've learned about it in flight training and I have it in my weather briefing app in Germany. There you go, Christoph. That's awesome. That's awesome. Shocked, right? That Germany uh, knows about this. Of course they do. No, washed up. It is not. It is not a new chart. Wow, Mike, that's so weird. It's probably a server, local server, local-ish, right? Regional server kind of issue. By the way, on the right here, you're also going to have your wind barbs. And remember, these barbs have tails on them. A, a long tail like this is 10 knots. A short little tail is 5 knots. And a triangle means 50 knots. So it makes sense, right? The higher you go, the stronger the wind gets. That tends to happen in the atmosphere. Up here, very strong winds, right? Uh, 90 knots. And the direction here is basically also given, considering straight up would be north. Which makes sense, because look, the wind is coming from the southwest, so the barbs go that way. Ah, uh, there you go, Clumsy. See, some people here already watching you, man. That's really cool, dude. Really cool. In sim, the temperature range isn't valid. Got icing yesterday to minus 22. Citizen, that can happen in real life, right? It's just that it's more likely between 10 and minus 10. I saw your post, by the way. I think you were flying the, the Bonanza, right? Hey, Mikey, how's it going? So, um, <clears throat> it can happen with that outside of temperature because those can be super cooled liquid droplets. They should have frozen, but they haven't yet, right? And they are very, very cold. Hey, Maddie, by the way, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Sorry, I didn't even see that you were hosting me there. Much, much love, sir. All right. Yeah, I have a feeling 777 is going to be checking these charts a lot as he flies around the world now. 777, actually, let me know how accurate these charts were with that sort of, you know, the little cloud prediction trick that, uh, that I showed. Okay, so maybe no icing on the departure. That's making me feel a little better. But now we still have to figure out what are we going to do with this crosswind, right? And tailwind, but I mean, the crosswind is what's going to... Yeah, Roscott. Hello, hello, sir. How are you? Oh, interesting, Ninja. Yeah, apparently, guys, apparently Twitch is having issues this morning, so apologies on their behalf. Yeah, there you go. There you go, 777. Very interesting. I mean, you can't show a pilot something this powerful and not expect them to use it, right? Not expect them to use it. Okie dokies. All right, so back to here. Now, remember, Sky Vector does have winds aloft, right? So if I tell it, hey, we're going to depart, like, right now. Let's go, because I really want to get going. At 1300 Zulu today, right, which is local 11 a.m. in Arsarswak, it now can look at winds aloft and make a forecast for me of what headings, what wind I'm going to have along these waypoints, and therefore what headings I would need to fly. I'm also going to plug in... Our aircraft in here, I'm going to say that uh, I'm actually going to do 150 for the speed. Altitude, um, I don't know if I'm going to go 12,000 because the higher we go... <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, isn't that amazing, Clumsy? Roscut and his interactive checklist, man. Or highlight checklist, however we call that. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because look, the higher we go, the stronger that wind's going to get. Right? Which, again, you're like, wow, even better tail or tailwinds. Yes, but also stronger crosswinds and varying stronger crosswinds, which is going to make it a bit more challenging for us to stay close to the route by just dead reckoning. So I think 10,000 is what we're going to do today. I'm going to try 10,000. Okie dokie. Uh, fuel is full. Okay, everything there. Let's look at the navlog. Uh, yeah, for something across the ocean, how safe is it to plan on the winds being what they say they will and say make an initial leg further south since the crosswind looks like 30 to 40 um, uh, meters? Meters? Or it's like upstream always in one direction. Well, a cat one flight. <laughs> yeah, this cat is awesome, man. Both my cats are awesome. So, um... Finn, though, it's not very safe. It's not very safe to cross dead reckoning, right? In the olden days, like when guys were flying DC-6s around the world, over the Pacific, where you have very little land um, between, say, Asia or Oceania and America, 
they did celestial navigation right they were looking at stars they were looking at the sun they were measuring those things and figuring out their position based on that they weren't just dead reckoning like we're gonna do today so even back in the day when people did these flights they would use a sextant and do some celestial navigation we don't have that capability yet in this sim yet in this sim right so for now all we need to do, all we can do is heading and time could also use the gps but come on that's too easy ah so mr ice i don't know if you saw i don't know if you saw hey alpha gag is here with a raid hey man how's it going alpha hello everybody i'm the flying fabio this is sunny and welcome to my channel yeah yeah exactly triple seven yet yet Oh, all right, citizen. I was just saying, don't count on anything in the sim. If you are in clouds at all past freezing, you will get icing. Avoid clouds, period. That's not exactly true, citizen. I've flown plenty through clouds and, and below freezing temperatures and not gotten any ice. This flight's going to be a total of 3 hours and 47. It's going to be a quicker flight because of a nice tailwind. I mean, look at our ground speed. Our ground speed is going to be 180, 170, 180, 190. Pretty awesome, right? Ah was a great stream. I also played Flight Sim. Oh, that's awesome, Alpha. That's so cool, dude. I am fine, buddy. I am fine. I hope you're fine, too. Hey, Franco. This is going to be on East US. East US. Okay, so... Nav... Or, sorry, Sky Vector and its Navlog have done the heavy lifting for us. Look, they are telling us what the wind is going to be at these different altitudes. Look at this. 46 knots, 45. Uh, and the direction, right? We have temperatures here, too. And look, the temperatures are hanging around zero at 10,000 feet. Okay, yeah, it has gotten much better since launch. Um, our true airspeed, we said it's going to be about 150, right? Okay. Then it's figuring out what magnetic headings we need to fly between those waypoints. So we're going to have to be very careful about this, right? Very careful about this. Um, and we can only do this by time because we're not going to have a GPS to locate these points, right? So, we're going to fly this heading for that long. And then we're going to fly this heading for that long. And then this heading for that long. And we hope that after 3 hours and 47, we've... The sim has matched the real world. Because if we were flying in the real world, this would be pretty accurate. But even in the real world, those winds are still forecast. They can change a little bit. We know a lot about the atmosphere nowadays. But it's still an art more than it is. Well, it's probably 50% art, 50% science by now. Uh, windy, is it mostly consistent with MSFS live weather? It is. It is clumsy. Because F MSFS live weather is consistent with reality. It's not perfect, but it's getting better and better. And s lately has been really good. We'll see today, clumsy. If we find Iceland <laughs> and we took that long, then, then it, it worked. But last Monday, when we flew from Goose Bay all the way to Narsarswak, we dead reckoned the entire time, and we got there, I think, only about 10 miles offset. Oh, which reminds me. I'm going to run Little Nav Map, because I forgot to do this last time. Oh, I ran Little Nav Map last time, but I forgot to connect it to the sim. Uh, and so, how do I remove this? No? Uh, I'm going to do it this time, only so that after the flight, I'm not going to look at it, right? Because that's cheating. That defeats the whole purpose of the flight. But after the flight, we're going to look, and we're going to see... We're going to see, um, yeah, we're going to see if uh, we stayed close to the route. Okay, remove this and that. No? No? Okay, I guess I have to go to, hold on. I'm just cleaning up my, uh, I was doing some measuring stuff. There we go. There we go, okay. Okay, so, <clears throat> I'm going to show you guys this, right? Little nav map. Uh, currently not connected to the sim, so it doesn't know where I am. So I'm going to connect it. There we go. But I am going to turn this airplane symbol off, but leave the trail on. So let me delete the trail that we had here. I was doing some practice for this weekend's mystery flight. Oh. Oh. Okay. And as we fly along, uh, we're going to try and be then on that straight line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, hey, Narsar Swak is my origin. Okay. Reykjavik is my destination. Okay. And that's 
the great circle line. That's it's curved here because we made a sphere turn into a flat map. But this in reality is a straight line. So we'll see how close we stay to this if we even find Iceland. So for now, what I'm gonna do is not show the aircraft position, but it is it is tracking. Uh, let me see. Show simulator aircraft trail on map. Uh, question for you, chat. If I, because I don't want to, I don't want to like risk, you know, this window is going to be behind my other windows, but I don't want to risk this coming up and then me seeing the red little track I have for the aircraft. So my question to you is this. If I disable show simulator aircraft trail map, which is this button here, will it still have the track recorded? And then at the end of the trip, I can turn this on and see the track. Do you guys know? Oh, Adams, you don't have to worry about it, dude. I'm, I'm my worst drill sergeant. Awesome. Okay, so it is disabled. Look, disabled. Aircraft position, right there, right? Disabled. Track, uh, not showing. It's tracking, but not showing. And then at the end of the flight, we're going to see how closely we stayed to that. All right. Oh, it's... I think it's about time. Yeah, actually, this this here is sunny. Triple seven, that's sunny. Okay, why not just minimize? Uh, yeah, right, I can. But right, if it just comes back up because I clicked on it by mistake, whatever, I just want to, you know, why have it on? Why have it on? No reason to have it on. Exactly, Ross Gud. But we're going to trust, we're going to trust a little navlog from Sky Vector here, and uh, hopefully this will do it. All right, so we have a top of climb, and then we have just a bunch of user fixes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this, and I'm going to use, uh, let's see. I'm going to use Acrobat to put a line through the stuff that we've already done, because otherwise we're going to be confused as can be. Confused as can be. Therefore, therefore, here we go. So instead of showing that... I'm going to have this for us to look at. And once we're done with something, I'll put a line through it. Something like this. Kind of thing, right? Move it around, whatever. And we can also write down the actual time and route. Well, no, we can't because we don't have GPS to figure out when we pass them. Okay. Okay. Should be interesting. Hey, 777. How's it going, man? Doing great. How are you? Hey, French Gap, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, Twitch problems apparently, Sticks. Apparently. All kinds of challenges this morning. All kinds. That's how we like it. Life is too easy, man. Life is too easy. It's like the Navy SEAL say, right? When you're going to go through Hell Week, what should you... What should you... Pray for? Pray for the weather to get worse. Pray for the exercises to continue to get harder. Right? Or, like I think Bruce Lee said once, don't pray for an easy life. Pray for a tough life and the hardness, the toughness to deal with it. That's right. Oh, Clumsy, that's all we do here, man. Well, as much as possible, really. Basically, Clumsy goes like this. Flying nowadays is just too easy, man. Too freaking easy. We're not going to do that, right? If we, can, if we can up the ante, let's go. Let's see how... Let's see how real pilots used to do stuff. Not plug something to an FMS and, you know, sit there. Come on. Come on. Hey, it's fun, right? Those planes are incredible nowadays. But that's not really flying. There you go, Mongo. Love it. Dude, Steve. Those of you that have known my plight in getting this channel started, uh, I've shown this before, but yeah, Steve, right here, man. Sorry about the uh, green screen uh, or chroma key acting up. This is Embrace the Suck, 
by Brent Gleason, uh, Navy SEAL. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a book all about, all about that. All about that. Okay. So we got our nav log. I think it's time to fire up, let the engine warm up. And let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right, guys. Whoo, the time has come. The time has come. Okay. Let's just have a look here. Parking brake set. Gear selector check down. It is. Avionics are off, 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 and off. Okay. Oh, hold on. Good call, good call, good call. It is a great book. Yes, great book. Let us go over here and uh, no DC6 today. Today is just a, I know it's not a two engine, but that's what I use for both one and two engines. No, it's, it's rain for now. For now. <laughs> okay, so lean, there we go. Magnetos are off. Battery switch coming on and it's to check fuel and other things. Of course, look, look at how much fuel we have left from the last flight. Nah, come on. We're gonna go full up today, full up. Okay, and there's me. Oh, guess we're gonna have to change that too. Have you read any of Jocko Will uh, Wilkins or Willink's book? No, I know Jocko, but I have not read his books. I know of Jocko. I don't know Jocko. Discipline equals freedom. Yeah, uh, listen, the Navy SEALs have this down pat. They figured it out. How do you make men like that? They figured it out, right? Let us uh, see. Let us see. Yeah, gamer. <laughs> What's the route? It's a straight line, buddy. It's a straight line line i put some points in there so we can have some measurements of time and distance to compensate for wind but it's just a straight line okay so uh fuel is full okay let's check the enunciator panel make sure it works remember you gotta you gotta press to see the last two here okay kitty playing with her ball all right i can keep the battery on because we're just gonna go on with this here flight controls free and correct up and down up oh sorry up and down there we go and the tail okay rudders are free all right flaps check they are up and indicating up elevator trim is neutral okay let's go before engine starts circuit breakers uh-huh, uh-huh. All in. Alternate air is off. Prop RPM is maxed out. Fuel selector full is tank. We're going to start on the left here. Let's get our timer ready. All right, engine start. It's a cold engine for sure. Throttle, half travel. Let me see here. Half travel is about there, right? About there. Flying pub on standby. Exactly. Okay, battery switch is on. We got that. Alternator, not yet. Hey, beacon coming on. What? Navigation lights, uh, they're already on. Plane started with them on, weird enough. Okay, uh, low or use primer. We're going to use primer. It's a cold day. Well, it's not that cold, but it's cold. It's about 9 degrees. So we're going to prime for about 5. There's our fuel pressure. One, two, three, four, five. Clear prop. Mike five send STX just resubscribe Ooh, hold for on, four Mike. months. Let's go. There we go. She caught up, or she caught on. No problem. A thousand RPMs, and we have. Yep, oil pressure. Very good. Very good. Hey, Mike. Four months, dude. Let's go indeed. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Really appreciate that. And thanks for all the follows, guys. Thank you very, very much. Wow. That was a lot of power, huh? Not a good idea. Not a guy. I thought it was someone else's aircraft next to me, actually. Okay, let's start that uh, clock. There we go. And I will start again on... T actually, no, I'm not going to start it right now. I'm going to start it when we're taking off. Okay. 
Well, it's a very short taxi to take off, so don't worry about it. Okay, low or use primary ball. We did this. We did this. We did this. Okay, we got it. It is successful. Magnetos are both. 1500 RPMs to warm her up. There we go. Oil pressure is being checked. Yes, it's good. All right. So, we're going to turn our landing light on. I think this checklist forgets to turn the pump on for takeoff. I'll see if I remember. Let's see, Fake. Are we really going to start with the beacon? Might be time to find another channel. <laughs> That's awesome, buddy. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, I like that one. I like that one, Fake. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh yes. Avionics. We're going to need those. Eventually. I am definitely going to tune in the VOR that's here in Narsar Swap. Oh, there is no VOR. It's an NDB. Ah, so wait. Hold on. I think there might be a VOR. She's warm enough. I'm going to go back to 1,000. It's also very loud, right? Okay, there's about 1,000. All right, so... So... Hmm, 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 hmm. All right. There it is. Yeah, we have a DME. Uh, 118 or 11185 is our DME. Okie dokies. Okie dokies. And. So basically, guys, it's backtrack. There's no taxiway. It's backtrack to runway 6. Wind 040, right? So we're going to take off from runway 6. And uh, there is some rising terrain after this. But uh, we should be fine uh, with our climb gradient. Haha, <laughs> famous last words. Ah, triple seven. Dan, you can't be a pilot. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Let me see here, Ninja. Fabi, do you have a profile just for the error? I found that really makes it better. Just have it a profile for that plane with the linear sensitivity curves as JF recommends. Sorry for repost, but thought you should know. Yeah, Ninja, I haven't done that because I'm still not confident that the profiles work well in the sim. I've had a bunch of different profiles and they they seem to copy over to each other. They disappear. They eh. So I, I said, you know what? I'm going to just kind of stay away from them. All right. But that reminds me, right? I should probably get rid of my curves. Yeah, yeah. Right? Let's just go to zero for this aircraft. Okay. Yeah, Cyber Dammy. It's how I like it, buddy. It's how I like it. The sim knew that I was going to fly today. All right, avionics are on. Radios are not yet. 118 or 111. I keep saying 8. 11185. And we should be receiving that. There it is. 0.04. Or point four, ah, man. <laughs> okay, altimeter setting. Let's get the current altimeter setting. It is one zero zero two, but I just went. Wow, it's pretty low, isn't it? But I just went to. All right, I'll find the table again. It's okay. We got this. We got this. So, 1002, let's find our conversion table here. There we go. 1002 is 2 niner, 5 niner. Wow. Pretty low, huh? 2, a niner, a 5, a niner. 5 niners, about there. Huh, interesting. Look at the tooltip. Misaligned. Misaligned. Ori, we're in great latitudes and the weather tends to be a little more aggressive in these latitudes.
Oh, really, Ninja? Let's go, man. Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, Ninja is posting about Iceland, too. Holy moly. Or no, Fair Islands, right? Fair Islands? Maybe? Oh, my God. I see. It's in the water. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Quite a few people attempting this flight. Hey, I hope we don't all end up swimming at the end of the day. Or if we swim, it's going to be in a hot spring in Iceland. Let's go. All right. We got to go. We got to go. Heading indicator set. We're going to set it to runway heading. Uh, and that was a zero. Six a four. Right there. Zero six four. By the way, elevation is 112. And uh, we're indicating a little less than that. So not exactly there. I wonder, actually, look. No, if I go the other way, I think, you know, indicating five nine would be that way. But fine. 064 on the heading. Taxi area. Well, let's see. Okay, back there and... Okay. Um, I'm going to do a right turn out of here. Okay. Parking brake release. Test, test the brakes and flight instruments you check on the go here. Okay. Well, the time has come, everybody. The time has come. Yes, it is, Coulter. That's right. No, it's not Chroma Key. It's actually an invisible bottle, buddy. That's, you don't have one? Oh, kitty. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the moral support. All right, buddy. I'll try not to cut you with my wing then. Fine. Fine. You stand there. You stand there, sir. And let's see. There we go. I missed you. Not just, but I missed you. Woo! Hey, Jack Mac, how's it going, man? How's it going? Hey, look at everybody getting ready to go. Let's go! <laughs> Brave guy, yeah, I know. If, she, if he knew who was at the controls, he'd be out of there. We have some elevation changes here, guys, so you might have to use a little more power than you think you have to. Uh, here's our taxiway. Oh, my God, it's hard to see, isn't it? With all the snow and ice. All right, well... Strobes are on, landing lights are on. Let's get our transponder to out because we're going to enter the runway. Yeah, Barley, exatamente. Exatamente. All right. Looks like default scenery for this guy. And of course, we would be talking to ATC at this point. No ATC currently. Oh, somebody on the, on the runway ready to take off already. Cool. And remember, guys, when you're back taxiing, try to do it off center. So that any airplane that sees you, hopefully they'll get that. Like, whoa, wait a second, that's uh, that's somebody back backtracking. Yeah, it definitely is tracker, definitely is. Okay, let's have a look at our nav log and get that first heading and time because we're gonna we're gonna start tracking this very, very accurately. I say that without my phone. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna get my phone to just in case. My phone is gonna have the timer, the 30 minute timer for the tanks. And uh, this timer over here is going to be our flight timer that we're going to use with our log. <laughs> Coulter. Yes, gamer. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, it is, Peter. It's going to be awesome. We should be above the clouds in no time, actually. Oh, we never calculated the altitude, did we? We never calculated the altitude. Guys, I need somebody to do quick math for me. Uh, 800 hectopascals. I need to know what altitude, what density altitude is 800 hectopascals, please. Hey, Peter. Oh, I already said hi to you. <laughs> Look at the wind. It's a bit of a crosswind here in the sim. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, Fabio Weather, everybody knows it. That's awesome. That is awesome. Hey, Lefty, how are you, buddy? Man, this sim looks so good. Hello, Odin, how are you, buddy? 
Sometimes it's safe to hop for the best re regarding runway length and just go for it. Oh, hope for the best. I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Hold on a second. That's the middle of the runway. What am I doing? Johnny! Buddy, four months. Johnny Thank you. ABL All right, sticks. 6,394. Sweaty. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so we expect hopefully to be out of the clouds by 6,000. Now, if the temperature currently is about 10 degrees, that means we're going to get to zero, right, in 5,000 feet. Oof. Thank you, gamer. Nice job, guys. DC, Mr. 90. Good job, good job, good job. Thank you very much. That means we could get into some icing right at the top of these clouds, right? Not ideal. Not ideal. But what are you going to do? Let me go get my phone. We need that for our timer here. And I'll run the first timer. It's going to be like a 28 minute because we used a little bit of fuel taxing out. Hang on one second. The weather is so bad the cat doesn't want to look at it. No anti-icing, Ori. No anti-icing. Should be interesting. Should be interesting. Okay, so we're climbing to 10,000 feet. Let's look at our nav log. All right, so uh, our top of climb, look. Basically, you see how this line here is offset from those lines because it's the one linking the two. So between the airport and the top of climb, it should take us 10 minutes to get to 10,000 feet. We'll see if that's correct, right? Should up, use up 3.2 gallons, and the distance should be 1.9, etc., etc., etc. Okay, um, the terrain, the terrain around here is nothing to joke about, so I can't just take off and go direct to my, my heading. Um, as a matter of fact, Yeah, they want you to depart on runway 24. Hmm. Hmm. Here's what I'm looking at. Hmm. Hmm. And it is a crosswind, so I should probably do that. I should probably do that. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to be a hero. Let's go to the opposite end of the runway, guys. That was on me. And I see some of you guys already up, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to try and do it the right... The right way. The right way. Uh, always think maybe a bit. Maybe just a tad. <laughs> Alright, high speed taxi here. Captain Seppi just resubscribed for two Whoa. months. Hello Captain and good Seppi. morning at the Flying Fabio and the rest of the crew. Hey man, good morning to you too, Captain. Good to see you, man. And Johnny, thanks again for that uh, four months at Tier 1. That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much, guys. Stupid question. Never a stupid question. The only stupid question, Salamander, is the one you don't ask. Does rain play any part in affecting the performance? That's a great question. A lot of people actually have that question. I had that question. The answer is no. There's no appreciable change in performance based on water hitting the plane or running over the plane or anything like that. You can see some degradation in performance when you have airfoils that are designed for what's called laminar flow. Laminar flow. But most airfoils in, in aviation are not designed to be laminar flow because as soon as you get them dirty, even with bugs that can splatter the, uh, the leading edge, um, you're going to lose you're going to lose a lot of that laminar flow performance. VFR is bad, says James. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Do you see? It, it's it's that classic, right? Call for pricing. You're like, oh jeez, oh jeez, this isn't, this is not gonna be good. LOD settings, Yaris. I'm not sure. I didn't even know you could set LODs in the sim. I thought the sim just did that by itself. Well, DC, a jet engine, a jet engine, and even then, all you need is ignition on, right? Have you guys seen? Actually, hold on. We need to make a list of the things we're gonna watch on this flight because there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit. All right. Alrighty. 
There we go, doing the safe thing, taking off runway 24, because I'm an idiot and didn't look, you know, ahead of time. What a weather, I know, right? Hey, Shaq is back. Back again. All right, so it's not going to be 064 on the heading. It will be 244. And notice that what they ask you to do on the departure, well, ask you, they tell you this is how you do it, right? Is departing, the visual here has you go straight to that point, right? Um, well, we are not visual, but we're going to try and take off and intercept the 277 from the Narsar Swak NDB NA, which we need to tune in, 359. Also turn it on. It works better when you turn it on. There it is. Uh, we're gonna have to use our compass card here and turn it, and turn it, so that it actually indicates properly. Or I can just do some overlay math, or mental overlay, I should say. Hey, a DC six. Let's go. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. Let's see here. Intercepted 277 on the way out. Okay, climb visually to 1200, intercepted 277, very good. Okay. And climb to minimum safe altitude 7100. So, we are we are going to be off from the nav log a little bit, aren't we? Because the nav log has us go straight to a magnetic heading of 84. Yeah, all right. That's not great, but we can't account for that right just yet. Oh, nice flies. I will. As soon as uh, as soon as I have some time. That is awesome. That is a beautiful, beautiful bird. Lan Chile. Okay. Uh, the sim doesn't load proper skins, Ninja. It kind of just seems to pick whatever skin you want, or it wants, and it just loads that up, right? Okay, so uh, let me see here. 244, 277. Okay, got it. And we're just going to climb to 10,000. Got it. I'm going to... I'm gonna. Mm, mm. I'm not gonna climb on the 277 all the way to 7,100 feet. I should, but that's gonna really throw me off on my nav log. Dang it! All right, let's run that timer for 25 minutes. Okay, you know, I'm gonna do it the right way. Check this out. I don't want to be an idiot, guys. This is too important of a flight to be an idiot. Here's what we're going to do. Oops. Vexfreeze just resubscribed for six months. Hello, hello. Why, hello, Vex. Let's go, buddy. Thank you very, very much, man. Appreciate that. All right. Um... I don't know if this is enough for me to get to 7,100. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it needs to go further out. But let's see. If I just do a nav log. That first user fix. Let's see. Top of climb would be 10 minutes. Okay. And then to the first user fix, which is a heading of 276, would be another 5 miles. Okay. So that actually was too much. Too much. Because I want to be shorter than 10,000, right? I can turn. I can turn at 7,100. That's the minimum safe altitude around here. So, let's try this. Do you guys see what I'm doing? All right. Ten. Oh, look at this. I just basically got the user fixed to be on top of the top of climb to 10,000. Okay. A little bit shorter then. Maybe here. There we go. Uh, what is our altitude? It doesn't say. It just says climbing, right? But then after that, we only have three minutes to go. So this is about 7,000 feet right here. Okay, good. Good. I'm going to download this. This is going to be our new nav log. Okay. All right. We got it in there. 
Perfect. Okay. Let me start my tamer. So it's going to be a 25-minute timer. There we go. All right, you guys ready? Hey, hey, Kilo, how's it going, man? Oh, almost, buddy. Almost. Almost. Okay, so I'm expecting uh, about seven minutes to get to that first user fix, 7,100 feet, and then we're going to turn. Timer's running. We're going to turn uh, right to a heading of 9.5 in another three minutes, which should be at 10,000 feet. Let's go. Holding her on the brakes. And let's go 2,000 RPMs, actually. Okay, good oil pressure, good, okay. Start the timer, and let's go. Watching for that 42 inches, there we go. Little over boost, correcting. Airspeed is alive, engine gauge is okay. Whoa, she really wants to weather vane. 60, 60, whoa, man, 65, 70. Wow, you know what? I've been flying the DC-6 now for quite a while quite a few hours, and man, the rudder input is so much better on that than this. So much better. Gear up. Okay, looking for 97 initial climb out. Need some right rudder. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going to turn to intercept the 277. Sorry, on the uh, prop. Okay, need to turn a little bit more. Sorry, boys. IMC like this, you gotta focus a little bit more. You gotta focus a little bit more. I'm gonna go to a heading of maybe two nine or zero. Okay. Let's put this up here, and I'm gonna turn my autopilot on in heading. That helps me focus. Not at all. Not even close. Not even close. Now, I shouldn't be getting icy right now, right? It should be at the top of the clouds, but we'll see. We'll see. We're climbing really well right now. Climbing really well. Perhaps a little bit better than um, Sky Vector would, would think. Man, that water down there is all ice right now. So cool with the water streaming by. They did such a good job with this, didn't they? Wow. Okay, let's focus. Speed is good. Pretty soon we're gonna start. There we go. Yeah, she's very. Pretty soon we're gonna start uh, leaning, but not just yet. And in visibility like this, I don't need the leading light at all. Nobody's gonna see it. You can turn that off. Yeah, sticks, yeah. All right, I'm gonna start leaning, looking at my EGT gauge here. I'm gonna try and have it peak, because I wanna save as much fuel as possible. I don't wanna mess around with that. Almost there, redlining it, and then coming back down. So let's peak it. There we go, there we go. Hey, Extreme Ball, how's it going, man? Oh, let's go, guys. Let's go. Iceland, here we come. I mean, this should have been called Iceland, shouldn't it? All right, so at 7,100 feet, we're going to start our turn, okay? Nope, thank you. I see it. I see it. Thanks, Triple Seven. I had forgotten about it. And what I'm going to do now is when I get to a 277 heading, I'm going to turn this card and help me on that 277 heading and see if indeed I am on the 277. Yep, right on, because a 777 driver, let's go. Oh, hello, 
Hello there, the Flying Kangaroo. Hey man, how's it going? I'm the Flying Fabio. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for the raid. Hello, the Flying Kangaroo viewers. I'm the Flying Fabio. Hey, 40, how's it going, buddy? All right, hold on. I hear the engine. I got to lean a little bit more. There we go. 4,500, okay. Now, one thing I can do here on the log, look, is it expects that the distance is going to be 11.7 .7 by the time I'm done with 7,100. Let's see if that works out. We got seven and a half miles right now. Only using the trailer speed from the tablet since nothing works. What, Ninja? Hey, my weekend was great, 40. Thank you so much, man. How was yours? Two pants on board. Good day, Flying Kangaroo. Good day indeed, man. How are you? Okay, got it. Yeah, I see that. I see that. There we go. That's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. More. Thank you very much, buddy. Guys, 5,000, 2,000 to go. I'm a little bit slow. I'm going to pitch down with my trim here, gain a little bit of extra speed, and always watching for that icing. I don't see icing forming anywhere. It's still liquid water here. It's, it's flowing a little slower now, which I don't know if the sim does that, but it makes me think that it's about to turn into ice, but I don't know for sure. So we'll keep on plugging. Oh, no, Ninja. Oh, no, dude. Really? Okay, I'm checking everything here. Oh, forgot, forgot that it's not turbo normalized. Let's add that power, baby. Add that power, baby. I also... Yeah, I need a little more light on those guys. Okay. All right, 6,000 for 7,100. Stay on top of that leaning. Okay, we're peak. Whoa, whoa, getting slow, getting slow. We're getting some up and down drafts, which is normal. Normal, we're in the clouds, right? All right. Look, 10.2. Oh, I think that's going to work just fine. So far, I think that log is going to work just fine. Oh, no, Ford. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, great. Considering we're counting on those winds to work so that we can find Iceland. Okay, well, attempt number one, boys. Next Monday, maybe we'll find Iceland. All right, hold on. 7,000. Oh, look at this. We it should have been 11.7 at 7,100. Very, very close. Okay, I'm totally good with that. Right turn. And I'll tell you what heading we're going to go to by showing you the log. All right, so it's a right turn to a heading of 9.5 now. We flew this, and then it's a heading of 9.5. And I'll put a line through this. This one is done. Oh, hey, out of the clouds. Out of the clouds with no icing so far. Let's go 0.95. There we go. And that took us about seven minutes, right? And look at the uh, look at the log, 6.9. Oh, we, I know it's only waypoint one, but we are on it. We are on it. Hey, top of the clouds. That's a beautiful, beautiful sight. Although, Ford, Ford, look, the top of the clouds ended up being, what, 7,500? We expected it was going to be 6,000 something, 6,500. That's really close to reality, really close to reality, considering, considering that we're estimating those altitudes from a skew T chart. So, I understand, all right, hey, 777, have a great flight, buddy, and let me know how that skew T works out for you. It's working out pretty well in the sim right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, no, I understand. I understand. I'm thanking you, right? But saying so far, the weather right here seems to be according to reality. We don't know if the winds are, but you know what? We're going to be able to tell if the initial winds are going to be this, the, the correct ones or not. As soon as we pass with enough distance from Narsarswak, then we're gonna, we should be able to see that. All right. Keep that power coming. Keep leaning. Very nice. Very nice. She's very on the speed because we're getting some turbulence here, but that's okay. 
That's okay. And then we have higher clouds. We expected higher clouds at what altitude? Remember that? Skew T right here. Uh, at about 400 hectopascals. Cats. Not here. Come on. Guys, what's 400 hectopascals in altitude? Hey, we're about to level at 10. About to level at 10. Nice. Nice. Hey, that was a good level off, wasn't it? That was a decent level off. Smooth. 23.5, okay. Looks like they're a little lower here, right? I'm at 10. They look to be at like 17, maybe? Maybe something like that? Not exactly sure, but... Okay, thank you, guys. Yeah, so, that's QT. Working its magic so far, huh? All right, guys, now we need to bring... We need to bring... First of all, I'm going to lean to peak. Oops, just passed it there. We need to bring our power back so that we're in the between 55 and 65% of our fuel consumption here. 55 and 65. I think I'm going to be right around 10. I want to be at 10. Let's go to 10 gallons per hour and see what we get speed-wise, shall we? Hey, Dark Spy, I'm doing fantastic, buddy. How are you? Going to be a very long day for me. They're literally digging such small areas that I'm going to be on site all day and only leave loaded once. Oh, deuce. I hope you got something to do, buddy, besides listening to this idiot over here. All right, getting my trim right here for 10,000. Looks like we're going to be skimming cloud tops here for a bit. Maybe we need to climb to 12 then. But then we need to rerun the log. We need to rerun the log. All right, so let's keep that log up for now, though. Right? And, I mean, keep it up to speed. So our second one is already done, too, because that's, that's, that was our top of climb. So let's put a line through that. And I didn't exactly get the time for top of climb up. I don't worry as much about that, right? Now, over here at 10,000 feet, whoa, watch that trim, watch that trim. I uh, should be heading up 094 after top of climb. Okay, we'll do that. And we're gonna fly that until 27 minutes. You see this 16 is how many minutes from the previous waypoint to this? 27 is the cumulative time. So we're gonna fly until this says 27. Uh, Dugao, I think there's a, quite a few people who are talking about it. Uh, just a magnetic heading right now, Kilo. Now, I have the DME. Look, I have the DME here. But because we're passing the airport right now, that... Gra oh, sorry. There. We're basically... Look, it's off to our right. We just passed the airport, right? It's down there somewhere. But it's very close to me. So my ground speed right now doesn't really matter. Because it's, it's not accurate. The DME ground speed, guys, takes your change of distance over time. To calculate speed so it only gives you correct ground speed accurate ground speed if you're going directly to or directly from the station if the station is here and you're flying sideways by it well right at 90 degrees there is no change of distance right for a few seconds there so your speed is going to be zero and you saw my speed go down and now it's coming back up again because we're getting further and further out from the station and it's becoming more and more of a direct line aligned with our heading if that makes any sense Some angry looking clouds here. Hmm. I wonder if I can just pass this and the clouds are going to be a little a uh, little lower after that. Because I'd rather not go to fly level... Uh, oh, by the way, it should be fly level 110 or 11,000, right? Oh, you guys are still having issues, huh? Still having issues. Let me do my true airspeed now that we're at cruise. And actually, I'm going to bring my prop back to 24 also. There, that's a little better. 
it's a little better okay what's the outside air temperature uh, just under zero so it's minus three and we're at 10,000 feet so 10,000 and minus three just about there so 145 or so in the true airspeed right now which in turbulent weather not bad not bad at all not bad at all fluffy clouds yeah BR but we did not get any icing leaving uh, Narsar Swak, which was great. Hey, a little hole there. Look, you can see the ground a little bit. I see lots of you guys spread around. That's cool. <laughs> Rob Dobson. <laughs> Chesity, this is the... Oh, you can do exclamation mark plane. There you go. It's the Just Flight uh, Piper Aero Turbo. My trim is not great just yet. I haven't found a good trim for level flight. Stand by. Sonita Bridge, what's up, man? Yeah, always think. That's why I said flight level before, and then I corrected because I said 11,000 feet. But it is a flight level. Oh, Dugao, it's amazing, man. This plane is amazing. And look, it looks like we're going to just stay out of the clouds at this altitude, which I'm super happy about. Super happy about. Okay, Ninja, fingers crossed. Oh, TC. I think, mods, I think eventually we're just going to need a, a command for DC just to, <laughs> just to say I need a Turbo Saratoga. DC, I think you say that every stream, don't you? I love it, man. I love it. I'm not complaining at all. I just love it. I like your insistence. Hey, Sunita, I'm doing really well, man. Thanks. How are you? In the meantime... My Siri goes, I'm fine, thank you. Every arrow stream, maybe. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, okay, looks like we might get into some clouds up ahead. So maybe we'll go to 11,000 and rerun the log. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we got about 10 minutes to go. And what, we're, what I'm going to do when we get to there, I should still be getting the DME, right? So, I will then, I will then be able to get both a distance reading and also a ground speed reading. The ground speed is getting closer and closer to what we should be doing, 164, 165. And if you look at the log, we should be doing 173. 173. So, it's a, it's a little slower right now. The winds are not as strong right now. But it doesn't mean anything. Not yet. Not yet. Man, these clouds, huh? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Um, Black Box has been around for a very long time under a different name. They were called PSS, Phoenix Simulation Systems. And they created some of the really early on, I think, Flight Sim 98, 777s and stuff like that. Um, and then, I don't know what happened, man, but they... They turned into a not-so-nice company. Um, and there were some, some, it's all in the past, right? But they're the same people. They're the same people. And I just, I, yeah, considering I know their history, I'm not going to touch any black box stuff. Sorry, black box, but in my heart, you earn that reputation with your actions. All right, we're definitely going to get into these clouds here. Let's do it without changing anything and see if there's any icing in here. If there is, we'll immediately climb, and then we'll rerun the log. Hey, Commander Deco, how's it going? Seems like Twinata from Aerosoft will fill the same role. I am wanting uh, on the twatter. Oh, waiting on the twatter. Do out next month. Ooh, next month, nice. Yeah, I think so, Ori. But, like I said, I'm going to stay in here just to see, because I want to test it. Right, just kind of dip my wings in and see if we're going to get some icing right here. Hey, that's getting better. That's getting better. It needed to be 173. Sweetness. Sweetness. Nice. 155, which is a little bit better than we expected, right? Ah, Sunita's a girl. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. It's always nice to know. 
Always nice to know. Commander Decode, how are you, man? How far uh, you into this leg of the trip? Oh, not far, buddy. 19 minutes. We just took off. But I can't show you a map because we're not, we're not going to look at maps today. It's all dead reckoning until we find Iceland. <laughs> then lease it back to five. <laughs> DC. Uh, they plan to bring over all their recent GA planes to MSFS. So just, oh, it's Vero. Are you saying that you have some inside information, but you can't talk about it? I get that. Curious, hey. Uh, what's up, man? Gotta go. Thanks again. Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Pre flying structure. Bye for now. Hey, no, my pleasure, and I hope to see you again. All right, here we go. Our first cloud busting. Our fir first cloud busting of the day. Very curious on icing. Here we go. No, Mort. I'm doing it on purpose. I want to see if there's icing. Oh, wait. Is Mort ahead, like, picking up ice? Is that what's happening? Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, big, big updraft. Look at this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's throwing us out at the top of the cloud. Which I'm not mad about. I'm not mad about. I'll, let, I'll help her level out a little bit. You know, I was talking about this in the PMDG DC6 forum. Because somebody was complaining about flying through storms with the gyro pilot. And see, now, now look at the downdraft we have. Look at the downdraft we have. Woo! Out the other side and no icing. No icing. What? Citizen! Buddy, tier two. Six months. Thank you, sir. Ninja got a little icing. Okay, I didn't. I've been lucky so far. Lucky so far. Yes, as long as the models are not announced, I can't talk about what is the rest. Uh, or we, what is in the test pipeline. No, wait. Zvero, we totally get that, dude. We totally get that. I think most of us have been around computers for a long time. Long enough to know that, well, that's how it goes. Adventure. Estoy bien, ¿eh, tú? ¿Cómo estamos? All right, so far, so good. About five and a half minutes to go. Hey, new spots, how are you, man? Oh, in a BN2, that's awesome. That is awesome. All right, guys, so here's what I want to show you. When we get to 27, right? Let's look over here. When we get to 27... Um, remember that, uh, actually, no, no, let me do this, watch. Even better, even more accurate. Let's do this. Look, this is the waypoint that we're flying to right now. From top of climb till this waypoint, right? But this waypoint, I want to know the distance from it to Narsar Swak. So all I'm going to do right here is this from the NDB. Or sorry, the DME. 43. There you go. 43. And now I can actually delete this guy. And we're back to original. So I need to be reading 43 miles at 27 minutes. That will tell me that I'm at the exact location I should be. Right? So more clouds. Look out for icing. Ah, interesting, Ford. Interesting. I, I didn't know they had confirmed the 146 professional. I think they told me on an email that I was talking to them about, but I and I mentioned it on stream, but I don't know. I didn't know they had a, a, a announced it. Spaz, what's up, man? So, so far, so good. How is our fuel consumption? Right on the money. 10 gallons per hour. Engine is looking good. Amps are good. We're about to swap tanks. So, for now, we're using left. We got the prop down to 24. Let's see if we're perfectly lean here. Yep, that was the peak right there. So let's mark that peak. Let's mark that peak right there. Oh, I see, I see, Ford. I got you. Uh, just flight. Man, I'll tell you what. The weather couldn't have been cooler, huh? Oh, look at this big break. Is that more clouds? Yes. Or it could be the ground. Because it's Greenland. It's covered in ice right now. Oh, downdraft. Downdraft. So, what I was saying before. I was on the DC6 forum at PMDG. And uh, talking about what you do in, in turbulence penetration. Right? And a lot of uh, inexperienced pilots will try to maintain their altitude. Exactly. Because they've been taught their entire careers. That, hey man, you cannot deviate from your altitude. 
Well, unless you should, unless you have to. And that can happen. That can happen in, uh, when you're, you're busting through clouds like this and getting updrafts and downdrafts. Sometimes your altitude is going to vary quite a, quite a bit. And the best thing to do, instead of chasing your altitude, is maintain your attitude. Maintain your attitude. So try to maintain a level attitude, if, if that's what works at that time. Because maybe it's like three degrees up or five degrees down, whatever, right? No, that, is, that has to be the ground. That is the ground. Holy moly. Hold on, timer going off? I didn't realize it was that that high. I mean, I suppose it was in the 8,000s, but it looks like, it looks way closer to me. All right, repeat that timer. Let's go swap. So fuel, yeah, see, I forgot the fuel buffer takeoff because it's not on the checklist. Right. Okay, and fuel pump off. Two minutes to go. I was looking at the 146 Rex plane. Looks like a fantastic plane. I'm usually interested in the smaller GA, but that is one that looks like it could be really good. I agree, Commander Deco. It looks like a fun airplane. I'm so looking forward to way to way releasing their Comanche and Aerostar. Oh, Leah, me too, man. The Aerostar would be amazing. Amazing. Man, Greenland. So green. Because it's so white, it's very hard to have depth perception, to judge how high you are above those mountains. See, look, once you get a little detail, it's a little easier, right? Then you, ah, okay, I get it. But other than that, very hard. Very, very hard. Yeah, Ford, I know, right? No, look, nobody's turning down an SFS. Nobody. Well, nobody that wants their company to survive, let's be honest. I saw the livery version for the uh, Sun Twin Otter. Yes, yes, Guybrush. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Looks amazing. And it's going to be... It's going to be awesome. Right? It's an Aerosoft product, so we know... And they've already said that. It's not going to be like as detailed as the DC-6 with all the systems and everything simulated. But it will definitely be fun enough to fly around. It'll be maybe like a Carinado aircraft, right? We're like, yeah, most of the systems, at least on the surface, they work. You can do checklists and things like that, but... They're not actually modeling a hydraulic system. They're not actually modeling the draw of every circuit breaker in the electric. You know what I mean? Uh, Captain Monty, uh, I have live weather and then I have clouds in ultra. All right, hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, caught it just in time. Oh, we just lost it. That's okay, because we lost it at 40 nautical miles. That is a terminal VOR. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say we're pretty good. 27. There we go. We need a new heading. Heading now. Uh, let's put a line through this. And the heading is going to be 090. Zero. And our next check is at 40 minutes. 090 zero, zero on the heading. You guys with me so far? Do you have questions there? I'm hoping your icing is better than mine yesterday. I was cruising at level 200, though. So maybe that was part of it? No, citizen. The, the altitude has nothing to do with it. Altitude doesn't play a role. It's simply what the atmosphere is doing, right? What, uh, and I don't know exactly how Microsoft does their icing, where they get the information to calculate icing. But I'll tell you what, since they updated, remember it used to be really heavy early on? Since they've updated that, um, it's way more realistic now. Way more realistic. Hey, Ruben, what's up, buddy? How's it going? It's good to see you, man. It's a good to see you. I'm trying to climb back to 10,000 here. Sacrifice a little energy for that, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of crossover. Wait, who is saying that for? There's actually companies out there saying that? Yes. Scuzzle, scuzzle, but there is. Uh, I just saw some screenshots of it in our Discord. Lucas, good question. Good question. Shall we look at that poll? Fort, do you have that link handy? Otherwise, I can go find it. Otherwise, I can go find it. Now, I'll show you one thing while we talk. So we passed our first user array point here after a little departure, right? We're now flying towards this one. And look, this one, if by chance... By chance, 
we get a break in the clouds, this should be very easy to find. Very easy to find, right? Because we can look down, we can see the features of the ground here. And then with our timing, we can once again sort of adjust the nav log and say, are we exactly on time? Are we fast? Are we slower? Or are we off course? If olive oil is made out of olives, what is baby oil made out of? So, gamer, you might be too young for this. You might be too young for this. Ah, nice, Fort. Zell Amze. There we go, guys. That is our final destination. Our, our owner just called us before the departure from Narsar's Walk and said, Hey, I figured out where you need to deliver the plane to. Zam Alze. Okay, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. Well, Captain Monty, I can't say anything officially. Um, I'll just put it this way. I'll just put it this way. Okay, gamer. Okay. Okay. You never know. You never know. I'll just say it this way. We're going to see a lot of PMDG stuff. A lot of PMDG stuff for this sim. PMDG sees this as the future. Basically, it's it's... I, look, I don't speak for PMDG at all, at all, at all, right? But I'm not getting that as secret information. You just have to watch the first video they put on their YouTube channel, which is a DC6 video, but they're talking generally about the sim. And Rob is very clear about it, that they see this as the future platform to develop anything for. <laughs> DC, whatever. Whatever, you 34-year-old. Final destination, Austria. That's right. That's right. To go get one of these. Oh, I can barely see it. Barely see it. Yeah, Trey Chen. Absolutely. 40 is the new 25. That's right. That's right. Yeah, PMDG is amazing. They are. They are. And, and what a surprise. What a surprise the price of the DC6 was. Seriously, a good surprise. So, Leia, uh, why airing four two four? Because I understand what you're saying, but why do you, why are you looking for that? Green Bull, that's right, that's right. Well, I mean, smell. He owns one. Rob owns a DC three. I think it'd be kind of silly if they didn't, especially now especially now that I think and again I have no information from PMDG okay I'm just judging this by comments I see online I think PMDG was surprised at how well the DC6 sold meaning there is a there is a bigger market than they thought not just in flight sim but for that type of aircraft right yeah not really more not really he's not really selling it when you, when you put something on the market for three times what it's worth, maybe that's an exaggeration, but for a lot more than what it's worth, you're not really trying to sell it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Ford, I mean, look, it still takes a long time, and maybe they've already done all this, but the surveying of an aircraft, just the pictures, takes about two weeks for them to do. It's more than pictures, right? It's more than pictures. They're measuring a lot of stuff in the cockpit with all kinds of laser measurement and stuff. Um, so, it, but basically, it, it's, it's a lot longer development than people think, but they also have previous assets too. Maybe not for the DC-3, right? But for example, converting the 737 to MSFS. Okay, well, they've just redone a 3D model for that before MSFS came out. They probably don't need to start from scratch again, you know? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, guys, at 40 minutes, we need to check in. Who knows? Maybe we're going to be lucky and we're going to see a break in these clouds. And, uh, yeah, maybe we'll be able to see the ground and get a nice marker for our nav log checking. Ah, oh, this looks so cool. Yeah, Mort, exactly. It was on the fence before I saw the price. Now that I've got it, I'm really happy I picked it up, though. Right? And I told Rob, I, oh, ooh, ground. Oh, maybe we're going to get lucky. I told Rob, I said, Rob, this sim, 
for many reasons, right? It's a much better sim to fly a plane like a DC-6 than any sim we've had so far. And I think that that's a big reason. Well, and the fact that it's such a good sim platform that you can do more with it. So the DC-6 here is way more realistic than it was in P3D and FSX or X-Plane, right? Uh, and so it's a better product because of the sim, but it's also because of the sim, because we can do VFR anywhere, stuff like that. It's a, it's a, it's more pleasurable to fly a plane like that here. Way more pleasurable. I don't know about the left just yet. Just yet. I know I'm in a cloud, but look, afterwards... Oh, hello. Oh, he uh, no, that's clouds. That's clouds, right? That's ground. That's ground. That's ground all there. Little, little hill. Um, but... We'll see. I need, I need it at 40. I need it at 40. We still have five minutes to go, which is going to put us close to that cloud. This is also fun, guys, to do when you're flying, is estimating. Like, in five minutes, where am I going to be? Am I going to be at that cloud in five minutes or before or after? I think I'm going to be right by that cloud. Oh, yeah, Trajan, that's going to be amazing, right? Yes. Oh, Mort, that's nice. Maybe they changed their uh, e-commerce thing. Is there a plane next to you? Yes, yes, there's a plane right there. There's a plane, oh, look at that mountaintop. There was, well, there were more planes around me. Uh, they already bailed on me, I think. <laughs> yeah, Findo, did they have that in uh, in their X-Plane and P3D versions or no? Oh, there's somebody right by me. Oh yeah, there we go, hold on. Oh, where'd he go, where'd he go? Oh! <laughs> Oh, I got you, Mort. I got you, yep. What do you mean, no liner? Oh, airliner. Well, Trek, yes, that too. That too. But I'll tell you that I think the vast majority of what we call the magenta line jockeys, right? People that only like to fly modern stuff, only like to fly an FMS. I think a lot of those people did not buy the DC-6 because they don't enjoy that kind of flying. And that's okay, right? That's, hey, the world is big enough for all of us. It's awesome. Awesome that we have these options. But I don't think a lot of those people bought the DC-6. I think it was a lot of new customers. I have not. Another time and place, I have not. But it's getting more and more common. Yeah, they had the VFE on the XP version. Okay, got it, Flies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Runs out of gas short of Kefovic. Are you talking about the person ahead of me? DC, because why? Because they're using more fuel or something? Ah, two cats, really? In what in what sim? It's actually the first plane I ever bought before I always flew with the stock plane. See, there is a lot of new customers that PMTG is getting because of the DC-6. I'd like an arrow with a more modern autopilot. Ah, DC, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I'm a little bit off my altitude here. I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to leave it for now. Just see what it does. I think the D6 sold because of your channel. Well, <laughs> Mr. Ice. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think I helped. I'd like to think I helped a little bit, right? I am a new PMDG customer yet. Yeah? Smell, okay. How much of a new market PMDG will find if they release on the marketplace? I know, I know. My first PMDG product was the FSX Queen of the Sky, 747-400. They've never let me down. I know, Peter. It, so, if you don't know PMDG, the way I describe them, the way I describe... I already passed that cloud, didn't I? Wait, where did that cloud... Didn't I have that tall cloud ahead of me? Did I already pass that? Huh. Oh, a little bit of ground. A little bit of ground. And ground there. Okay. So, the way I describe PMDG to people that don't know them. Uh, PMDG, for me, is the apple of the flight sim world, right? They're going to be one of the most expensive uh, out there. But you typically get what you pay for, right? Great customer service. Uh, great execution of the product. Great support. Whoa. Whoa. Did you see that hit we just took? Whoo. Findo70. New customer here. Never thought I'd ever buy something from them. There you go. There you go. It looks like I'm going to be behind. Look, in a minute and 15... I'm not going to be over the water yet, so the winds, winds are a little different, perhaps, than what we expected. Let's see. Let's see. Let's keep on going. 
and we'll get a new marker if we can see that little bay over the water. What am I talking about? I'm talking about our second waypoint. Look, it's going to be right over this little inlet. And, and it was going to be at 40 minutes after departure, which is in about 45 seconds. Okay, so some uh, less tailwinds or... Oh, but you know what? I just realized that channel of water, guys, that could be... That could be iced over. That could be iced over. Okay, let's try and read the terrain. Look, smaller hill over there, because maybe it's this, right? Maybe not, but maybe so. And then a bigger hill on the north side of that. I mean, maybe we're here. We could be here. You see that? Right? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so... We're at 40. All right. What's the next heading? Well, it's only 09 or 1. So I'm not going to put a line through this just yet. And I'm not going to change headings just yet. It, one degree is okay. Okay to be off for now. Let's see. Oh, the tall cloud dissipated. Okay, flies. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. I'm desperately trying to get any sort of more detail on... Yeah, that's not, that's not water. So I think the water is off to my left here. I think I'm slightly to the south and slightly slower than expected. That's awesome. Twitch flag pleb there, Daiki, but I approved it. Still, I gave myself the DC6, loving every minute in it. See, Daiki, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, Ori, not if the winds are not what we expected them to be. If they're if they're blowing a little uh, uh, easier, a little slower, then we would be further to the south. Because we put a correction in there, but there wasn't as much wind, so we ended up being south. Beware, all of icing clouds ahead over the ocean. Okay, Arva, thank you very much for that. Man, it's just, just not enough for me to determine where that inlet is, huh? Now, I, I am going to think that we are about where we need to be. About a minute and a half slow. That's going to be my guess. It's going to be my guess for now. Uh, all of us can actually see your accurate location on the Twitch page. Aha! Hope nobody will show it to you. That's awesome, Drogo. That's right, I forget. I always forget that I run that. What's that called? I can't see it from here, guys. Don't worry. Flight sim track. Only if I go to my page can I see it, but I'm not there down with the patricians <laughs> I know that's what I'm saying DC I was surprised that Twitch flagged that yeah very bumpy very bumpy all right uh, hmm. no the clouds are closing in again nothing that I saw looks like water or ice covered water for that inlet I mean, I'm definitely still over at Greenland, right? And I should be on my way out of it. Well, no, I should fly a little bit longer still. And then have another inlet. Mm, okay. Let's keep on flying. Not sure about the, uh, the fuel stuff there, DC. Um, I'm on a timer and we're good for now. Well, no, Mort, I, until you get a decent fix of where you might be, leave it as is. Leave it as is. Because you actually may be interpreting things wrongly. You know what I mean? You may actually be where you think you are. So don't adjust just yet. This is a long flight. We have some time. Right? Let's wait. Let's wait. Hey, old school. What's up? Oh, Kozaki. What? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Someone mentioned it was uh, tank switch time. Oh, I see. No, not yet. We got uh, six minutes. Sick as the minutes. Yeah, that's true. Twitch is heavy. No nav aids on the coast. Negatory. Look. Nothing. Nothing. There's a NDB down here. That's not going to help us. It's too far away to get bearings and, and do anything with them. 
So, nope. Nope. Just good old dead reckoning. And I love it. And I love it. Yeah, clouds are totally closed up again. They do look higher up ahead. That could be a problem. Hey! Hello, buddy. I still see land there, but I can't do much with that. Hey! No mitax in Uberm. Uberme. You're welcome, man. Whoever gave you that, you're welcome. We have a lot of generous people in this channel. All right, she's still descending a little bit. I'm going to trim up a tad. And I'm going to go make a coffee. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to see anything in the next couple of minutes here. Okay. So, before I go, here's what we're going to do. Um, okay. Not thickness. I want to change it to a dash line, Acrobat, but I guess, I guess you show me that there's an option, but you, okay, whatever. So, let's consider this one flown past. We don't really know how long it took us, right? But considering that we're already at 45, we should have passed it. It should be behind us. Let's go to a heading of 9-1, or 9-1. <laughs> Goat. What's the fun in there? In that. I see the ferry is going well. Well, Information Alpha, uh, you know, it's going. We just don't know which way it's going. Might be coming across the Antarctica. <laughs> hey, how did you get that flight log? Ah, Stuner, that is a flight log that Skyvector spits out. So if you go to skyvector.com and create your own flight plan like I did here, right? I just put a bunch of waypoints in there to e evenly spaced. You then hit Navlog, and that's what you get. It's pretty cool, right? So, guys, we should be on this leg of the flight right now. Oh, yeah, Danny. I love, love flying in VR. There's nothing better. But I don't do it for the stream, because I don't like people that... I don't like watching streams uh, streamed in VR. I think it's too shaky and stuff. Wait a second. What? Oh, oops, sorry. That looks like ground. That looks like ground, which could be, look, could be this right here, right? Because we should have just passed that. Could easily be this. Okay, okay. Oh, Coulter, you can just create whatever waypoints you want. So you go to, like, where you want to create a waypoint, right? And just click and drag a little bit if you want it to be, to be off like this. Or, or just right-click where you want the waypoint to be. And then, look, it gives you options. In this case, because it's in the middle of the ocean, the only thing it says is, hey, it's got to be a latitude longitude. Okay, hit plan, and it adds that. Or you can click on it and delete it, right? Or if you're close to a nav aid, uh, let me show you here. All right, so there's a little NDB down here, right? So if you're close to a nav aid and you drop it, it's going to give you an option for the latitude longitude or the nav aid itself, which is pretty cool. All right, but well, hold on, I gotta keep my eyes out here. Oh, yeah, hello. Hey, wait, is that the coastline? Is that the coastline? I think that's the coastline. I think that's the coastline. I mean, really shoddy work, Asobo, but I get it, the data isn't there. Okay, okay, what is this? 4750, 4750, let's have a look. That could be this coastline right here, because I thought I may be south a little bit, or it could be this. But it makes sense, right? If we're at 40 here, 47 something would put us around here. Because look, the next one would be at 55. So we have 15 minutes, 15 minutes between this point and that point, seven, eight minutes, whatever, we should be around here. Hey, hey, I think we're doing all right. I think we're doing all right. Viper, I am already stressing, not stressing out, but I'm already intensifying this trip, man because we're not being able to pick up the only sort of points that we're gonna have good speed checks at. So, yeah. Feet wet, that's right. Here, there be monsters. Ah, thank you, DC, appreciate you answering that. 
Yeah, so I, I chose all those points, right? I basically created a flight. Created a flight. Look, I'll, I'll do this. Let's save this just in case, once again. And we'll create a new one. So here's what I did. You right click on your origin and you go plan and it's going to put that in your departure right click on your destination and go plan for the airport see it has you know vor intersection latitude longitude i want the, the airport and it creates just a, a straight line it's a great circle line so it looks curved on a flat map but it's a straight line in real life then i go to wherever i want and i add those points you know What am I... How did it... Why is it down here? That's so strange. So strange. I thought the newer stuff would be at the top. Okay, timer. Now I don't know which one it is. I'm going to go with the second one and hope that that's the one. Yeah, I think so. I think so. 30, 40, 40. Yeah, yeah this is it. Oh, look at that P-40. And let's swap tanks. Okay, repeat. Pump. Check the fuel. Yeah, it's decently even. Decently even. All right, we're coming up on 55, at which point we're going to have a big heading change of 4 degrees, which is big for dead reckoning. Okay, engine is still running. Pump off. Fuel flow is still about 10, which is great. We'll have more than enough fuel to get there. And, oh, look at those angry, angry clouds up there. Hey, that's not looking super great, is it? Let's do a skew T. Let's do a skew T for our route, shall we? You guys remember that? Okay, so we're somewhere here before this waypoint here. So just off the coast, let's go a little further in and get a, a skew T for that. So about here, maybe. Skew T. Hey, oh, not good. We're definitely going to be in the clouds here for a while, boys. That is a not good. Okay, what about something down here? Oops. Ah, all the way up. This is not good news at all. Not good news at all. Oh my gosh. We have a weather system that's just dropping these things. Oh man. So this is 6,000 feet. Here at 6,000 feet, we could be out of the clouds. What about here? 6,000 feet technically out of the clouds. Here, eh, not so much. Oh, man. Okay, tough decision here. I think I'm going to have to descend and get a new nav log. I think. All right, coming up on 55. Yeah, Ori, that's what I'm thinking. I just am concerned about icing. Obviously, who cares flying through clouds, right? As long as it's not a thunderstorm. But it's looking really dark. And I'm at the right temperature to have icing. <laughs> Lolly low. You know, so I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Peter. It was a single long day in a P-38 with 300 gallons extra fuel in FS-2004. Wow, Kazaki, that's awesome. Well, at 6,000 feet, I can show you that temperature. Six thousand feet is about 800 HPA, right? Temperature is about eight degrees. About eight degrees. The freezing level is, I think, at my altitude, basically. Well, it is because the temperature is zero. I think I'm going to have to descend. This is not looking good at all up ahead. And as you saw in those QTs that we looked at for further down, it doesn't get much better. Okay, so we're going to run the nav log again. But this, this time at 6,000 feet. And then how do we do this, right? How do we do this? Because now we have a new nav log. Okay with different times and things. 
Still got 25 gallons of fuel at arrival. Made the trip about 20 minutes longer, 15 minutes longer. But I know which waypoint I'm going to be at because I've been keeping track of this one, right? And then I know that at 55, which is about now, in one minute, I should be at this waypoint right here, uh, which is my second user fix. Sorry, this one. This one. My second user fix after the top of climb. So I can just start the other nav log from there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start descending to 6,000. And let's get the new nav log in here. Okay. So this is the old. This is the new. All right. All right. And should be done with the first two, right? First two, I'm flying from the second to the third. This is where I say that, you know, it'd be great to have... It'd be great to have... Hold on, second to the third. Yeah, 58 on this one, okay. It'd be great to have uh, the ability to name these different points or different names. All right, so let's do this. So we've done this, and now we need a heading of zero, nine, or four. We've done this. Let me do a heading before I forget. We're going down. Zero, nine, or four. Okay. Gerald. Uh, the clouds just get worse and worse. Basically, half the trip is going to have heavy clouds, from what I could tell. And so it, it, there's no deviating at that point. They're going to be filling the entire, the entire sky, right? All right. Let's go another line over here. And now we're going to say, hey, we just completed this one, too. When we got to 55... So now it's from this one to this one, right? Just checking to be sure. Actually, no. Okay, so we just did this. So we got to go one more. That's right. We just completed this. Okay. Now we're looking for an hour and 12. Well, except I was at 55. So I got to add, I got to subtract three from this. Okay. I'm always going to have to subtract three from these now, okay, from here on out. Okay, so really one hour and nine until we go to the next waypoint. Look at, look at the updraft. Look at the updraft we just got. Well, Kozaki, that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid. If I stay at that altitude, I will ice up. I'm going down so that I don't ice up. Nah, but information alpha. That's, uh, I feel that's a little too easy. Too easy with four flight. Exactly, Leia. Exactly. Now, I am using some information, right? I'm using that windy information. I'm using skew T's, right? But it's stuff that I could have looked up before the flight. Before the flight. All right, 7,000 for 6,000. Whoa. Downdraft. Uh, not for MSFS, Coulter. It's an add-on that comes with Windy. It's a free plug-in. I use two of them. There's a Flight Planner one. All right, hold on. I need to add some power back now. And we're going to lean again. There we go. Let's find our new, our new peak, which is right there. Perfect. And uh, 10 gallons per hour. Okay, I think we got this. I think we got this. Let her settle down. Ah, Gerald. Yeah, got it. So, it could be no icing. It could be no icing. But I don't want to risk it. And if I were... So, why did I test those clouds on the way out from Narsar's Walk, but I'm not willing to do it here? Because here, I'm far enough out that I'd rather not turn back to Narsar's Walk. If I iced up really heavy back there, I could just go back to Narsar's Walk, right? Here, I'm more committed to the crossing. 
So at this point, I say, I don't even want to pick up any bit of icing, because if I do, I may or may not be able to melt it. If I don't melt it, now my aircraft is not as efficient, I'm using more fuel, I'm heavier, I'm not as aerodynamic. I don't want to cross the Atlantic that way. Yeah, Kozaki, sounds good. So, or sounds about right. Sounds about right. All right, here we go, coming up in an hour, and we're going to look for an hour and nine for our next waypoints. Lots of updraft. Lots of updraft. Let her do it. Don't fight it. Well, DC, you could do that too. But did you see how tall? Look. I'm not going to be out of the clouds at 20,000. Look, these clouds stay, buddy, all the way to the top of the atmosphere. I'm not going to be out of the clouds. Oh, yeah, Adams. Any, any aircraft does. Any aircraft for, for flight sim does. Great things about Iceland with the Orbic Smash. Yeah, Viper, I can't wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it. Now, we may not be able to see it well today. We may not be able to see it well today because... The weather sucks right now in Reykjavik and Keflavik, and we expect to arrive there and have to shoot the ILS to minimums. Did anybody answer me what a standard ILS minimum above the ground was? I don't think you guys did. I'm trimming her because she's still climbing. Yes, Kilo, exactly, 200 feet. And we expect that it's going to be overcast 300 feet when we get there. So... Interesting, interesting, that's right. Hey, Orange Collar, thank you very much. SAS909 and Airlock Doc. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all those follows. By the way, we broke 5,000 subscribers. Or, sorry, subscribers, followers. We broke 5,000 followers. Currently, 5,018 followers. There is a standard, DC. It's always going to be around 200 feet, if not exactly 200 feet. If not exactly 200 feet. Check this out. Here's Keflavik. Let's look at the charts. Approach. Uh, ILS Zulu, runway 01. Look at the minimum. 335, but in parentheses, 200 feet because it's 200 feet height. Okay? How about the other ILS? Okay, how about a different runway? ILS runway 19. For category D, 202 feet. Whoa. Yeah, thanks, Flags. That's awesome, right? Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. It's, it's been an amazing road. Yeah, thanks, Commander. I appreciate that, man. Now, if you go to a Cat 2 ILS, a Cat 2 ILS is 100 feet. Now, we can't shoot a Cat 2 with this aircraft. You need special equipment. Uh, we can't do that. But, yeah, normally, normally you're going to have ILS minimums at 200 feet AGL. All right. Almost at uh, 6,000. Thank you, Peter. I need to go have a great flight and let me know what you think of those picks. All right, we'll do. Whoa, Kristoff. Five tier run subs. Let's go, buddy. Thank you very, very much for that. Thank you very much for that. Guys, if you're new to the channel, this is my full-time job. So I really appreciate your consideration and subscribing to the channel and contributing in any way you can. Uh, really appreciate that. You guys allow me to continue to do this. Celebrating the 5,000. Let's go, Chris. A subscription for every 1,000 followers. Huh? I keep confusing it because on YouTube, it's a subscriber. On Twitch, it's a follower. On Twitch, a subscriber is paying a subscription. On YouTube, a, you have to join to... Ha yeah. yeah, for it. We're almost at 1,300 subs, man. Almost at 1,300 subs. Just for three months. Let's go, Jamie. Let's go, Jamie. What's going on, buddy? Thank you very much for that. Okay, trimming up. Not an easy task. Loving how much we learned with you, Fabio. Ah, Sonita, thank you very much. I love to teach, and it seems like some people like to learn. So, let's go. Now that Fabio has 5,000 followers, he needs to do the Fabio 5K and live stream it. Hey, Flights, thank you very much for that. Sorry to be behind, but did we announce a replacement date for Johnny's Vancouver flights? Yes, this Friday. I, I, this Friday. It's on the schedule. I announced it last time. I posted the schedule late last, last uh, night. It's going to be this Friday, but... It starts at 1700 Zulu. It's an hour earlier than we started last uh, last Friday. 
Uh, what you do, Fabio, is a unique experience on Twitch. Enjoyable being here. Oh, Commander, thank you very much for that, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. Makes me happy to hear that. You're welcome, I.I. You are welcome, sir. Okay, so good news. Good news. No icing. Temperature should be, yeah, about four or five degrees. About five. Um, that's, that's nice. That's nice. All right. An hour and four. We're looking for an hour and nine. And then we'll swap headings once again. 1,300 subscribers on 5,000 followers are some crazy numbers. Mate, tell me about it, dude. Tell me about it. Actually, you know what? I Listen, it's not braggy. It's just I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I went to, uh, I think it's Twitch Tracker. And you can just go and put my name there, right? Watch the altitude. <laughs> According to that website, I don't, I don't know if this is real. It doesn't sound true at all. According to the website, I am at the top 0.1% of Twitch streamers, which I don't know how they measure that. I have no idea. But man, that sounds really awesome. That sounds really awesome. Let's adjust this. Four degrees at 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet and four degrees about there. So now our trailer speed is a lot worse, right? 125. 125. Um, interestingly, it expected it to be 150. Oh, because we didn't change that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my fault. Hold on a second. I see stuff coming in, but I, we got a problem. When I re-ran the log, I kept true airspeed at 150, and right now I think it's going to be 125. We got to re-run that log again, save this, and rework what we just worked. All right. Stand by, guys. Stand by. Stand by. Done. Done. Oh my god, stuff coming in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm concerned now. Concerned that I put the wrong airspeed in there and uh, I need to catch this before it becomes a problem. Before it becomes a problem. And I think one more. I think we did one more. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stuff coming in. Hold on. Hold on. Ah. Okay, so this right here, yeah, it was 55. Became an hour and seven because of the slower airspeed. But we did that, right? And we, we did we crossed it at 55. So now we have 12 minutes. 12 minutes on this. So uh minus 12 is one. 13 113 okay 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 and at 113 we're gonna go to heading of 09 or 5 oh man it's changed the headings on me already because I was already on a 09 or 4 uh-huh oh no I'm gonna go to 09 or 8 never mind okay okay no we're good we're good we're good Oof, I recovered I recovered ho oh, oh. okay what's happening here well hello Citizen giving out five tier one subs. Oh my god, 100 above is here. Rating with 37 or 44 people, whatever Twitch decides. Hey, thank you very much, 100 above. I really appreciate that. And hello, 100 above followers and viewers. I'm the Flying Fabio, and welcome to my channel as we cross from Greenland to Iceland via Dead Reckoning. Time and heading. Time and heading. All right, what else here? Oh, Dust Ninja, nine months, dude. Let's go. So glad to see how much you have grown. You deserve it all. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Fly 787 with 500 bits. Oh, I think I had that already, right, Flies? Thank you, buddy. Unbelievable. Thank you, everybody. I just broke 5,000 uh, followers, followers, followers. And the trend continues. Thank you. I've been a pilot for almost 47 years, and I learned something from you just about every stream. What? Proves that you learn something every day if you stay open-minded. Wow, Flies, that's amazing, dude. That is amazing. Thank you for saying that. And I'm glad you're learning, man. We are all learning. All learning. Oh, 100 above is doing the same tomorrow in the DC-6. That's awesome, dude. I'm flying the DC-6 tomorrow, too. But tomorrow, I'm flying Swiss Air, I think, 104. An old flight from the 50s that took the DC-6 all the way to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. So we're going to fly the last leg. It's one of my first legs in my home country of Brazil in the stream. We're going to fly the DC-6 from Recife all the way to Rio. And it's along the coast of Brazil. It should be a... Ah, fly. A good pilot always learns new stuff. That's right. That's right, German. I know, 100. It is the best aircraft, man. Ah, it's incredible. Incredible. 
Incredible. Oh my god, it's a level 4 hype train? I didn't even see that. What? Hey, I'll say a good time to consider supporting the channel. I do this for a living. It's my full-time job, so I really appreciate your consideration. Wow, Flies, I'm still stunned by your statement there. They've been flying for 47 years and they still learn on this channel. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. An anonymous cheerer. Cheer 200 bits. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm out on a road trip to Austin. Safe flights, everyone. Oh, citizen. Take care, buddy. I was flying out of Austin with the DC-6 yesterday. That's awesome. How did Fabio fix whatever the issue was from last Friday? Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure I did because I had a really scary time this morning, man. Really scary. Hey, Yaris. Thank you very much for that tier one sub. Really appreciate it. Kozaki with 100 bits. Let's go. Look at the hype train. It's going to turn. We're going to complete a level four. You got one minute. Can we do it? Aye, aye, this morning. Ran the sim. I always run the sim with, you know, whatever. 40 minutes up to an hour before the stream starts. And uh, instead of the sim running, I got the Steam pop-up that says, Hey, do you want to install Microsoft Flight Simulator? Sorry. So I run Orbix Central. Orbix Central says, Hey, we can't see any sim installed in your computer. So Steam and apparently Fort and some other people in chat found that this is an issue. I have Microsoft Flight Sim through Steam, and through Steam, um, Steam will sometimes just uninstall apps for you, just because it feels like it, right? So it uninstalled Microsoft Flight Sim for me, but thankfully, it's only basically the launcher that it uninstalls, right? Because once the launcher runs, the Sim itself does the installation, the updates and stuff, it's not through Steam. So luckily, I just re-downloaded that, reinstalled the launcher, and the uh, the sim was still on my computer, and it was fine. 500 bits from Citizen. Look at this. Look at this. We completed that hype train. <laughs> Level 4 hype train in the house. Thank you, Citizen. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Ford, how do we report it? I'm sure it's on Steam itself, right? Ah, Baganario is having this problem with the Citro Corsa. Yeah. Yeah. It was a mess. So I started the stream a bit late. Uh, I, I is on the west coast, so when I started this early, I think he doesn't catch in the beginning, which I wouldn't either, man. Sleep. But, uh, oh, man, it never... Never ends. Well, DC, I'm not sure that Austin tried to steal our soccer team as much as the owner of the soccer team tried to twist Columbus's arm. Right? Right? Roy? Whoa! Arva continuing... The gifted sub he got from Kristoff. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that. Every little bit helps, guys. Thank you so, so much. All right. Lately, my Steam has not been shutting uh, Flight Sim down when I exit the game. And I have to kill Steam and test... Oh, my God. <laughs> but don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Let's make planes completely fly-by-wire. Completely fly-by-wire. And just let the software decide what needs to do. What it needs to do. Yeah. Software works every time, and it's getting better, because, you know, it gets more complex. <sighs> well, DC, here's the thing. I have very little trust in Microsoft, very little. So, and I, and I had great experiences with Steam, like, never had an issue with Steam. So, next time I'm late, I'll ask such questions in Discord. No, I, I, not at all, buddy, not at all. Not at all. Ask it here. Ask it here. Oh, DC, yeah, did you see that, right? Oh my god. Oh my god. Flies, let's go, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for those 500 bits, man. My god. We may even complete a level 5 on train. What? Yeah, right. So, Fort, that's the thing, right? It's between Steam and Microsoft Store, which, by the way, I had used for my kids my, uh, Minecraft. And I had a horrible experience with the Microsoft Store, um, which I wasn't shocked for about, right? And I, I gotta say, without any details, the sim came out, right? I became a streamer, and uh, some things happened in the background that once again showed to me that the Microsoft Store was no good. Steam was an easy choice, easy choice for me. Bill, thank you very much for the 100 bits, buddy. Appreciate that. With the Shamrock, too. Let's go. Are you flying AP or manual right now? So I'm in autopilot, uh, Falcon, but my autopilot is only lateral mode. It's only doing heading for now. Oh, by the way, 113. Hello. 12 minutes. Yeah, it's it's now. It's now. Okay, heading. Now. Almost screwed this one up, huh? Almost screwed this one up. 
heading now. We're completed that. It needs to be 0, 9, or 8. Okay. 0, 9, or 8. There we go. And our next check, minus 13 minutes, is going to be at uh, 28. 1 hour and 28. So tw uh, 14 minutes from now. How are we doing on... Oh, one minute to go to swap, swap fuel tanks. Yeah, Kaspar, I just, I have zero trust in Microsoft. So who knows, maybe with Windows 11, things are going to get better. Yeah, sure. Sure. Paparazzi. I love that name, man, with 100 bits. Thank you, Paparazzi. I appreciate that. Can you show us uh, that apps for Windy you mentioned before? Yeah, Leia, for sure. For sure. Yeah, basically, look, I... I've been using Windows since Windows was... <laughs> I'm old, guys. I've been using Windows for a long, long time, right? Um, but I, I don't like it one bit. I think it's not good software. It's not well written. Um, yeah, it's just... just isn't. Yeah, paparazzi. That actually was not... I don't think that was my first version. Now I can recall. When they went to graphical user interface, I think 3.11 was the first time Windows was a graphics, a graphical user interface. They just have a corner on the market. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, timer. Let's do our tanks. Oops, no, low. All right, how are we doing here? Okay, we're going to go to the right. That makes sense. Let's go. Two, three, four... Five, engine keeps running. Get rid of that. You see that? What's that? Blinking. Mm. Hot train success! Thank you. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Awesome, 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 guys. Whoa! Ten months, j -Lab. Dude, you just missed it. You just missed it. It could have probably a level five hype train. Oh, man, that's amazing. Ten months! Let's go, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. I figured. I figured. Yeah, exactly. Choo-choo, indeed. All right, so. So, the request was, can we go look at Windy? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I'm going to write down that 13 minutes, because I feel like I'm going to forget that I have to subtract 13 minutes. Uh-oh. Now, here it is. Thirteen minutes from the log. From the log. In a box, man, with 500 bits. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. All right. So, um, to get both the flight planner and the skew T, the chart that was just up, right? What you're looking at here. Um, you go in here in the menu, and then just go to install Windy plugin. Okay. Once you go there, you have all the plugins in here listed. There's an airspace one, for example. It's really cool. It shows airspaces all over the world. There's other stuff, too. It's not just for aviation, right? But Flight Planner is one that I'm using now to draw the, uh, the line and things like that. Um, and then I also use this here, the Skew T Diagram. Oh, that's awesome in a box, man. Boa tardes, pilot go around. How are you, man? Thank you. Appreciate that appreciate that a very much a very much I'm still on MS-DOS 1.0 it's a bit of a pain to get software working <laughs> well to me it goes like this Windows is what happens when you have a monopoly on the market you don't have to be great right you just have to do the job and you can do the job pretty sloppily but people don't have a choice you're like, well, they can use, uh, you know, they can use a Mac. Yeah, come on. It's pretty limited compared to what you can do with Windows, right? So, that's what happens. Oh, yeah, Leia, for sure. I've learned about so many cool things from here. Oh, Falcon, that's awesome, buddy. That's so good to hear, man. What do you think about X-Plane 11? I recently found out about it. I'm not a fan, Falcon. I've talked about it before. Um, I think for the size of team that they are at Lemon Research, it's an amazing bit of software. 
but I don't like their flight model. I don't think it feels realistic at all to fly in that sim. Uh, it's very subjective, right? I think there are lo loads of experienced pilots that love the flight model in X-Plane. I don't like it. So, I've never really used it. I've used it, but never really for any long periods of time because it doesn't, it doesn't satisfy me. Ah, through the radio, which broke in an F2 coupling. They're fixing it, uh, but put up a hot fix in the meantime. That's awesome. Why try harder when, you've already, when you're already number one? Yeah, Mojave, that's pretty much the approach, right? Arch Linux one time, and he was great, but so, yeah, I mean, look, I've, I've used uh, Ubuntu, I've used Red Hat. Uh, Linux is just not user-friendly. It just isn't. Even Ubuntu isn't that user-friendly. When you're coming, when you're coming, sorry, it's not user-friendly when you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, right? It's the unlawful acquisition or maintenance of monopoly power, which is illegal. That's right. Thanks, II, for that. Yeah, I don't think so, I sub. But that's subjective. It depends on how you use it. it. Depends on your luck too, because maybe you have better luck than the guy next door to you. And the guy next door to you is gonna have one thing that leads to another, leads to another, and it's gonna leave a sour taste in his mouth, right? Ah, uh, Evox, just scroll down. I have the specs listed on the Twitch page, or, or I think we still have the command in here, right, guys? Right? Yeah, so Fort likes Windows too. There we go. Thanks, Fort. Uh, it, I think it's a very, very subject. It's like me saying I don't like the, the flight model in X-Plane, right? Who am I to say that it's a good flight model? I'm not going to say it's a good flight model or a bad flight model. I say I don't like it. Maybe it's the best flight model out there, but I don't like it. You know? Nice seek! Nine, nine months. Man, those nine months coming in. Let's go, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, I, uh Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, it doesn't have to be I, I, but correct me if I'm wrong. So lobbying basically is legal bribing. There's... It's very, very, I think, clearly legal bribing, correct? Ah, but Ford, so that's what I'm saying, right? You're starting to compare Windows to what's available, which is a way to do it. That's one characterization. <laughs> I love, I love, but not necessarily true. So, I mean, as far as I can tell, you're paying politicians to vote a certain way. Sounds like bribing to me. But I love how I, I speaks like a, like a lawyer, right? That's one characterization. Yeah, so Ford, I don't compare it to what else is there. I compare it to what I would like. Just like I compare the flight model of X-Plane, not with what else is out there, with what I would like. So that's a, just a different way to look at it, right? Incentivizing. Uh... How do you bribe someone with speech? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, contributions, financial contributions. And then it just so happens that uh, the guys that got the contributions vote the way those companies or the benefit those companies. So it, I think it's just a coincidence. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it was set up originally. Commercial speech is still protected uh, by the First Amendment. So... Uh, I think perhaps it wasn't originally set up as bribing. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Uh, but maybe not, right? I think 128 is what we're looking for. Maybe not. Um, it just became so over time, perhaps. I think there's a lot of legislation that starts off with good intentions and then ends up not being so good. Bom dia, Marcio. Beleza, mano. A lot of fossil companies do that. Yeah, most of them do it. Most of them do it. And then it's just a coincidence that those politicians vote for laws that protect the oil industry. Huh. Jim, I just saw your subscription there two months, buddy. Let's go. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate that very, very much. All right, we're getting a little too low here. I'm going to use my trim to go up a bit. 
How is the temperature changing? Is it changing? No, it's about the same. About the same. It's about six degrees. So I suppose it's two degrees warmer, isn't it? Oh, just watch your video on NDB viewers. As a fresh, oh, commercial pilot who has just passed the instrument rating exam, your ability to explain those concepts is insanely good. Oh, mini webs. Thank you for saying that, buddy. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that. Wow. And congratulations on your commercial pilot's license. That's awesome. That's awesome, buddy. It's the best I've ever seen anyone explain NDBs. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Fabio. Hi, guys. So, I missed the half leg again. The half leg? I don't know what that means. Too old for this. But I do know that you're never too old for this. Never too old for this. How is that fuel consumption? Are we knocked? Uh, yeah, we're locked. Not knocked. We're locked on that 10. Yeah. Uh, true airspeed, not so good, though. Not so good. I am climbing, but still. Oh, first half. Okay. Actually, we are not halfway yet, so we're still in the first half. So, Marciu is asking, uh, at what temperature do you turn on pitot heat, right? There's basically two schools of thought, or two procedures out there. If you're flying a plane that is normally going to fly through the freezing level going up and through the freezing level going down, like an airliner, like a business jet, those, those guys fly pretty high, right? So chances are they're going to fly through a freezing layer or even a turboprop, right? Then in those planes, you turn it on right before takeoff, right? Some, some do it during taxi, some do it right before they line up. It depends on the OEM. Um, but that would be that would be wise, that would be wise and advised. Uh, in smaller planes, it's not normally an automatic because it, very often you're flying low altitudes and not flying through freezing levels or even just VFR, even if it's cold. But you're not flying through clouds, so there's no re no risk of ice accumulating on that pitot tube. So I have it off right now. Mine is off, right? I don't want to drain. A little extra power from uh, have to make the, the the alternator work a little harder right now there's no need for it so I don't have it on I also know that if I ice up that pedo does get hot enough to melt the ice that has accumulated on it so I will have no speed indication or better yet, it'll be frozen right but it, it won't show my speed the accurate speed for maybe a minute while that ice is melting and then I'll have it again so I don't leave it on. Does that make sense? Let's see, let's see. Oh man, you guys are still talking lobbying. Holy moly. Oh, I, th I think I threw a grenade in chat, didn't I? Maybe not a grenade. Maybe a smoke bomb. Uh, Ninja, I don't know. I don't remember. Hey, Fabio, silly question. No, 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 Edo, never. The only silly question, the only dumb question here is the one you don't ask, buddy. Uh, to set IS on the arrow, what is the thing you adjust in the gauge? Is it at altitude? So, Edo, good question. Good question. Um, so, what do you mean by that, Lolilo? What do you mean by that? Oh, loco. I've been looking at that crash because I want to show that on stream at some point, but a lot of the stuff is copyrighted, right? A lot of the stuff is copyrighted. So, hold on. Let me answer Edo, though. Edo, it's not indicated airspeed. It's true airspeed. Indicated airspeed is the airspeed that I read right here, which is 109 knots at the moment, right? Let me see what my altitude is. Okay, got to trim down a little bit. So, we got back to 6,000. Now, I got to level off. Okay. But it's not my true airspeed because your speed, your true airspeed over the ground is going to be different than your indicated airspeed. Why? Well, because air density changes basically that's why as you go higher up in the atmosphere there's less density less molecules of air per volume right whatever that volume is a pint let's talk about a pint sure fill that pint with air okay at sea level there's way more molecules of air in there than at 10,000 feet if there's less molecules at 10,000 feet and you think about how our pitot system works which is basically just measuring rem air it's a tube that's out in the airstream and it's measuring how much air, how hard the air is hitting it. The faster you go, 
the harder the air hits that tube, and we have a little pressure sensor in there that says, ah, your speed is about this. We calibrate it for this. Good. As you go higher, you, you may be flying the same speed, but now there's less density, less air, less force hitting that tube. So we're going to get an indication that's not accurate. It is accurate for certain things, but not accurate for flight planning, for example. But hold on. Hey -oh! 128. Okay, we need to change our heading and mark that down. I know it said 129, but we're going to consider that okay. So Navlog crushed another waypoint. Um, oh, yeah, that's right, because it was minus 13. Never mind. Just making sure. And now heading 104. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Heading 104. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, Edo, now there's less molecules hitting that tube, even though you're flying at the same speed. So, if you want to know what your actual speed is, you're going to have to correct for that density, right? That density change. And you do that by knowing your altitude and your temperature. So, we look outside. We say, hey, well, outside. We look at our outside air temperature. We say, okay, looks like our temperature right now is about 6 degrees, right? Here is 0 Celsius, or Celsius is on the inside here. So 0, 2, 4, 6, okay, 6 degrees. And what's my altitude? My altitude currently, it's about 6,000 feet, okay? So we're going to go over here, and right at the top there, we're going to be able to adjust for both, the altitude and the temperature, okay? The temperature is just static written down here from minus 30 to plus 30. Doesn't take a, a genius to count the hash marks here and realize that, oh, okay, each hash mark is 10 degrees because this is minus 30, minus 20, minus 10, 0, 10, 20, plus 30. Okay. Well, we saw our temperature, 6. All right. So plus 30, plus 20, plus 10, and 0. So 6 is in between here. And the altitude is the window there that I can, I can twist, right? That's 10,000 feet, 8,000, 6,000, 4,000. The solid lines in between are the 5,000, 7,000, 9,000, and you even have 500 foot marks in there. So there's my 6,000. I need to align that 6,000 with 6 degrees. So it looks like it needs to go oh, the other way, right? That's, that's aligned with 10. So about 6 is going to be in the middle there. Then I can go down here and read my true airspeed in this window, which I'm just beginning to get into. But I can tell that, look, that's 140, 130. So 120, 122 now looks to be my true airspeed, which is quite a bit faster than the 111 that I'm indicating right now. Let me pause there. Did that make sense? Or even better, did that not make sense for anyone else? Or Edo? Oh, smell. Thank you, buddy. Hey, Pilgrim is here, too. What's up, man? How are you? Hammer nails. Nice. Nice to see you guys. Whoa, thank you. I've never understood IS and TAS until now. Oh, there we go, Gad. You're very welcome, man. Very welcome. Two-tone. How are you, my dude? Manifold pressure right now is whatever it needs to be to give me that 10 gallons per hour. It looks like 29. And I got 2,400 RPMs on the prop. Super clear, the explanation. All right, Max. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it makes sense now. Thanks, Fabio. Okay, Edo. And thank you for that question, man. That was a great question. Great question. Now, I think someone else asked something after that. Hey, Bill, by the way. Hello, Bill Ackman. How are you, sir? Let's see. Um... Oh, yeah, Loli Law was talking about inner dynamics, and then Loco was talking about Air France 447, right? Mm hmm. Oh, I think, Loco, you said unavoidable tragedy. No, it was the opposite. I think you meant the opposite. It was very avoidable. Very avoidable. Absolutely not, Evo. You're never too old, man. Never too old. Now, listen, you're going to have to turn your ego down sometimes, because if you go to the airlines, for example, you may, you're going to start from the bottom, right? So you may be a first officer to somebody that's half your age. That's okay. I don't mind that. If you can deal with that, absolutely, buddy. All right, Marcio. Good, man. Uh, well, I mean that when you are in a CB, you get all the huge upwards and downwards uh, winds and rain and stuff. You do. You get that here, Lolilo. We get that here. We've been having up downs or up drafts and down drafts since we got into the clouds. Even even on top of some clouds, you can get that in the sim. Two-tone, did somebody just say a pint? <laughs> hey, two-tone. 
Are you, uh, by chance, from Ireland? By the way, one thing I didn't calculate is, look, the next one is 1 hour 57. Minus the 13, off 13 minutes offset we have, right? 143 is our next check-in. 143 is our next check-in. Okay, nine minutes to go. See, I like to have these waypoints close enough that you just keep, you're always doing something, right? Tattoo big in four months, man, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I'm surprised this is automatically corrected by the pressure barometer. Ooh, oh, oh, I see. I see. Well, this is not a mechanical system. It doesn't, it's not sensing anything. You're adjusting a little pressure diaphragm that's inside this guy. Well, actually, no, sorry, you're not adjusting it. The pressure diaphragm is what's being adjusted by the pedal tube pressure, right? Oh, yeah, so true airspeed is also only going to be your ground speed if you're in zero wind. If there's any kind of wind, your ground speed is going to be different than your true airspeed. As a matter of fact, look, it definitely is in this case, right? Our true airspeed is 125. We told the sim, we, or we told Sky Vector, our true airspeed is 125. So it just copies that down. But then it uses the wind to calculate your ground speed. And we have a little bit of a tailwind. Remember that? So ground speed right now is 144, or should be. And that is all from windy remember that look look we should be somewhere around here and yeah there should be although we're down to 6,000 feet there should be a good amount of tailwind over here that's true that is true no ground speed from the GPS to tone has nothing to do with the atmosphere you could be in space and get ground speed and, and you do right gps is simply measuring your speed by looking at the difference the change in latitude and longitude and calculating distance and then the time that it took so it's kind of like a tme giving you ground speed hey jam knights what's up man how are you hey mr fabi good to see you here's a deft question for you guys the only deft silly bad stupid question is the one you don't ask stop saying that the fuel gauge in the plane shows U.S. gallons. Would this get converted if a plane is exported to somewhere that doesn't use U.S. gallons? Or does the user need to become a au uh, fait with U.S. gallons, liters, whatever you need to measure? So, Pilgrim, first of all, in aviation, we're used to converting stuff all the time. You need to be good at that. And you have a lot of charts that help you, little computers that help you, right? Um, that depends on the OEM. Some OEMs will have that as an option when you buy the aircraft, if you're buying a new, right? Some don't. Some are like, hey, listen, we make it in the United States. It's gallons, baby. That's it. America. It depends. Do you know how aircraft that fly faster than Mach 0.3 show to airspeed after Mach 0.3? Viscous effects cause pitot tubes to be inaccurate. Yes, Christopher. You basically get compression effect after Mach 0.3, right? So that is corrected for in planes that fly that fast. B2 or Blue Angel pilots move to airline flying and huge wake-up calls start flying night trips and reserve as reserve FO, a lot to learn. That is true, go around. That is so true. Interesting stream again, says Red. Thanks, Red. I'm catching up here. Uh, I'm at six degrees, I, I, six degrees Celsius at 6,000 feet. We made the right choice descending. We're in the best spot we can be right now, considering the weather around us. Well, Ninja, I don't have that. I'm not going to look, but good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, DC, what? You left for coffee? What? That's what I'm about to do. I've been saying that, but I can't Splash unglue myself. Splash for six months. Good morning at the Flying Fabio and everyone. Always enjoy your stream. So much good information with positive spirit. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. What's a good program for VFR? Uh, just like Google Earth. Uh, so I can study the areas. Ah, Evox. Little nav map. Little nav map which you can get right here uh it i'm not going to show it just in case just in case it's showing something that i can't see i don't want to see my position right now but go get little nav map it's free and it's amazing amazing splasher buddy thank you man for the sub but especially for the words that's awesome that's awesome all right coffee time wait wait do i have time uh, let's see, 143? Yeah, I got five minutes. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Hey, and I still have somebody right there. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys, I shall be right back.
Fuel tank change. Okay. Let us do this. Let us do this. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Ooh. Ooh, Nelly. One minute to go. Checking is good. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. I have... I have a gut feeling. I have a gut feeling that I am slightly to the south. Um, because of some corrections, well, because of this change of flight plan, and I think the wind changed enough that I am a little bit off. So, here's what I'm going to do. For this next one, right, we just did this one. Let's put a line through it. Heading should be 106. I'm going to do 105. I'm going to do like one degree less for maybe the next three. 105. Okay, and the time is going to be 2 hours and 13. Minus 13 is going to be 2 hours, 17 minutes from now. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Well, hello, everybody. Now I have time to actually see what you guys were talking about. Say hellos. Ernest McCluck. Jeez, wish I could get my hands on a 3000 GPU near MSRP. Yeah, I really wanted to play this game. I know, man. It's crazy, right? This GPU stuff. Just crazy. Hey, Franco. Let's see. Oh, getting my second shot of vaccine oral. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Uh, we put some fluffy dice in the back. Oh. Oh. Where, man? I wish it was here. I wish it was here. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. The invisible pilot is in charge. <laughs> By the way... For you Formula One fans. Interesting race. Interesting race yesterday. Did not expect it was going to be... Wait. Is anybody here that doesn't want to know the, re the results yet? That can't know the results? Attention. Attention, shoppers. Attention, shoppers. We're about to discuss Formula One. If you don't want to know the results, mute your stream now. Well, what was interesting for it... What was interesting was how easily, easily Red Bull kept Mercedes at bay, right? Yeah, totally lack of action on track for sure. But I also enjoyed the strategy side of things, right? And that was, nobody was expecting that. Mercedes was not expecting that. And Red Bull was not expecting that. Yeah, Redux, and I think they're starting to be, man. I think they're like, how, how is Red Bull doing this, right? I don't think so, Airlock. I don't think so. I really think it's that upgrade Honda did on the engine, which is, you know, they call it a reliability update upgrade. Oh, yeah, we thought this could break, so we just made the engine stronger. They gained, the word on the street is they gained 14 horsepower with that reliability upgrade. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, Leia, it's, <laughs> let's be honest. It's more just Toto and Lewis, which I suppose that's a big part of Mercedes, right? But, I mean, yeah, they're, they're being crybabies, man. To tone, um, man, I don't. I'm not one for favorites. Like people ask me this all the time, and I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm slightly broken as a human because I can't even tell you what my favorite food is, which is gonna be funny during that interview. To tone, right? Because I don't really have favorites, man. I just like a bunch of stuff. So I like a bunch of teams. Um, I like Mercedes for the incredible excellence they have as a team. Right? I mean, it's just amazing what they've been able to do. But I don't like Lewis, right? And both is, eh, mm, could take it or leave them. Um, I like Red Bull for what they stand for, for what they've done. I will never forget this. Never forget this. Never forget this. Lewis, once in his career, I don't remember what they were asking him or what about, but he made fun of Red Bull because they were, I think they were comparing McLaren and Mercedes to Red Bull, and he goes, it's just a drinks company. Really, Lewis? You mean the guys that whooped you yesterday? Yeah, just a drinks company. <laughs> oh, I have a sign poster, Pilgrim. A sign poster, buddy. Finest! Buddy, thank you for that sub. Let's go. Yeah, so the reason that I don't I don't prefer Indy, uh, which is a lot, a lot of fun to watch, and often the races are more fun to watch. But, and this is just the geek in me, right? The engineer in me. The level of engineering in Formula One doesn't exist in almost any other sport. 
and most of it you can't appreciate if you don't dig deep into technical articles and things like that if you're not sort of more connected than the usual fan is to the sport so i totally get why some people don't get into formula one or think it's boring but the level of engineering that is as much an engineering competition as it is a driver's competition that's why that's why there's two championships there's a driver's championship and then there's a constructor's championship right it's also one of the few few racing leagues out there where every team has to design and build their own car okay you can say ah oh, they, they can buy suspension for yeah sure but they still have to design and build their own car right yeah exactly exactly salamanda um right so so i watch formula one not just for the sport that you see on tv i watch for the stuff that happens behind the, behind the scenes and they are i think it's pretty clear that they are probably the best drivers in the world make it to formula one right aye aye that reminds me i used to have a boss at flight safety he did it as a joke but he would introduce himself at parties as uh you know hi i'm so and so arrested 15 times never convicted <laughs> I got a lot to GT3 racing, Curtis of Acero Corsa Competizione. Yeah, Leia, it's really cool. Yeah, there is way better. If, if all you want is on track action, right? There's way better stuff to watch than Formula One. Way better stuff. But, like I said, that's not the only reason I watch it, right? Hey! <laughs> Give you bits because you don't like Lewis. I, I, I have a serious problem with Lewis, man. Serious problem. I dislike him in a, in a big way. I also recognize the talent. The guy is incredibly talented. We got 11 minutes to go. The guy is incredibly talented. One of the best ever. There is no question about that. But you can respect the talent and not like the person. It's like, remember Brothers in Arms? Remember they had that sergeant no one liked? Because he was a, a limp. You know what? And remember, remember somebody didn't salute him? And immediately someone told him, you salute the rank, not the man. Right? I respect the talent, not the person. <laughs> yeah, Mort, that's what I was going for. That's what I was going for. Uh, I don't watch football as much. I watch American football a lot. I really like American football. I, I think it's an amazing show, right? Amazing spectacle. And I think those guys are all freaks of nature, all of them. So I enjoy watching that a lot in the same way that I enjoy watching like track and field. It doesn't happen that often, right? But I enjoy watching because those are like, they're superhumans. Yeah, exactly, Ninja. But football itself, I don't watch it as much. The, the stuff I normally, well, I don't have time for it all, to be honest. When I was in Brazil, I watched a lot. But here, the stuff that you get on TV is not that great. The MLS, it's okay, but it's not world-class level of, of football. Like it is if you're watching, you know, a lot of teams in Europe, a lot of teams in South America. Um, so, it also depends on, you know, the, the time I have available. I pour, you know, it, 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 <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it does not show how much time I actually pour into the streams when I'm not streaming, right? And I know because even Abby has trouble understanding. She's like, how does it take you so long to prep for one of these things? And, and I tell her, look, uh, it's hard to explain because a lot of it is feel, a lot of it is gut feeling as you're researching stuff and testing stuff, but it ends up making streams that people seem to like. Right? And I know that it also looks like I didn't plan a lot of stuff. And some of the stuff, absolutely, I did not plan. But there's a lot of stuff that happens on stream that looks to be happenstance that I was counting on it happening. And sometimes, I've got, I've got to be honest, sometimes I'm facetious. And I'll say, oh, wow, what, how lucky that that happened. But, you know, it's because I don't want to sound like I'm bragging. They're like, yeah, it happened exactly when I wanted it to happen, you know? Yeah, so for example, baseball, I can't watch baseball. But I think, but I think it's the same reason why a lot of Americans can't watch soccer, right? Let's call it soccer just so we don't get confused. I didn't grow up watching baseball. So I watch baseball now and I think it's like super boring, but also because I don't understand every single rule and there's a lot of them. 
And I think it's kind of the same thing with people that didn't grow up watching soccer, right? Because if you compare it to some other sports, you can say, oh, man, it's, there's not as much action or at least as much scoring. Sure, you could say that. But if you grew up watching it, I think there's a certain nostalgia. There's a certain connection that you made with the sport that you don't get as an adult. I mean, DC, if you talk about baseball in Brazil, most people in Brazil haven't even heard of baseball. Okay, there's the internet. They have heard of baseball. You know what I mean. All right. Six and a half minutes to go. Yeah, so Dugal, for example, golf, right? I think golf is an amazing skill-based game. Amazing, right? It's obvious that it's all skill and experience. There's very little that the equipment is going to make a difference in. But it's, it's boring to me. So I respect those guys. I think they're incredible at what they do. I, but it's not for me to watch. Yeah, Franco, exactly. His strategy, they have... So that's exactly like Formula One, right? Strategies that if, you, if, if all you do is tune in and just watch the race, you, you might not get some of the strategy at all. You might not even understand what the strategy is for the race, you know? Yeah, Mojave, tennis is really simple to understand, isn't it? Even then, I'll still get the score wrong sometimes. Wait, it's 11, 30 or 40, 45, 35. <laughs> oh, huge, that's right, huge. I don't think there's a Brazilian alive, even now, even kids that haven't heard of Tom Jobim. He is idolized in Brazil. Yeah, no, for what I'm saying is this, what I'm saying is this. Equipment makes a huge difference in Formula One too, but if you look at the top Formula One teams, they're all, all of them, lapping within, after a minute and 20 seconds, they're all lapping within half a second of each other. Building completely different cars, completely isolated from each other, right? And they'll lap within a half a second of each other. That's what I'm saying, is I'm sure equipment makes a difference in golf, but those top guys are all using the best equipment. They all have their preferences, right? And it's not like one of those guys is gonna switch to another club and lose 100 yards on a drive. That doesn't happen. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, once you're at that level and you have access to the best equipment there is, it's all skill-based. And yeah, again, you have preferences. Sure, this one works better for me than the other one. Okay, that's because your that's because your swing is a little bit more this way than the other guy. You know okay. what I mean? Hey, hey! Come cats for four tier months. two four hey. months, buddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hello. What's that? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Right. Hello, baby. Had a crazy morning. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm still one people are listening to me, but uh, Abby's here, guys. Yeah, went to run the sim this morning. It's like, no, the sim is not installed. You don't run the sim in your computer. So it's been a crazy scramble. Yes, me too. We got it going. We got it going. Yeah, look at those Abby emotes. How are you? Yeah? Work stuff? No. Mean people suck. I haven't been able to check my phone. Um, was there anything you needed? No. All right. Sorry, baby. Uh, tough day at work for Abby, guys. Tough day at work. That happens when you have uh, crappy people. Yeah, Ninja, that's what I was just saying. That's what I was just saying. So, Tomcat Sky, thank you very much, man. That's amazing. Couple goals. Oh, Kirk. Uh, so let's see here. Love golf. Not a fan of baseball, says Ford. Yep. I love NASCAR for how close you can actually get to the teams and drivers. Right. Flyboy. I think. And Indy. I went to watch Formula Indy here at Mid Ohio. You guys know I live in Ohio. Um, and. And. It was awesome. Like, I couldn't believe the access. I, I didn't even have pit passes. And you could just walk around. Like, oh, here's a, a car. Like, you could, you could touch it if you want. I didn't. That's rude, right? But it's right there. Like, that was incredible. Incredible. Now, playing golf, different story, right? Yeah, I, I enjoy going out and hitting a golf ball. Sure. But I don't enjoy watching. Because that's the other thing, too, right? There are sports out there that uh, you're gonna enjoy, 
you're going to enjoy playing more than watching it. And then there are sports that you enjoy doing both. And then there are sports that you just enjoy watching, not playing. Oh, that's right. There's a lot of people in the U.S. that like ice hockey. Ice hockey, for me, again, I don't really understand the rules. And honestly, it moves too fast. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. I, I liked when they had those little tracers for the, uh, the puck. I know everybody hated that. But it was the only chance I had to understand where the hell is the puck during the game. People know because they can see the player's body language and where everybody's turning. But, I, man, it was over my head. Right. So, I, I just a quick primer here since we're talking about it again. I, I was commenting, man, you're not exactly at 6,000. That's sloppy. It is very sloppy. But we're also into some moderate turbulence. So what's happening here is the plane is hitting updrafts and downdrafts. Maybe a little less now than it was before, right? So I'm trying to correct it a bit. But when that gets to be intense, you stop chasing altitude because you're gonna, you can end up overstressing the aircraft. When you get like a really high updraft, that's going to take you up 2,000 feet per minute, which can easily happen, easily happen. Major thunderstorms have updrafts of 20,000 feet per minute, Okay. So you hit 2,000 feet per minute, and you, you, know, you, ah, you put the nose down because you don't want to climb. You want to stay on that altitude. And now you hit 2,000 feet down, and ah, you, you know, not very good for the aircraft, not very good for passengers. So instead, you maintain your attitude. Hey, man, maintain level of flight. Let that plane climb. Let it go down. If it's getting extreme, you're getting like more than three, 400 feet, let ATC know. And they'll make sure nobody's around you, right? But don't fight it. Don't fight it. Man, that Red Bull is working, and now this coffee is only going to turbinize it. So that's a rookie move I need to break. Aye, aye, it's a, it's a judgment field, right? If, if you're getting small variations, absolutely, go ahead and fight those and keep your altitude. But if it's getting pretty, pretty extreme, by the way, right now it's not extreme anymore. That's why I'm going back. It, look, it's shaking, right? But this isn't crazy. This isn't crazy. So I'm going back to it. Before, I was getting 2,000 feet per minute up, 2,000 feet per minute down. Or at least that's what I could read, you know? Hockey players are extremely fast when you see them in person. Oh, I believe it. They're they're super athletes, man. And they're also brawlers, which makes it even like, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that guy. He's already missing t three teeth. By choice. He could have wore a guard. He didn't. Yeah, I'm not going to mess with that guy. <laughs> right, Don Miguel. Exactly. Exactly. All right, guys. What's our time? Hello. That's it. That's it. We need a new heading. So let's look. Remember, we're 13 minutes behind this time here. Okay? So we just have to offset 13 minutes. So that makes two hours, which is what we have right now. Okay? So that means we just passed that waypoint. And now, or this waypoint, now we're going to fly to the other one. So let's put a line through it to mark that, hey, we've completed this. By the way, we're almost halfway. Almost halfway. Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. Now we need a heading of 104. But remember, remember I was going to do one degree less. So it's going to be 103. There we go, 103. And let's look, our next check-in is 13 minutes less than this. So uh, 2.16, two hours and 16 minutes, we should be passing our other fix. So rookie season. <laughs> hey Merlin, how are you, buddy? How are you? Ambitiona, what's up? Uh, would it have been okay to take up this flight with this aircraft and weather condition in real life? It would have been okay, but it would have been too risky. Okay in the sense that, I mean, if you're lucky, right, you could do it. It's not going to break the plane. There's no icing happening. We got this. But the weather at arrival sucks. We're expecting it to be at very close to minimums, if not at minimums, right? Uh, the weather here during the crossing sucks too. And because, remember, if I don't have GPS, I could be using a sextant for celestial navigation. Well can't do that when you're in the clouds right oh and by the way rain too uh what about a drift meter remember we learned about drift meter well you got to look down and see the water uh can't see that either so i'm truly only going by heading and time which is not a good idea on a five hour flight over the water i would do this flight if the weather was nice with this weather we're doing it in the sin because we like to see what happens when we make good decisions but as well as bad decisions right but i would not do this in real life no Oh, one out of combined trade on a DC-6. Let me see if I can see your lights. Oh, there's somebody down there. Nice, nice. 
Oh, that could be you, Merlin. That could be you, buddy. And you know why I think it's you is because right now there's an issue with the lights on the DC-6. They don't all show from a distance. And so maybe that's you. Should I have lower RPM and cruising jig uh, craft as a rule of thumb and higher RPM and climb descent? Yes, Mojave. Yes. Uh, actually, not for descent, but for climb. Basically, it goes like this. It's not about the phase of flight. It's about the power you're delivering to that prop, right? So the higher the manifold pressure, the higher you want the RPM to be. So right now, at 2,400 RPMs, I would not want to go full power. The engine will take it. It won't break the engine right away, but it will definitely stress it, right? And you will get more wear on that engine than you should. Yeah? So to know exactly what to do, OEMs will give you references. Like, for example, you take off and look, the RPM is going to be like 2,700, right? Okay. Then they'll say, hey, after takeoff, reduce power to 33 inches and reduce the propeller to 2,500 RPMs. Okay, and you always think about it because you don't want high power with low RPM. You always reduce the power first and then the RPM. Think about it, right? Otherwise, if you reduce the RPM first, you still have full power. Oh, not good. Always reduce the power first, then the RPM. And when you're going the opposite way, it's the opposite. You don't want to add power with low RPM. So we increase the RPM and then increase the power. Does that make sense? Hey, Dominator, what's up, man? What's that, Jay? Like, I uh, do love that college football in the Midwest gives you weather all the way from burning hot to downpouring rain to freezing cold and snow. Oh, it does, buddy. I definitely experienced all of them in my four years at MSU. Never missed a game for weather. That's awesome, dude. My son plays flag football, and I coach his team. Two seasons ago, well, actually, it's last season for us, but obviously we didn't do a season last year, right? So in 2019, he played his final game. With, it was summer. Summer. He played his final game in, uh, in Hale. And they still played. Because, you know, football. Oh, Mojave, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Dominator, I reinstalled the Steam launcher for the sim that's what steam uninstalled but steam can't uninstall the sim for you remember how if you have to uninstall if you want to uninstall flight sim you have to do it through the flight sim sort of launcher itself that launcher is what steam had uninstalled without me asking thank you steam valve way to go so i reinstalled that but the the contents of the sim itself were already here so once i reinstalled the launcher amazingly the launcher found everything i didn't have to link anything and it just worked yeah it was weird Weird, Dominator. <coughs> I love VATSIM, Falcon. Love. I haven't hit VATSIM in a while. Maybe we should do the flights tomorrow and Thursday, the airline flights. Maybe we should do that on VATSIM. I don't know if we're going to have controllers, but we should. For Lightning a few times, though. Yeah, that's all that stop a game. Yep. Uh, by the way, j -Lab, that's another thing I like about Formula One. Right? Like NASCAR. NASCAR will stop when it rains. Not Formula One, man. It has to be really really wet and i mean like hydroplaning wet for those guys to stop otherwise they're racing in heavy rain and i love that love that almost happened in austria yesterday real deal same as before i took everything out of the community folder sim worked started putting everything back in worked 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 finished adding everything that was in there before and it just worked i i've given up trying to understand it Oh, on the road courses. I didn't know that, Kurt. I didn't know. That's an updraft. That's a huge updraft. There we had a downdraft before, because now we're back to 6,000. So you see what I mean by not fighting it? Right? And now, instead of letting her go down, look, I can, I can just maintain my attitude, right? I'm going to maintain sort of level flight attitude using the attitude indicator here. No, not a microburst J left. That's normal. Inside... inside convective clouds that's normal yeah Kurt I like it because I like roller coasters right it's it's fun for me but uh, a lot of people don't like it I love turbulence I have fun with it J lap I was mentioning that in storms you can get 20,000 feet per minute updrafts and downdrafts that's another reason why you don't fly through a storm, because it can easily, easily, like easily um, outperform your aircraft. 
Cedar Point might be cheaper. <laughs> still haven't been, DC. Still have not been to Cedar Point. I know. I know, dude. I know. Well, honestly, priorities, dude. That's what... Because that, that's just for fun. You know what I mean? Priorities in life. I will get there. Timer. Let's do our tanks. Okay, yeah, we're going to go to the right. That makes sense. Looking good on fuel consumption so far. Looking good. Looking good. And we have eight minutes to go. No, six minutes to go. It's 12 to 13. Is it? 216. Sorry, 216. Eight minutes to go. Off topic, but aviation related. And by the way, look. Now she kind of leveled off again. We're out of those updrafts and downdrafts. So let's see here. Off topic, but aviation related. Hey, Johnny. Pratt & Whitney is building a new, hold on, keep scrolling, a new manufacturing facility outside of Asheville to produce high-tech airfoils for jet engines. Production will begin in 2022. The plant will employ 800 workers. Ooh, jobs, let's go. Where is Asheville? I don't know. Honeywell has a engine testing facility here in Ohio, south of Columbus. Um, and it's awesome because it's in the middle of nowhere because they make a lot of noise testing engines and they don't want to bother people. But it's a really cool facility. Hey, Putty, what's up? Afternoon. I was thinking today's younger generation has a great benefit of having excellent streamers like you teaching them these stuff. Oh, thanks, buddy. Excellent streamer. Thank you. I had to learn everything I know since the 90s, mostly myself. Keep up the good work. We're never too old to learn new things. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, Putty. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy, Putty. Whoa. Oh, hi. And then she reaches up to the chair and, like, touches my arm, like, Oh, hi. You were there. I didn't know. Oh, hello. Quick look, quick look. As soon as you get a break in the clouds like this, you want to look around, see if you see anything of interest. Down there, nothing. No, kitty, you can't. Kitty, that's the microphone. They're going to hear you doing that. Don't rub against it. And back in the clouds. Okay. And look at the updraft. Or first a downdraft, now an updraft. Ah, North Carolina. Got it, Johnny. Thank you, man. Was flying from Toronto to Calgary. And I uh, felt the plane drop like 20 to 50 feet. Uh, they have been an air pocket or whatever they're called. Yeah, our singleton. Uh, people call it air pockets. They're not, right? There's not a, a hole with no air or less air. That's not how it works, man. But people call it that, right? Which is fine. Uh, it's a downdraft. It's basically a column of air that's descending. Because think about it this way. How do clouds, convective clouds, form? They form... Kitty, hold on a second. I'm trying to level off here. Then I'll pet you. Convective clouds form when there's a thermal, when there's air hot enough that it wants to climb, right? And then you add some humidity and you can form a cloud. Okay, cool, cool. Um, but if that air is going up, where is it going to? Meaning there's air up there that has to move away for this air to move into. So that air up there actually is coming down. So typically, very simplistically saying, in a thunderstorm, in the middle of the thunderstorm, you have a column of air rising. And then on the outskirts of the storm, all around it, you have air coming down. So as you fly into a thunderstorm, which you never should do, as you fly into a thunderstorm, first, normally, you're going to experience a downdraft as you're getting through that outer shell of air coming down. And then when you get into the storm, updraft. That's awesome. That's awesome. Whoosh. That Twitch actually flagged that for some reason. And an unstable lapse rate. That's right. That's right. Hey, Don, you know your stuff too, don't you? Hey, Flo, what's up, man? What is up? Good to see you, man. Love to be back with you on the ferry flight. I love that you're here, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, she does have the zoomies, man. She gets the zoomies once in a while. Not very often, but she does. Yeah, real deal. It's okay. The plane is in a nosedive. It's, it's all those downdrafts and updrafts. Leave it. Leave it. I'm not on VATSIM or anything, so I don't really care about my altitude as much, right? as I would in the real world or even in that sim. Uh, and even there, I, you know, if it was that much of an updraft downdraft, I would just tell ATC that, hey, I can't maintain altitude at this moment. Looks like I'm varying plus or minus a thousand feet. You know? Nothing wrong with that. What is the correct technique to perform a DME arc with just a VR DME, not FMS? Can you explain us that in another stream, please? Yeah, Rocco, absolutely I can. I would love to do that love to do that as a matter of a fact let's see perhaps we're lucky and perhaps there is one where we're going no
Uh, basically, I'm looking through Navigraph, looking at the VOR approaches that we have, and none of them have DME arcs. They're all block the VOR, block meaning fly over, block the VOR, outbound, turn, and intercept. Another one. Block the VOR, outbound, turn, and intercept. Okay? Same. And same. So, no DME arc today, but yes. Yes, we definitely will cover that. Uh, I will tell you, Rawako, the, the technique that a lot of people use is 10 and 10. Meaning, you figure out... Let me put this back up. You figure out the radio that you're on. Let's say that... Look, let's just imagine, okay? You need to be flying an, an 8 DME arc. 8 mile DME arc. So it's going to be a circle. 8 miles centered on the VOR. And you're going to go that way. Okay. Well, you have to get out there first. So you follow this 212, right? All the way to close to 8 miles because you got to, you know, you got to turn a little early. But when you turn, what are you going to turn to? Well, if you think about it, if you're coming out straight from the VOR and then all of a sudden you're going to be flying parallel to the VOR, you need to turn 90 degrees, right? So if you're flying the 212, add 90 to that, that's 302, you're going to turn to 302 heading. Okay. Fly that 302, okay, but if you keep flying that 302, you're just going to fly straight. You're not going to be on the arc anymore, right? Right. So you're going to fly that until what? Until the next radio, 10 degrees offset from this. Okay, so pick, tune in the 222, which is going to be somewhere around here, right? And you fly that first heading of 302, you fly that until you get to the next radio, 222. At that point, turn 10 degrees on your heading and dial in the next radio that's 10 degrees after that, which is the 232. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to stop there and see if you actually got that. Oh, time to sleep, Edo. Okay, buddy. Thank you, man. Sorry I missed that. You may have already left, but thank you. Thanks for watching, as always. Really appreciate it. Look at this. We're now at 6,500. Letter vary. That makes total sense. Okay. I think we need to see it done, Fabio. Yeah, what think? Definitely. I, and I will do it. I don't think today is going to be the day, though. And then wind happens. Well, chromium. We got to explain it. Baseline first. Because you got to get that funda funda or fundamental concept. Once you got that concept, then you start throwing other variables in it. Like wind. Garlo! Clears the water. Thanks. All right. It makes total sense, too, where you probably don't see them too often. That seems like a lot of work <laughs> at a work-heavy part of the flight. Yeah, tickle. And it's also... Look, we've gotten soft as pilots, right? Uh, I was just talking to my buddy, who's a, a test pilot for Embraer in Brazil, and he also runs the Aero Club there. Uh, and uh, they, had a, they had a new pilot come in and say he wants to do his private. Okay, great. Well, they do a private in that Aero Club. They do it in a little tail drag. It's like a Piper Cub. And uh, he's like, now nah, I want to do it in the Cessna 72, which they don't normally train in the Cessna 72. Flying in Brazil is very expensive. So whereas we use 172s here for private pilots, in Brazil, because it's a more expensive aircraft, we typically save that for instrument training, right? He said, no, I want to do it in the Cessna. Why? Because it has the Garmin G1000. And I, you know, I feel more comfortable flying that. It's like, dude, you're doing your private. You barely have to look at the instruments, buddy. Like, uh, you know, but that's the generation that's coming up, is they're used to this. They're used to having a lot of aid, especially electric aid or electronic aid, to do things like flying, right? Um, time? I love you, baby. Did you get a nap in? Oh, you did. Nice. Good. Okay. I'll see you tonight and I'll give you a big hug. Okay? Right. See you. Love you too. All right. No, I didn't, Booms. Hey, Booms is here. What's up, buddy? How's it going? What do you think about flying manually and keeping the NDB uh, VOR in your 3 or 9 o'clock while also watching DME? Well, it can't be every 3 or... Oh, 3 or 9. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. So, I also use that. I use both, basically, Flow. Uh, it's all... Which one would you rather do? You know what I mean? They all have pros and cons. You know? It's up, it's up to you. All right, hold on. Hey! I passed it by one minute. Passed it by one minute. Not too bad. 
Not too bad. We got this. We got this. I am concerned about navigation today, so I'm trying to stay on top of it. All right. Heading stays the same. Good. And next one is going to be 32. Two hours and 32. Oh, she's climbing a little too much now. 7,000 is a little too much. Let's work our way down. Biggest thing I did wrong on my Discovery flight was use the EFIS too much. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you go fly a Piper Cub. You look at original Piper Cubs. They had no instruments. They had an engine instrument. And that's it. They had an RPM, and that was it. Why? Because you don't even need to know your airspeed, guys. You can feel your airspeed flying the plane. Yes, yes, you can. Um, but those piloting skills are going away because people are getting trained in planes that do everything for them, right? And then you get the Air France 447 crash where three, three airline pilots stalled the plane at cruise and kept it in the stall all the way from cruise until they hit the Atlantic Ocean and killed everyone on board, including themselves. They crashed that aircraft. That aircraft was in fine working condition. It had some ice in the pitot tube. That was it. That was it. I don't remember how many minutes it was, but it was like over five minutes of being in a deep stall. And not only being in a deep stall, they kept, they kept the yoke back. It's a stick right in the, in the Airbus. They kept it back all the way to guarantee that the plane is not going to get out of a stall. Sorry, but that is what we call children of the magenta. Children of the magenta are the generation of pilots that started when, when planes were already sophisticated enough that you didn't have to have these basic flying skills anymore, right? Yeah, exactly, Vax. And now the airline industry is like, oh, whoa, whoa, these guys didn't recognize a stall. How did this happen? Oh, my God, yeah, right? Right. How about the uh, Asiana 777 crashing in San Francisco on approach, right? Again, basic flying skills, basic flying skills. And I mean something a private pilot knows, basic flying skills. No, they crashed. Sorry, it's a, uh, it's a, yeah, same with Colgan. It's a very sensitive topic to me because all of this is completely, completely avoidable. But we, as a society, wow, wow, that's 7,000, huh? All right, let's go back down. We as a society accept that. As an aviation industry, we accept that those are, uh, those are the prices you pay. Uh, nobody is changing regulations or anything to say, you know what, man? We can't be doing this anymore. We got to throw people in a plane with no instruments. And they learn to fly that way. And then we introduce stuff. But no, we think the price is acceptable. Yeah, always think. Same thing. Same thing. Oh, guys, we're going to start. We're going to start. Did you see that we have a case flight for the first time on stream this week? That's an accident review. Is the pump on? Oh, I left it on. My gosh. I just saw the little yellow light. Whoa, 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 whoa. That dive. Woo. Woo. So we're going to start reviewing accidents on stream. We're doing the first one on Wednesday. And man, you're going to see you're going to see stuff. That you're like, how, how, how would somebody do this? But they do every day. Every day. Yeah, so I used to come hoping, I'm hoping to have a good series here too. Um, and in many cases, I think we're going to recreate the flight ourselves and see if we could have done something differently. That's right. That's right, P-Ball. And it looks like it's going to be this way all the way to Iceland, buddy. All the way to Iceland. Ah, thanks, s -Ren. Hello, Leo. Oh, yeah, Vex. I'm a huge fan of automation. Huge fan. But you can't start people that way. Ever. 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 Period. You have to start them with as manual and as basic as possible. Then you start introducing... Oh, now guess what? Now the plane's going to do this one for you. Oh, that's easy. Oh, now it's going to do this for you. Oh, that's even better. Nice. And then when those things fail, the guy goes, oh, it's okay. I still know how to do those things. Yeah, I always think, I hope so, man. I hope so. Yeah, halter, yeah. Yeah. That's right, Chromium. So, after that Asiana crash, the 777, 
which again, basic flying skills, right? Emirates did something really interesting. Emirates added a, a whole new sim session, which is an extra day uh, for recurring training for their pilots. And the entire sim session, this never, ever happened in the industry before. The entire sim session from origin to destination, flying a 777 was hand flying. No autopilot, no auto throttles, nothing, buddy, nothing. You're gonna fly the entire flight with your hands. You and the plane, you and the flight controls, that's it. But imagine how much that costs, right? For a company that has literally tens of thousands of pilots and they have to train every six months. Add an extra day that those guys are not available to fly. And you're talking probably billions of dollars. But it's, you know, what's the price of safety? That is why a lot of airline, uh, uh, not just captains, a lot of airline pilots will fly small aircraft whenever they have a chance for because they know, they might not tell you that, they might not admit, but they know that their flying skills are rusty as heck. Super rusty. Think about it. An airline pilot typically only flies the plane manually for takeoff and then it's autopilot on at 400 feet, right? And if they're shooting a lot of ILSs, Typically, it's autopilot off at whatever, 1,000 feet, 500 feet, depends on the company, depends on the pilot. But they, own, they don't fly en route by hand at all, ever, 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 ever. That's the Airbus is amazing until the system degrades. Yeah, and then you're forced to fly the thing in a way you only do in sim sessions. Exactly, exactly. And Sleepless says, hey, Sleepless, how's it going, man? My flight instructor told me that getting into stalls and spins weren't required. <laughs> but I told him that it was required but by me. So we did a couple of hours of practice and even turned it into a game of who could pull out in the quickest. And I won. Nice job, Sleepless. But nice attitude, dude. Nice attitude. Yeah, I don't care what the regulations say, dude. I need to do this for my own safety, for my own good. Right? Flying is fascinating to me, but not the commercial aspect. Yeah, my Airbus pilot friends are just systems managers. That's right. Not so much about it. Yeah, Mojave, there's no question about it. That's why I didn't go to the airlines. Most of my friends went to fly for the airlines. And I said, I never want to do that, ever. Because that's super boring to me. Super boring. You're not flying. You're managing systems. You're pressing a button and then watching the plane, making sure the plane is flying. You're watching the plane to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Ah, oh, that's good, Sleepless. Hey, Mighty, how's it going, man? Mighty Goose is here. Hey, Mighty, you just missed Abby. She came home for lunch. Well, Ninja, I didn't say I don't respect him. But I did say that, typically, with few exceptions, their flying skills are very rusty. They should focus on instruments. Yes, Mr. 90, that too. That's another thing that I believe is there should never be a private pilot out there that doesn't have an instrument ticket, ever. I don't care if you say, I'll never, ever want to fly with the weather. It doesn't matter, because you don't control that, right? Because we've been doing aviation long enough to know, long enough to know that VFR only pilots get into IMC conditions, not because they wanted to, most of the times it's just bad luck. And they typically die when that happens because they have no idea what to do when they get into IMC. So I fully agree, fully agree. Ah, recently started listening to the Airline Pilot Guy podcast. Nice, nice. Did not know that one, Sirlo. Thank you. I have a friend of mine flying the A350. He'll fly without autopilot until fly level 100. Or 10, right? But yeah, maybe his company allowed him to fly manual and other airlines not. Yeah, Seppi, most airlines do not allow you to fly manual. They want the autopilot on. Because it's more efficient. And most of the times it's safer. Because these guys are not, you know, flying skills. Ah, my wife's online name is Abby. That's awesome, Sleepless. That's cool. One of the areas that there are fewer as time progresses where military aviation training is excellent. Hands-on flying skills are hammered into one right from day one and maintained even when one has thousands of hours. That is very true, Merlin. Very, very true. How much does an IFR rating cost in the U.S.? Ooh, finest. I don't know. I haven't looked at that for a while. People in chat might know. Uh, Moet, I don't think it's required anymore. Oh, Yaris has nothing to do with ATC. Typically, when a, when a VFR-only pilot gets into a cloud like this, 
it will be a matter of seconds before they're upside down. And I mean seconds. We're talking 10 to 15 seconds and they will be upside down. And from there, it's a certain crash. They have no idea what the instruments are telling them. They've never trained. They've never, most of them never had the curiosity to find out. Which shocks me, but you know. DFR pilots frequently die when they get into it. Ah, let me see. We fly MC in the sim all the time. Yeah, Oistic. But you probably have a decent understanding of what this means, connected to this and that, right? Most private pilots, and I've been, I've flown with a lot of them. They just don't. They just don't. Here in the sim, you're forced to know these things because it's not the same as flying with an instructor in the real world when you're learning, when you can look outside and see things a bit better. Yeah, JFK Jr., right. Same thing. It wasn't even IMC II. That was a loss of horizon due to nighttime. Right, so it was nighttime. He couldn't see the horizon. Hey, he had a perfectly working attitude indicator, perfectly working attitude indicator in the aircraft. Still, rolled upside down, crashed. Exactly why I got my IFR training, yeah. Yeah, well on you, by the way. Yeah, yeah, is they don't. Most pilots don't. I'm, I'm not assuming. I know this, right? I've been in the teaching aviation industry for decades. So here's a question from the Mighty Goose. Why would they get themselves into situations where they haven't had the training or are otherwise unqualified? Because, Goose, Mother Nature throws curveballs. Because it looks like you're going to fly under that cloud. And then all of a sudden, that cloud, just the bottom of the cloud just gets lower and lower. And, 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 and here's the other thing. It's a combination of things that can happen really fast and things that happen slowly. You know how you can fry a frog, right? Put him in a cold pan and slowly heat up that pan and that frog will never jump out kind of thing. Don't know if that's really true, but that's the same. Same thing. They progressively get closer and closer to the edge. As they gain more experience, as the flight flies along and it does looks like they can make it between those clouds, then all of a sudden they can't. It, I know it's, uh, I'm oversimplifying it, but it can happen way easier than they think, way easier, which is why so many of them die. Every year, every year. Oh, Wojstek, there's no way, no way to tell what way you are, because you can pull 1G, you can pull 1G upside down and think you're completely straight, right? I can have a glass of water and be upside down in my aircraft, and as long as I'm pulling 1G, that glass of water tells me that, hey, I'm level flight. You cannot trust your, your, your inner ear at all. As soon as you go in the clouds, that you learn to, to... It will tell you, oh, you're in a turn. No, I'm not. Oh, you're climbing. No, I'm not. It will try to fool you every time. Yeah, people will say, VFR to IMC is a huge killer. Really hard to overcome what you think your body's telling you. Yeah, and listen to the instruments. That's exact. So, I think... I, 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 I didn't say that, and I should have started with that. Right? And why? people get into these situations, right, Mighty Goose? Or better, not, not why they get into situations, why they can't get themselves out is because they, they, they listen to their ear, they listen to their body, and their body is lying to them. You are not the way that you, you feel your inner ear uh, telling you is. 8,000 for an IFR ticket, okay. Yeah, poor decision making, right? right? Low ceilings into raising terrain plus get their items. Yeah, people, all factors here. All factors. It won't happen to me. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are on it. Man, I'm really behind on chat, but I'm trying. We good. We good. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Look, it was going to be 232. Is the 245 minus 13? 232. And now there is a heading change for the next one. Okay. I may have had enough correction here on my route. I don't know with that one degree. Maybe I'll do one more. One more. One degree to the left. And then we'll do it. Okay. Let's see here. So it should be 106. Let's do 105. And still in the soup, huh? Hello, friend. <laughs> Mother Nature is a bee. Yeah. I got caught in smoke from pasture burning. I started my FR training right after. Wow, Maverick. Dude, tell us a little bit more about that. So, smoke, could you see the ground? How did you survive, buddy? And then uh, JDS Fan Club says, few years ago when I started getting to aviation, I had it mixed up. I thought you had to get IFR certificate before 
you are to, uh, then released to be allowed to fly VFR. Actually, that's how I learned Tank Club. Believe it or not, I learned IFR before VFR. I know I was incorrect, but it still feels like that should be a thing. Absolutely. I fully believe that should be a thing. Counter guess an IFR rating, Oystick. That's funny, dude. Oh, timer. Gotta do that fuel. Oops. Always pressing the wrong one. Always pressing the wrong one. Oh, we're very, very much balanced. I love it. One, two, three, four, five. Engines to running. Pump off. Fuel pressure remains. Good. Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, DC. There's no question about it. I did my instrument rating in less than two weeks because I had flown so much in the sim, so much in the sim. My first ever approach in my IFR training was an under the hood NDB approach with 25 knots of crosswind and I nailed it. So much so the instructor got upset because he, he believed that I was lying. He goes, you obviously have flown the instrument before. And I said, no, just in the sim and he wouldn't believe me. Exactly, Captain Sappy on the spin there. Oh, man, so much good stuff in chat. I, I can't read it all. No. No. Could not see the ground, says Maverick. Trusted my instruments and made it through. <sighs> Buddy. And well on you for trusting your instruments. Did your body tell other tell you other things? Uh, Columbus, Ohio, Coulter. Yeah, fake, yeah. I recall one of my instructors fooling me. He made me uh, close my eyes and tell him what was the plane attitude. I said, turning left... When I opened my eyes, we were turning right. I understood immediately the term, always trust your instruments. Leia, great story, great story, because it's true. Good instructors will do that. It's so easy to fool you when your eyes are closed. On an exhibition once, I sit in the back, uh, or black box, which is moving forward and backward randomly, and I have to say, in what direction I'm moving. After a few seconds, no chance. Exactly too old for this, exactly. False horizon, yeah, yeah. That is my goal, is to fly uh, so much in the sim. Nice, Christopher. Nice, man. I hope you do. I really do. Also, when I was sitting in it, uh, I blew my mind. It's just dominated. The whole inner ear thing made no sense to me until I watched people sit in the uh, the Brainy chair. Is that what, how you pronounce it? Yupper, says Maverick. Yeah, your body was telling you other things, but you trusted the instruments, and therefore you survived. Good job, sir. Good job. Nice scenery, right, buddy? I like it too, man. This is my favorite scenery right here. My favorite scenery, the soup. The soup. But don't worry, because if it wasn't here, it would just be water anyways. Let's, uh, I know we're far. I know we're still far. But uh, let's start plugging in some nav aids for Kefladik, shall we? Shall we? All right, Ske Victor. So what do we got? What do we got? We got a VOR, that's always good news. Hopefully it's a strong one, but we also have some NDBs. There's one here, one here. I'm assuming this one closer to the field will be the stronger one, so we're gonna do three, nine, or two on our ADF, and uh, one, one, two, eight. Three, nine, or two, and one, one, two, eight. Okay, and one, one, two, eight, all right. Don't expect I'm going to be picking anything up, and I'm not, but I expect it's going to be somewhere close to the nose, so let's turn this and just kind of get it ready and hope that we got our navigation right enough that we're going to be able to pick up that VOR. Oh, here comes a good story, I think, from Ske Spectre Meltdown. During my long cross-country for my private pilot, KISP to KGFL for what it's worth, on the return while flying over the Hudson, I began picking up clear air icing. Ooh. Almost pooped myself as the windshield was getting crusty. Knew I was near the vicinity of PLU, which means, by the way, you start to not be able to see outside anymore. Called tower and landed. Called my instructor, waited a bit for the weather to clear up, and finally made it back to KISP. It was a learning experience, to say the least. Nice decision, Spectre. Nice decision. Instead of pushing through, right? Pressing your luck. Let's just go land, man. Just land. Nice decision, man. Hey, thanks for sharing that, too. The soup du jour. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. 
Once as an apprentice mechanic, I rode in a bus cargo compartment. I knew the route, but was lost after the first turn. Exactly. Exactly. Basically, guys, our senses suck. They suck. Compared to what they could be, right? Like our vision. We see this much of the electromagnetic spectrum. But we see the visible lights this much. You know? There's other birds that keep... Or, or other animals like birds that can pick up more of the electromagnetic spectrum. Like polarized light, right? And no, not us. It wasn't required for evolution, so we never had it. But, yeah, don't trust your senses. Do not trust your senses. That's why, for example... Well, it's not exactly why, but that's... Kind of why... Evidence... Trump's witness testimony in court. Because, first of all, our recollection also sucks, especially in high-stress situations. And then second, what you saw, even if you recall it exactly, eh, might not exactly have been what happened. The bears. Thanks, Leah. Appreciate that. Uh, Coulter. Anything that's this well done. Like the DC-6, like the Piper Aero, I'll take anything, man. Anything. Because I... I enjoy flying all kinds of airplanes. Even airliners. I enjoy flying airliners too. Right? I just don't want to do just that. Or just this. Or just the other. You know? Thank you, Leia. Really appreciate you saying that. Justin Fields get great airtime. Rock. Hello, Rock. How are you, bud? <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. That's true, too. That is true, too. <laughs> Fort. <laughs> I'm good, mate. Long, drunk wedding weekend. I'm simply broken and tired now. All right, buddy. I'm glad you had a good time. Sounds like you had a good time. Your way. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, all right, all right. Let's have a look at the health of the engine. Oil pressure is great, oil temperature is great. Our electrical system is doing well. We should be using about 20, 25 amps right now. Fuel looking good. Fuel pressure looking good. All right. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. You know, we're almost halfway there, aren't we? Maybe we are halfway, actually. I think we are. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, and we've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're past halfway. Let's put the altimeter setting for Keflavik in, because we still have Narsar Swap, right? Okay. Okay. Ah, 1016, much higher. 1016, that's going to be. 3000 for our aircraft. Okay. 3000. I'm going to do the tooltip because I think that's reading the sim variable as opposed to the window because the window sounds a little offset. And we're a little high, so let's go down. Eyewitnesses are worst witnesses. Yes. Oh, let me see. Captain Seppi. I was a deputy a long time ago, and in peace officer training, our instructor had a guy run into the classroom to all of our amazement and grab a book off the table at the front of the class and run out. Then he asked all 40 of us for a description and literally nobody got it exact. Sim variety is awesome. I have one wife but can fly any plane I want. Você da hora do Brasil, Fabio? Parabéns pelos streams. Elas são intuitivas. Oh, muito obrigado. No. Moro nos Estados Unidos. I live in the U.S., FCK in Ohio. And I've been here for oof, longer than I care to count, I suppose. Oh, man. 20, going to be 25 years. It'd be cool if Chad could somehow vote on in-flight emergencies. Oh, Spittleman, you haven't been here long enough. You haven't been here long enough, buddy. Yeah, DC, exactly. You have no idea. That is a thing. We haven't done that in a while, but that is a thing. 
Oh my god, I said exactly what VC just wrote. We haven't done that in one in a while. But it's okay. <laughs> yes, we actually have a way for chat to uh, um, donate bits towards failures. The Kaboom streams, that's right. We still haven't been able to hook up the Kaboom uh, app, the rent failures, to this aircraft, which is what we fly most here. But man, those streams were so fun. Yeah, Coulter, so I have a mod. I have a mod where I can do that, but I forget what the key is. I totally forget. Yeah, nope. You can turn them off with the mod. Off and on whenever you want to, which is great, because I don't like having them on. But yeah, for certain things, I need them on. I'm here now, excited, says Spittleman. Okay. Or Spidleman. 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 Maybe this is what I needed to uh, get it going again. Oh, <laughs> there you go, DC. <laughs> well, Flo, I don't think they've mapped it to a key. I don't think they've mapped it to a key. With a mod, you can have it on a key. A key press, right? Is it bad to be deciding what plane to buy based on deliveries available for it? I'm so very no, Airlock. Hey, man. Listen. You buy a plane for your sim. You're buying what you want to do what you want with. If delivery is what makes you decide... That's awesome, dude. That's awesome that you can do that, right? I'm, I'm pretty late to liveries, too. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. 244. 244. Jack, what's up, Jack? Six months, dude. Wow. Kaboom, full bladder. Jack, thank you very much for that, man. All right, let's have a look at the navlog. So our next one, minus 13, would be 51, right? Okay, so that's in another seven minutes. Yo! Yeah! All right. Oh, man, I really hope we find Iceland, boys. I really, really hope we find Iceland today. I really hope that the sim actually has the winds that reality has, right? Because if the sim has different winds, we could be completely off could be completely off we'll see love liveries got the brand for the dc6 yeah still hoping for an eastern love vintage stuff me too papa me too me too watch that trim is your nav radio tuned yes it is dc we got both keflavix vor as well as the ndb dialed in let's just check once again 1128 and three nine or two one one two eight and three nine or two okay okie dokies outside air temperature flow it's this guy right here in this case excuse me outside air temperature right now is eight degrees for me yes i do zephyr yes i do buddy so this should take 4 hours and 42 minutes, but that's not... I mean, we're 13 behind that from that. Yeah, so that works, right? So, 4 and a half hours is what the trip should take. And we're currently at 2 hours and 46. So, past halfway. Yeah, less than 2 hours to go. Oh no, Kozaki. Finding Iceland could definitely be a problem. Definitely be a problem. Look, if we don't have these winds over here, if the winds were, for whatever reason, in the sim coming from the north, we're definitely going to miss it. Because of my corrections, I would pass south of here, not see it, maybe not even pick up the VOR, depending on how far I got, how bad the winds were, right? How different the winds were. And I'd never find Iceland. Obviously, in that scenario, what you do is, if you think you're here, Right, because if we're, if we're off to the north, we should be able to... We have to be off by a lot to miss on the north. Not that much on the south. So, if you missed it on the south, fly a little bit longer, and then turn north, and hope you find the island. By the way, I found your stream. Thanks to YouTube Lessons. I was looking for DC6. I don't know why I didn't find this channel faster. Best place to learn some stuff, period. Thank you, Yaris. Let's go. Thank you very much for that. So yeah, finding Iceland could definitely be a problem. Definitely be a problem. Happy lemon cake. What's going on? 
What is going on? That's really nice, Aris. Thank you very much for saying that. Thank you. I quite enjoy helping people. Ah, Maxwell, so true. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I'm going to go heat up some food. I haven't eaten today yet. And, you know, you got to keep your brain powered up. Nay, what's up, man? How's it going? What's your opinion on the next age you should pursue a private? Take into account the cost and length of time you could fly. I think that's a very personal decision, Smell. I would do it as long as I could, right? If I'm 78 and I feel like I can still do it, I'm in good physical shape, my memory is working well, my brain's working well, and I have the money, sure. Because, listen, if you got the money, you can do a private in a couple of months. I mean, you need whatever, 50 to 75 hours, which, again, is very different. When I, <laughs> when I learned to fly, there was no minimum time. So I soloed with uh, six hours, and then I got my private with 13 hours, right? Nowadays, it's, <laughs> it's different. So you, you're going to do 50 to 75 hours, right? So, yeah, if you fly one or two hours a day, you can knock it out, man. You can knock it out. I totally would, DC. Why not? What's wrong with that? Ah, too old for this. There's a plug-in. And it comes with Windy. Look, just go up here. See Install Windy Plugin. Right? Click there. And then just choose the one you want and you have to hit Load. Um, the one I'm using is the Flight Planner. It's already loaded. Um, and that's it. Uh, it depends on where you are, Nate. It varies all over the world, right? Here in the U.S., uh, I think, what, hours go but with an instructor? It's like 200 bucks an hour, I think. So you're talking 10 grand for a private, maybe? Maybe a little more? Yeah, exactly, Chromium. Exactly. If I can pass a physical and demonstrate cognitive ability, who cares? Oh, got to hit a doctor appointment. Okay, but you still have a couple hours to go. So hopefully we'll be back. All right, love your streams, Papa. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. That is not bad at all. Yeah, I agree, Nate. I, but again, if you have zero money, that sounds like a, impossible, right? If you're uber rich, 10000 is uh, maybe nothing. So, you know, it's it's very personal. Can't beat that view. I agree, Wing Lama. I agree, man. This is my, my, happy, my happy place. My happy place is right here in the soup. How you go? How you doing, Wing Lama? I'm not a VFR kind of guy. I like looking out the window like everybody else, but I much, much rather have the challenge of a, an IMC flight. Okay, a hundred dollars per hour in Argentina. So in Argentina, you could do it for about five grand, right? Wing Lama, that's not the challenge today, buddy. The challenge today, if you if you just got here, the challenge today is that we're doing. Narsar Swak in Greenland to Reykjavik, Iceland. Dead reckoning. No GPS, right? And the winds are, uh, well, they're there. They're there. And we're not here, by the way. We're, we're further along. We think we're about here. About here. Um, so it's all time and heading, time and heading. Good challenge. Good, good challenge. All right, well, what's the time? 2.51, we're looking for, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's now. Right? Yeah. It would be 249. Okay, so let's look at the navlog once again. We've just completed another one. Let's bang that out of the way. Boom. All right. Now it's heading 104. Ah, man, I don't know. I, I have a gut feeling that I'm still further south. I'm going to go 102 on the hang. I'm going to go 102 on the hang. And the next check-in is going to be at 3.03. 3.03, because we're taking 13 minutes out of all these times here. <laughs> Coulter. Okay, 8 to 10 grand here in Texas, says Mel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's also not 10 grand all at once. Take a discovery flight and go... So, Bebo, I didn't have that money. So I took two years 
two years, actually no, a year and a half to do my private. So I only had money to go fly once in a while. So yeah, I did it in 13 hours, but those 13 hours took me two years, basically about an hour a month, a little less than that. That's all I had money for. Not bad at all, another potentially rainy day here, so hunkering down with some Twitch. All right, man. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's try to get back to that altitude a little bit. Doesn't look like we have a whole lot of updrafts or downdrafts where we are. Wokey dokey. Yeah, IFR is way more satisfying than VFR. For me, for me. Some people hate IFR and like VFR. But, you know, that's okay. Ah, sleepless. Okay, about nine grand for a hundred hours. That's good, man. That's cheap. That is cheap. Uh, okay, DC, so 175 with the instructor and fuel. Yeah, okay. Oh, when was this? Falcon, I missed that question, dude. Uh, when? In 1994? 93 or 94 is when I got my private. Uh, in Brazil. And yeah, back then, there were no minimums. It was just like, when the instructor says you're ready, you're ready. Which, that's how we should be. I hate, I hate our minimums because they don't mean anything. I've met pilots with 10,000 hours that I wouldn't trust a bag of paper to go fly with them, right? Don't know how they're still alive. And I've met pilots with 20 hours that are better than those, those guys with 10,000 hours. It has nothing, nothing to do with hours. The only thing hours tell you is experience. Yes, so you have experience, but who said that that's good experience, right? It could be the 10,000 scariest hours that somebody has seen and you're just lucky. So it doesn't mean jack. Unfortunately, we are in an industry that works not primarily, only on hours, only on hours. That's all, the, you know, how many hours do you have? Oh, 2,000 hours, yeah, we can hire you. No, how about just give me a, give me a check right, right? How about put me in some decision-making situations and see how my decision-making skills are? should be performance based not minimums based yeah it could be 10,000 FMS hours which does have some value but not in a lot of other contexts right same thing in Salem what counts for life in hiring is not a commerce travel that's insane that's us being stupid right it's us humans being very stupid exactly ninja yeah right any tip to get aileron trimmed easier in MSFS since you can't really feel it like in real life? Yeah, Breck, I mean, like you said, it's not as easy as real life. The good thing is that planes like this don't have aileron trim, so you don't have to worry about it. In the DC-6, I mean, it's easy, right? Trim a little bit, let it go, and see if she's turning. And if she is, trim a little bit the other way. Yeah, I mean, there's no secret to it. It's just, it's trial and error. Real nobody. Boa tarde, mano. Careful over there. I guess that was the way Columbus discovered America. Headed for India. I know. I'm probably going to discover, like, the Arctic or, you know, the Faroe Islands. Thinking and then call it Iceland. Wow. Iceland's a lot different than I thought. Ah, Flo. Uh, good question. Good question. Start with the rudder trim and make sure... Your turn and bank is centered. Put that ball in between these two very light black lines and you're going to be at no turning and you're going to be pretty much perfect on your rudder trim. Then after that, if, if you let go and she wants to roll a little bit, then use your aileron trim. Which is why most planes, small planes, don't have aileron trim. It's because you don't need it. You can do it all with the rudder. But if you have it, then still start with the rudder and then do that. The other night in the sim, and I gotta say, I was kind of let down by the scenery. Fake, was that before or after the Nordic update? Carno Fork is here. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Cloudy in the chest of Piper. That's right. That is right, my man. After. Oh, really? Oh. I was excited to see it. Finds a new island that a volcano made yesterday. Fabio Land, Tex Haven. <laughs> That's phenomenal. There you go, Singleton. There you go. Let's drop those Colonel Fork 85 emotes in chat. Did glider flying 500 euro per year, 4 euro per start. Only requirement, you help hours maintaining planes. Yeah, it's the same here in the US. If you help maintain the planes, it's really cheap. Bar shifts in the club bar, 
and those shifts on the winch and fuel jobs, control tower, those extra things, they're pure joy and learn a lot of it. That's true. Glider, if you don't have money to fly and you really, really want to fly, look into gliders because a lot of them are inexpensive compared to flying airplanes because you're not burning gas. I mean, you have to pay for the tow or the, the winch, but that's about it. But if you work, if you volunteer at your local aero club with gliders, man, they really like you. Hey-oh! Tank swap! Alarms going off. All right. Let's see here. We have about 26 gallons and about 21 gallons. Perfection! Perfection! Watch that fuel pressure. Swap those tanks. I have fuel pressure. Three, four, five. Fuel pressure remains. We are good to go! G2G. Good to go. All right. Next is going to be three hours and uh, six minutes. So we got eight minutes to go. Uh, is that reckoning allowed for a near real life IFR flight usually? Uh, not IFR. No. I somehow thought that you always needed ATC vectors. You are NDB. Yeah, for IFR, you need means of navigation. They can be ground based, VORs, NDBs, localizers, ILSs, whatever. Or they can be airplane based, uh, IRS. DME, DME, GPS, but you have to have means of knowing your position, or at least navigating. Yes, P-Bow, we have it installed. We'll see. Yes. Yes, Oyster. Mm -hmm. But how you can get into gliders if you don't have the money to get a PPL? Well, Mr. 90, you don't need a PPL for gliders. Uh, in many countries, glider is a separate license separate license um, and you start with no license just like you start a PPL now I don't know about Europe but I'm gonna guess that it's the same it certainly is here in the US you can start with nothing what are your rituals after first solo uh, in Brazil it used to be again back in the day it used to be they would dump a not a cauldron because then people are gonna think it's hot a uh, bucket of oil over you we became too politically correct. And so uh, now it's a bucket of water. Oh, wow. That's, whoa. Uh, in the United States, it used to be to cut the back of your shirt with scissors. So whatever shirt you were wearing when you came back from your solo, right? The instructor took scissors out and cut the back of it. Um, pretty sure that's not allowed anymore because, you know, we're snowflakes. Hello, kitty. Today I'm with 25. My plan now is go to UAE as cabin crew. Yeah. After two or three, go to USA and do my flight school in a couple months, eight, nine, maybe. Yeah. So at the final, I'll be 28, 29. Do you think it'd be a good age for ATP? Absolutely, Coulter. Absolutely. Absolutely. But DC, exactly. Yes, exactly because of that. We don't do that anymore. They still do it, JLab, really. A new shirt afterwards or a towel. Climbing too much, I'm trimming. Nice, I'm new to MSFS. Okay, hey, Spido, welcome in, man. I have an Xbox Series X with 4K monitor and just pre-installed. Wait, it's already out? <gasps> I forgot. I forgot. Wait, wait, wasn't it July? I thought it was July, not June. Hopefully I can get my hands on some Xbox flight controls before official release, yeah. It is not, okay. So how can you pre-install if it's not out? But it's there's nothing installing. How do you call it a pre-install if it's not installing anything? Disperato Erotico Gamer! Hey, man. Hello. I appreciate that. How are you? Welcome in. Right, but if it's nothing being installed, what are you doing? I doubt it, Outcast. I doubt it's the actual game. Does it actually download the whatever 60 gigs of the game? It does download the entire game. That's insanity to me, because you know people are going to crack that. You know people are going to crack that and have access to the game early. Well, Ninja, I agree. But that's extremely risky. It's asking for hackers to try and hack you.
But yeah, back to Spider-Man. That's super cool, dude. Welcome to the community. And it's gonna be cross-play, so I can't wait to fly with you, man. Well, but Singleton and Ford, people are saying here that it downloads the entire game. Ah, cookie, exclamation mark, plane. It's the just flight. You can do that here in chat, exclamation mark, plane. The bot will answer, but it's uh, the just flight Piper Aero Turbo. One of our favorite aircraft in the sim. One well, that it downloads, but I do know you can play pretty much immediately upon actual release. Okay. Or maybe, maybe it downloads in silent mode like the night before or something. Well, David, I agree. No publicity, best publicity, but I, I would think they would not want that to happen, right? Oh, Ninja, that just sounds like an invitation for hackers. Anytime you tell them, ah, this is not going to be, this is going to be tough. They're going to be able to do this one. That's when they go and crack it, dude. I just think it's interesting. Like this far out, like a, a month in advance, I, the game is not even finished. I guarantee you they don't have a gold release for that just yet. Odd. I'm sure it pre installs some stuff, right? Yeah, it must be, Rodops. It must be. T-Tail sexy version. That's right, Airlock. <laughs> I need to change the description. Ah, okay. There we go, J-Bob. It's only 297 megabytes. Yeah, it's not the game. It's not the game. Oh, how come, Colonel Fork? What happened? What happened? Do you have a long race or, or something like that? DC, you got to put a smiley face or something, man. Nobody knows when you're joking. Because you're like one of those people that I guarantee you in person, you probably joke with a straight face, right? Which I do too, but... I'm having a brain freeze. I don't get why gliders are easier or cheaper. You don't have an engine. If you misjudge the winds, you crash. I'm obviously missing something fundamental here. Well, hold on. Mr. Knight, you don't have an engine. That's already cheaper. You're not burning gas, right? A good portion of that price you pay when you rent an aircraft is the fuel. So you don't have any fuel. And by the way, if the day is good, if it's a good thermal day, you can stay up the entire day without with a drop of fuel, right? Um, normally, when they land off airport, which they do often, because sometimes they misjudge stuff, they can't get back to where they took off from, they just land in a field, and it doesn't it doesn't break anything, right? Yeah, if you're really unlucky, you're over mountainous terrain and stuff, but again, you shouldn't be messing with that if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the margins, right? If you're not in a competition, perhaps, those guys will push it. Other than that, you're going to be flying your glider over farmland, mostly. You just pick a field and land. There's no problems. And then they come, disassemble the glider, put it in a trailer, and drive it back. It's no big deal. It's also way less complex than an aircraft, so it needs less inspections, less maintenance. It's a lot cheaper. And cheaper to buy, too. Is there a reason why PC peripherals won't work on Xbox? I don't know, Betsy. I thought they would, right? It's a, it's a PC, after all. I did three-ish races on Saturday. One at Spa, two at Monza, and I'm probably forgetting... Wow! Colonel Fork. Okay. Okay. Actually, I was being hyperbolic. It sure felt like 12 terabytes because it was so slow. Yeah, it's not the game. When you open the app, it's just a screen that has an announcement for the Xbox release. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I looked at, because I remember the number 27, but I thought it was July. And when you said, like, oh, I downloaded it, you know, I was like, wait. And I looked at the date, and I was like, it's the 28th. Oh, my God, did it get released yesterday? No, I would have heard. That's what's happening in my brain, right? How did I not hear? Man, I'm a streamer. I should know these things before going live. And then I was like, wait. They said July. Welcome to this thing. The best description of how my brain works, it's, uh, it's an episode of uh, Always Sunny Philadelphia, which is a fantastically funny show. And uh, Dennis is talking to, um, oh, sorry, stretching. Oh, hold on. Oh, one minute, one minute behind. Woo! We are on it. We are on it, boys. Okay. All right, heading now 105. 
I'll do 104. I'll do 104. Next one at 23. Three hours and 23 minutes. Okay. Got a little bit of time. Yeah, so he's talking to Charlie, right? Dennis is talking to Charlie. And uh, I think they're coming up with uh, the Nightman song. Um, and, and Dennis, at one point, like, he's so amazed at what the stuff that's coming out of Charlie's mouth that he goes, what is going on up there, buddy? <laughs> and Charlie goes, I never know, man. I never know. <laughs> that scene is made for me. That's how this thing right here works. <laughs> Pep and Sylvia. <laughs> The wild card. That's right. Wild card. Hey, that was pretty good, Charlie. <laughs> Silver's up a sock. <laughs> we got some Always Sunny fans. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hi, Fabian, everyone. Hey, Open Klein. Hello. How are you? Thanks for those incredible streams. Oh, buddy. Thanks for saying that. Have some weird behaviors flying the MSFS JF Turbo Arrow when trying to identify VORs listening to Morse code. Getting wrong code, or sometimes only one or two letters. Yeah, it's broken. It's broken right now. It's not you, it's the plane. It's broken right now, and they have a hot fix coming out to fix it. But yeah, I, I get the same problem here, buddy. Wait, did we break out of the soup? I didn't even see that. Really? How often do you need to use your foot paddles uh, if you use them? Almost never. Once you are outside of a takeoff or landing situation, you almost never have to use them. Now, I say this, it's more on small airplanes like this than in bigger, faster airplanes. So, for example, in a jet, a business jet, a fighter, an airliner, you don't touch the rudder pedals almost ever in flight, right? You do for landing, you do for takeoff for sure, but in flight, they're pretty, pretty coordinated, and some of them have yaw dampers that will even help with that. In a plane like this, yeah, you have to press the rudder a little when you turn, but it's less than you think. Like on the ground, you do a lot of rudder when you're trying to maintain directional control. In the air, when you go to do a turn, all you need to do is center this ball right here. So you have to press a little bit, but it's, it's not that much. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Rodopsin, I think we're gonna make it. You guys are talking about you, right? Yourselves. Oh, Superboy, so that's the thing, right? I've never had a Just Flight product before Microsoft Flight Sim. Never. Uh, this is my first Just Flight product. Um, the Piper Aero, normally aspirated, and then the Turbo, right? I consider them the both same aircraft. Um, and they were amazing. Amazing at everything. Like, the product was great, the support was great, the updates came out fast. They were responsive. So not having previous experience with them, I was like, this is great. This is great. But it sounds like that was not the case in the XP world, huh? Full of bugs on release with 146. Just lazy. Uh, sorry to hear, man. Uh, maybe they learned their lesson. Let's see, because they have further releases coming for MSFS. Let's see how they, those go. New Islamic Mesh, is that the, in the base game? Add on separate purchase. Ah. Yeah, Airlock. You need to go get... Uh, do you know Orbix, the company that makes a lot of sceneries? Glad to hear it. Wait, who? What? Who had a broken spine, but he's fine now? What? Oh, your friend did paragliding. Oh my god. Oh, Zasran, this reminds me of that uh, that crazy paragliding story you told us, man. Or at least you shared with us. You still have that link. Oh, the arrows for explain are superb as well. Oh, okay, Skizzlebug, good to know. Oh yeah, I'm getting for Sky Park. Okay, so Orbix has the, the free Icelandic mesh. Thank you, Zasran. Maybe we should have a look at that. Well, Yaris, hold on a second. Hold on a second. That was the case early on. But even PMDG came out and said, there is nothing holding us back now. The SDK has given... Because they, you know, they've been working on the SDK hard since release. If PMDG is saying that there's nothing they need from the from the SDK. They have everything they need for all their airliners. That's a pretty strong statement. Yeah, I think that was true early on, Yaris, but it's no longer true. No longer true. Oh, thanks, Fort. Nice, man. Appreciate the link there. Yeah, Ninja, there we go. Great minds think alike, buddy. Hatchet! 
Did they still simulate Breaker's trip? Yes. Yes, they did. As a matter of fact, you can trip them yourself. You can trip it. Watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin our trip by doing this. So you can just click on any of these and trip them. Let me trip Nav 2 and see what happens. Well, I don't know if that... How about the DME? DME. All right, let's see. See my DME up there? hey -oh! And then put it back. Oh, it works again. Oh, nice, nice, Ezran. I'm going to see if I can read that at the same time that I'm doing this nav log. Whew. It's asking a lot, isn't it? Asking a lot of the Flying Fabio. Yes, I dragged out that A. <laughs> yeah, Hatchet. <laughs> not going to do that, buddy. Yeah, just in case, man. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to risk a bug with the aircraft. I don't get it back, etc., etc., etc. Right? I know. I know, Chromium. Well, developers can. Developers can. The DC-6 has a probability that any of those circuit breakers are going... Well, the systems that have circuit breakers will trip for all circuit breakers. So you can, as a developer, you can do that. All right, what's my time here? Because I'm about to start reading a story. 3.13, we needed 3.23. I got nine minutes to go. Let's take a chance. Let's take a chance. I'm going to read you guys a story of a paraglider -er, who got sucked into a thunderstorm. Would you like to see the text as I read, or would you like me to just read it out loud? There's When there are visual aids, I can show them, but there's only one, really, for the entire article. There's only one picture, and it's better at the end. Fires are coming, yep. Storytime daddy style. Hey, Johnny. Johnny. Hey, buddy. Johnny's the guy that makes a lot of the guides for the amazing group flights that we have. Johnny, did you see that I rescheduled for this Friday? We're still doing it, bud. We're still doing it. All right. So I'm going to start reading. All right. Cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Hopefully you can join us. I, I know you're busy with the new job, but hopefully you can join us. Okay. So I'm going to read you a story real story that happened to a paraglider -er. right nice yeah 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 for sure Johnny for sure okay Saturday 26 July 1997 hold on hold on I do use it Coulter mainly to see who's online on VATSIM alright Saturday 26 July 1997 <laughs> I had a feeling I shouldn't fly that day. My friend Matko and Zasran, I'm sure I'm going to butcher these names, so I'm, I apologize in advance. My friend Matko and I woke up at 6 o'clock, packed the stuff in a rush, took a shower, and headed for Buzet, the site for the competition. The weather didn't look good. We drove through showers, and the car thermometer gave an outside temperature of 16 degrees Celsius, very low for the time of year. This was the first official Croatian paragliding competition. The crew was already there when we pulled up. Boris, Kruno, Carlo, Danko, Bozo, Radovan, Shreko, Leo, Zlatibor, Joza, and Sandy. We hardly get together, so we had a cup of coffee and a natter. What's a natter? I was on the organization committee. We all agreed to move to launch uh, sometime before noon. I followed Carlo by car as we were approaching Raspadalica launch. Hey, Sind. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Oh, for chat. Okay, thank you. Ah, nice. Didn't know that. Closer to the mic, please. Really? I can do that. <clears throat> Is the engine okay in the background? Is it too low, too low? Whatever. Let me know. This was my first time there. The place faces south, 560 meters above sea level, so city 1600 feet, right? Sounds good, okay. Please don't lick it. I don't want to be banned, DC, don't worry. Wide enough to allow for four wings in parallel, wings are the parachutes they use for uh, paragliding, 
but relatively short and steep, with a railway line just 100 meters below. It was hot, about 27 degrees Celsius, and two-eighths of the sky was covered by nice cumuli, cumulus clouds, which means convective activity, which means thermals are feeding these clouds, and those are the cauliflower-looking clouds, right? They're not giant storm clouds, but they look bumpy because they are. Oh, okay, a flow. <laughs> okay. You got it, buddy. You got it. We agreed on the task, which is the, the circuit they're, they're going to they're run, and made a briefing for pilots. Air start. Hold on, hold on. I'm not going to miss this one. I'm not going to miss this one over here. All right. We're going to look at 23. Got it. Got it. Five minutes to go. Air start was supposed to be at 14.30, so 2.30 p.m., and the marker had to be mounted on a meadow below the railway. The first turn point was at the church Kronika, west from the start, then the church St. Thomas in the uh, east, then the big crossing south in Bouzet, then again church Kronika. Okay. Okay. And the fan is really high. <laughs> All right, trimming here too. I'm seeing me climb a little bit there. The goal field was just northwest from Bouzet. I moved a little away from the crowd to concentrate and relax imagining an ideal takeoff in great flying conditions calming. If I had been alone, I surely would not fly that day. Red flag number one. If I had been alone, I surely would not have flown that day. It is hard to explain, but some intuitive alarm within myself turned on. I just got goosebumps just thinking about that. But I was the president of the biggest and most active Croatian club, and my ego would have fallen apart if I refused to fly with no reason. He had reason. He just didn't think they were good enough. Right? Okay. Leo was first off, then Danko. I dressed myself in shorts, a fresh t-shirt, a white cotton shirt, and a thin windstopper jacket. I mounted my AirCotec top navigator on my left leg, adjusted and checked the handheld radio frequency, and I also checked my reserve, just in case I might need it. Foreshadowing! I launched at 14.050. Oh, what's, what's going on, guys? Something going on? Okay. No, I thought so, but no. Okay. I launched at 14.05, straight into a good one. He means a thermal. After the first climb... I read my top navigator's wind information. Wind was from west-southwest at 16 kilometers per hour. We were flying along the ridge with some thermals apart from the wind. Because on a ridge, you can get orographic lift. When the wind hits the ridge and gets blown up, you can fly along this ridge back and forth, back and forth if the wind's strong enough and never have to stop. Right? <clears throat> we were flying along the ridge with some thermals apart from the wind. Although it was hot, I took my gloves from the side pocket and put them on. We surfed the ridge until 14.25, so about 20 minutes, right? Five minutes before the supposed starting marker. Okay, yeah, ridge soaring, that's right. To the east, we could see the beautiful mountains of Uka, near which lay a big cumulonimbus, pouring rain. Hmm. That shouldn't bother us, I thought, as it was over 20 kilometers away and downwind. 20 kilometers away is not much. When you're flying, that's not much. Clouds can move very fast. But that cloud was downwind, so he's thinking it's moving away. Okay, downwind from them, right? Ten minutes before the air start, I gained some decent altitude. Nice, constant thermals from uh, a half to three meters per second, which, if you know gliding, that's pretty good. Watched up, I'm reading the story of a paraglider who got sucked into a thunderstorm. At 1425, Danko, my instructor, who is on his own, Right? Had a radio briefing with the ground support crew. He's flying. Danko is flying by himself. This guy's flying too, but Danko happens to be his instructor. Uh, had a radio briefing with the ground support crew, and after a short conversation, the decision was made to cancel the task. Hey, good thinking, guys, right? The reason was the overdevelopment that was observed a few kilometers north of our position over Mount Zbevnica, which is a thousand meters high. Okay. Yeah, there you go, Zasran. Thank you. So, three meters per second. Yeah, it's 600 feet per minute for free. That's awesome. Right? That's pretty awesome. Hold on. Just checking here. Ha 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 ha. Not this time. All right. 
Let's put a line through. Okay. Next heading, 103. I'll do 103. There we go. Sorry, you didn't see it. There we go. I just put a line through here. Next heading is 103 and 3 hours and 40 minutes. 3 hours and 40 minutes. And by the way, if we're adding these the, uh, distances here, just to see when we can expect to get that VOR, if we are en route, right? Let's see. Oh, and hold on. Tank swap. Let's do that real quick before we forget. We should be very equal. About 21. Oh, and 20 and a half. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome sauce. Back to the left. Three, four, five. Pump off. Fuel pressure remains. We're good to go. Now let's go back here. Uh, three hours and 40 minutes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We're adding, adding distances. So this is 40 miles, 78 miles, 130 miles, or 120 miles, and then 160 miles. Okay. So we're currently about 160 miles from the destination. That should be our distance, right? If that's a really powerful high altitude VOR, we might pick it up at about 130 miles, right? Which is not now, but it should be soon. If it's a lower power VOR, it's going to have to be closer. So let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye on it. All right. And now we have until 340. Another 16 minutes. Okay. All right, so... They decide to cancel the task, right? Because of that uh, um, storm and overdevelopment. Overdevelopment means, hey, that's blowing up. Like, that cloud is blowing up more than we expected. It's more violent than we expected. Uh, maybe we don't get close to it. Okay. So, Danko, the instructor, talks to the ground crew. Cancel. Hey, we're canceling the task. A radio message followed. The competition is canceled. Please aim towards landing. It sounded calm. No rush, no panic. So I took my time and headed off to the south towards the sun and white puffy clouds. Guys, things can happen very fast when you're flying. Unconcerned about the black monster that was looming from the north. A big mistake. Leo was about 150 meters southwest and 50 meters higher than me. I noticed Danko and Carlo to the west and above maintaining big ears. Big ears is a uh, basically a setting that you can have on a paraglider wing, right? Uh, where I think it has to do with flaring. Basically, you're adding drag uh, to, to your wing. Others were somewhere behind to the north and northeast directions. I was at 1,300 meters. Uh, yeah, you collapse the outside edges. That's, what I, that's why I was doing this. Piap. Piap? I'm going to go with piap. Or fiap. I was at 1,300 meters and decided for my first B stall at 1430. A B stall is when you stall the wing, right? But it's a recoverable stall. You're doing it because you want to lose altitude fast. I was descending at minus 7 meters per second until I reached 1,000 meters, 3,300 feet. Then the B stall deformed into a rosette like with a frontal tips, up, tips forward. I didn't like it. It looked scary. So I released the B stall, reinflating and stabilizing the wing, and then repeated the B stall again. PH yap. PH yap? Okay. Uh, okay, ocean visible. Where? Are you guys fooling me? Are you guys messing with me? Where? Where? It feels like you're plunging to the earth. Yeah, okay. Okay. After a few minutes, I looked at my Vario vertical speed indicator to see to my amazement that I was ascending at 2 meters per second. He has a B stall going. He stalled his wing or part of his wing, which should give him a very good descent. He's climbing at two meters per second. I looked up just in time to see Leo get sucked into the cloud where the cloud base had lowered to 1300 meters. Goosebumps again. Before he entered, he took a picture of me. A couple of seconds later, holding the B stall and ascending at five meters per second, a thousand feet per minute with a stalled wing. He's going up. A thousand feet per minute. I pierced the cloud's base and my world went white. At this point, I'm perfectly calm. I'm very close to the edge of the cloud, like the side edge of the cloud, and I have my top navigator with its GPS compass function. Aiming towards the south and getting out of the cloud shouldn't be a big deal. 
but I start losing valuable time pissing about with my compass and speed bar. Navigating by the compass alone is not easy. Because of the compass's delay, because it doesn't have fast updates, especially back in the 90s, I find myself steering south and actually going north. I can't believe my eyes. Then, the Vario Needle goes crazy. It is fluttering at 10 meters per second, 2,000 feet per minute. He's still on a stalled wing. With no fear, I pull a full frontal collapse for the first time in my life, as the dark fiend's grip on me tightens. Oh, Johnny, I, I still have goosebumps as I read this. But even with the whole leading edge folded, my ascent rate remains unchanged. The monster has him. My mind spells it out. Davor, you've entered a cumulonimbus. I'd read many accidents reports before, but now can't remember a single one where the outcome was of survival. It gets cold, very cold. Moisture condenses on my clothes, and then it's raining and the water freezes over my summer clothes. The radio is sheer panic, calling out, Davor, where are you? Radovan, please reply. A desperate voice shouts advice, Davor, avoid throwing a reserve at all costs. It's 10 minutes since I entered this monster and my altitude is almost 2,600 meters. He's at about 10,000 feet and has been in for 10 minutes. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, just checking, just checking. 11 minutes to go. I am in a strange state of mind, calm and relaxed. I don't care about the radio panic nor advice which seems irrelevant. Instead, my mind is fully occupied with a single thought. I have to warm up. I have to protect myself from the wind and rain and ice, wrap myself up in something or else I will freeze. I release the frontal collapse and decide to deploy my reserve so I can pull in my paraglider and wrap it around me for some shelter. As I release, the Vario goes crazy, peaking at 18 meters per second. He's approaching 4,000 feet per minute up. I tug my left A riser, the lines go slack, and I enter a spiral. I wrench at my reserve handle on my right side, lobbing it away into the dark gloom. Then horror, pure fear. The reserve hangs limp, undeployed at the end of its lines, and my canopy is out of control, cravatted on the left side. I'm still climbing at a horrendous speed, and so it takes ages for the reserve to deploy. Seconds later I hear a muffled crack and see it open and overtake my glider. You guys have heard parachutes open, right? They have a crack. <laughs> Thank God. With a burst of adrenaline-induced energy, I haul in the main canopy arm over fist and wrap its damp nylon around my shivering bare legs. I radio that uh, to say I am, I am alive. At 4,500 meters, he's already passed 15,000 feet. Under reserve parachute and still going up at 10 meters per second. That was my last radio call. Boris told me later he was horrified with the unrelenting scream of the Vario because when he talked on the radio, they could hear his Vario because just like gliders, paragliders use a Vario that has an audible tone to indicate if you're going up or down. And the more it beeps, well, the pitch gets higher and the frequency gets higher. So it starts with beep, 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 like that, right? Going higher and higher like I am right now in this updraft, right? Not in the 90s, DC. Not in the 90s. And she gets slow. She's at the top here. She's going to start down. I'm going to leave her. Uh, so Boris told me later he was horrified with the unrelenting scream of the Vario, contrasting with my voice, which was gentle. The radio yell well, or yells back, Where is Davor? Davor, call us back. My dear friends, I think, I cannot call you now because I need to preserve every particle of energy which could make the difference between life and death. It's okay, Piep. It's okay, P.A. Yep. I remember an accident report. I'm, I'm letting her vary up and down. This is normal. In, in turbulent situations like this, no worries. You keep attitude, not speed or altitude. I remember an accident report about a twisted parachute during a longer descent. But looking up, the Czech Sky System's 32-meter reserve is stable and tense. In a few seconds, I establish a relationship of trust with it. Hailstones batter me, hitting from all directions, drumming on my helmet, harness, and wing. 
The very... Whoa! Oh, boys. But no, no... Ah, come on, huh? Come on. Okay, okay, but it's it's definitely getting better. It's definitely getting better. Look at that. We're going we're going back in, but it is definitely getting better. All right. All right. So hold on. 340. I still have 8 minutes. All right. Not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I just want to see us going into this cloud. It just looks cool. Goodbye, outside world. It was nice to see you for a second. <laughs> All right. And look, now she's, you know, she's not leveling at six, but she's not too far from it either. It's fine. Okay. Lightning flashes surround me. Bursting the dull grayness to the left, right below and above. Every few seconds, a dim flash of light is closely followed by a thunderous explosion. How far away was that one? If hit by a bolt, I'd be fried in a second. Davor, chances that you will survive this are zero. Pure zero. Accept it as a fact. Ooh, breaking out again. Breaking out again. All right. So he's accepted he's going to die. In my fetal position, I desperately pray to God to save my life. Would there be many people at the funeral? It's what you start to think, right? The easiest death would be to faint from hypoxia, then fall into my reserve and fall, smashing hard into the ground. My father, who lives close to by uh, Rieka, does he know that I am here? Above him, his only son, and that these are my last moments? Then, something else crosses my mind. Davor, what kind of thoughts are these? You must not give up. You are still alive. Have you done everything you can to protect yourself? A quick look at the Vario tells me that I am at 6,000 meters. 19,000 feet. At that altitude, I will either faint due to the lack of oxygen or freeze. I consciously start to breathe faster to hyperventilate in order to avoid fainting without oxygen. The air starts to get terribly cold. <clears throat> right. Right. He's in shorts, Mort. I'm in shorts at nearly 20,000 feet with the wind blowing fiercely. I'm freezing. No, I can't afford to feel cold. I remember my friend Kalman. He was caught in an avalanche in the Himalayas at Pisung Peak, and he survived with an open leg fracture. He had an enormous desire to live. He could not afford freezing, especially not giving up. Davor, I forbid you the luxury of feeling cold. You can't afford it now. It's all a mental game. You need to play that game, and you need to win that game. How high will I go? For how long? Where am I? When and where will I fall from the cloud? I calm down again. I think, right. Now it is all about those tiny little things that can mean the difference between life and death. Good thinking. While you're still conscious and okay, what can you do for yourself? Yeah, sooner. I'll post it after I'm done. Are you well wrapped in the... Actually, it's in stream links in Discord. Yeah, it's in stream links in Discord. <clears throat> Are you well wrapped in the canopy? I free my right hand, pulling the canopy from my back, trying to wrap it around me as well, using my last molecules of energy. I feel weak. If I pass out, it is important not to suffocate. I shift my head to hang down on my chest, so I should be able to breathe even if I'm unconscious. Then, it would be important that I don't freeze. So I check that the canopy is well wrapped and secured around me. I pretend that I fainted for a moment, letting my hands loose, and it seemed okay. Would the paraglider canopy entangle with the spare? The cumulonimbus tears me higher to 6,500 meters at a speed of 20 meters per second. He's now getting into the real updrafts of the thunderstorm. The cold is unbearable. The worst of it is the icy wind blowing between my back and the harness, where I'm not protected. My leg straps cut into my groin, sending stabs of pain through me, but it is nothing compared to everything else. The reserve is rotating and jerking all around me. I don't know if it's above or below me. Frankly, I don't care. Then, I start to descend, from minus 3 to minus 17 meters per second, until I reach 3,300 meters, 
Then I lift up again, up to 5,500 meters, then down again. Suddenly, I see something. Earth. I cannot believe my eyes. My hopes rise. Maybe I'll survive. Earth. Mother Earth. It exists. It is right there. I am looking at her. I am traveling towards her. A beautiful lake, forests, nature. Hail falls almost horizontally, melting, warming up, and transforming into big raindrops. But the reserve is bucking and spinning out of control. It is a whole new situation. I'm now fully focused on the next trauma, landing. I try to get rid of the main canopy wrapped around me, to release it partially so that I'll land some resistance to slow my descent, but I am too wrapped up. The scene worsens. I am flying towards power lines and a burnt forest with sharp, naked branches pointing to all directions. Oh no. After all I went through, would I end up finished on power lines or nailed to a spear like a branch? It's all right. It's all right, Jet Dreamer. Let her do her thing, man. Let her do her thing. But what's the time? Oh, two minutes to go. Okay, we're almost there. Daver, don't be unthankful for the miracle that allowed you to exit the Cumulonimbus without injuries. In my mind, I think about landing and PLFing. Uh, I forget what PLF stands for. Oh, I really forget. Okay, Ninja, we'll do. It's good news, man. It's good news. I'm really shifting over the ground like I'm driving on a highway. I stretched, trying to put my legs together, preparing to roll on landing. I pass a few meters. Oh, I think PLF is when you land on those big round canopies and you come in hard and so you land and roll, right? So you don't break your legs. I pass a few meters above the power lines and hit a tree with my airbag, which absorbs the smash. I stand on my feet, frozen, wet, scared, shocked, but still alive. Oh, look at these clouds. Completely uninjured. It seems impossible. I am shaking from the cold. It's raining cats and dogs. I record the experience on my top nav and see that I've traveled 21 kilometers from where I entered the cloud. Parachute landing fail. Thank you. I hike out to the road and stand in the middle, trying to stop cars with my thumb. But the cars just circle around me. Can you imagine the scene? Shaking, I continue to walk, thinking, Davor, you look like a forest goblin, completely soaked with a rucksack on your head, covered in leaves and with a bunch of nylon in your hands. Who would be crazy enough to let you in their car? I'm relaxed. It's not a matter of life or death anymore. Right? No, no cell phones. No, in Brazil, for example, cell phones didn't get there until the late 90s, DC. It was raining gliders as well. <laughs> All right, she's down a full thousand feet. Let's see what she does. See what she does. I'll do a couple of couple of tabs of trim up. Yes, ninja, yes. But you have to. If you're going to survive, you have to clear your mind, right? Soon, I come across the village of... Ooh, Sosonievica. Civilization. People. I pass the nearby graveyard, approaching a new house. There are signs of life. A kid's bike, a car, tools and stuff around. I haul my lazy body up the stairs to the first floor, ring the bell and knock on the door. A man appears. I can't stop my flood of emotion. Please excuse me. I was flying with my paraglider and got sucked into by a, by a storm cloud. I am cold and in shock. Can I call my friends from here? Please help me. Oh, time. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. 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 One passed. Thank you very much. I got so excited there at the end. Hold on. All right, heading one degree to the left. Next is going to be 357. And no, no VOR for me just yet. No NDB. Ah, oh, man, hopefully we're at the right place, guys. All right. Branko Raybar welcomes me into his home. A great man. I give him the organization's number. His wife wraps me up in a blanket to get warm. I tell them, it's a real miracle I am here talking to you. I take a shower, and the warm water soaks away all the dirt, sweat, fear, and shock. We drink tea on the balcony where the sun is shining. The sky is crystal blue, and there is no trace of the thunder cloud, which I had battled with all afternoon. By 4 p.m., only an hour and a half since I entered the Cumulonimbus, a totally new day had begun. Okay, Ninja. 
the others. My instructor Danko went through a couple of negative spins resolved by a full stall after which he landed on a meadow. Carlo entered a negative near the ground, threw his reserve at about 30 meters and it barely opened. He landed uninjured and his canopy hit the power distribution pylon and ripped, ta taking his weight. Lucky. Shreko, or Shreko pulled all the risers on one side, a new maneuver in paragliding. The wing entered a steep spiral which he held for about 20 minutes, keeping just below the cloud base. He could not feel his arm for days later. Radovan pulled big ears, leaving only a few cells open. He still went up at 10 meters per second, but was eventually spat out by the cumulonimbus. Seriously disoriented, he couldn't recover his glider in time and hit the ground hard, suffering serious bruising and a twisted ankle, but incredibly nothing worse. Kruno did a full stall, but when he realized his glider surged and crevetted, so he threw his reserve. He was spared by the thundercloud, but he couldn't pull in his main canopy and he hit the ground hard, crushing his vertebrae, but with no severe consequences. Leo was given the same horrific treatment by the thundercloud as I. He didn't throw his reserve, he was dressed in a skiing jacket, but main it's clouds. maintained a full frontal deflation by inserting his legs in his A risers and pulling down. He was thrashed into a forest near Uka. Altogether, seven, seven candles could have burned, but all of us survived. During the evening, we settled in at the private pension, and in, I invited everyone for dinner to celebrate our new life. We went to a restaurant with a symbolic name, Fortuna. After dinner, I went to bed. I thanked God for saving my life and fell asleep, completely exhausted. It might be too small for you guys. Let me see if I can open this. Um, <clears throat> if it's going to make it any bigger. It is not. I can't zoom in, can I, in Edge? Anyways, look. This is 6,500 feet where he topped off. Look look at, you know, he's flying along, flying along, flying along. This is altitude. Flying along, then all of a sudden, gets sucked in. And it's up, 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 up. Down, 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 down. Up, 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 up. Down, 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 down. Control scroll wheel. Hey, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Remember, he was coming down, then went up again to 5,500 meters, and then he, was, he got sped out, so he just had a normal descent on the way down. Here's his Vario registering at top of about 15 meters per second up, about 15 meters per second down. Altitude max, 6,570 meters. Vario max, 19.6 up. 17.8 down. Let's see. <gasps> VOR! What? What? 123 miles. Okay, let's see how, how off we are, guys. How off are we? <gasps> We're not that off? Oh my god! We're only 10 degrees off. Let's just go. Let's just go. All right, baby. Take me there. Take me there. Take me there. Oh, boys. Boys. Now, now we are within range to start listening to the Aedas, right? And see what the weather really is. We don't have the Aedas here. I hate the Aedas in the sim. It's, I don't like it. So I'm going to just look at Sky Vector. So let's go get a, a weather update in Sky Vector. Smoke, that was not bad, huh? Not bad. Leo, thank you, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, man. I am happy. I am happy, happy right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So that means, look, let's look in Sky Vector. So 10 degrees off at 123 miles off. Okay. And I'm 10 degrees. I am to the north. So I, maybe I shouldn't have corrected my heading like I did. Like an idiot. Okay. So look, hold on a second. Let's go... Uh, let's see what kind of distance this is. Oh, no. Yeah, I need way more distance than that. Because this is 40, 38. Okay, so. Let's see. This is 101. 110. Okay, so about 120, right? About here. And 10 degrees off. I'm on a heading of... Uh, I need to be on a heading of 120 is the go-to.
Hmm. Am I doing it right? Seems like I'm exaggerating that. Because this is only 5. 10 would be up here. You know what I mean? I should have been on a 0.99. I'm on a 1.13. So, maybe I am much further north than I thought. I mean, still not horrendous after all this to arrive here, but more off than I expected. Let's see. Let's see. Let's wait a little bit and see. Timer going off. Let's swap that fuel. Lower on the left, then the right, and we're going to go to the right. And we're going to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Still good. Still good. Still got it. South would have been bad, yes. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Kozaki with 100 bits. Leo with 100 bits. Thank you very much. Sind, did I miss that sub? Dude, I'm so sorry. You gifted a sub to Friske. Oh, man. Sorry about that, but thank you, Sind. That's awesome. That's super generous, man. Okay, I definitely need to climb a bit. I mean, I'm okay at 5,000, I suppose. I don't have to go back to 6,000. Now that I have the VOR, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go look at the weather. Oh, it's better than we thought. What? Cav okay. It still has a temporary down there. Look, it still expects to be overcast at 500. There's few clouds. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. There could be weather moving through and there's just a hole in it right now. Yeah, because right now it's what? 1720 Zulu. They expect that it, starting at 1800 Zulu to 20, it's overcast 900. Interesting. But the wind is 240 at 8. 240 at 8. Let's start prepping. All right, wind 240, we're going to use runaway 28, right? Okay. Plenty big. No worries there. They have an ILS if we need it, right? And look, we can do the ILS off of the VOR because this here requires GPSs. These are GPS waypoints that we don't have. So we can do this, though. Outbound on the 092 because we're a Category A aircraft um, because of our speed. It has to do with our approach speed or stall speed, really. So we're going to go outbound on the 092, um, turn around, capture the ILS on the way in. 2,100 is the minimum altitude the way we're coming in, so we're perfectly safe at 5,000. So I'm going to stay at 5 for now. There you go, Coulter. Does anyone know of any other streamer that can keep you watching 60% of a screen of gray for five hours and keep you engaged the whole way. Aw, Sin, thank you, buddy. Thanks for saying that. I find MSFS's weather is often out of date. For instance, we had a storm roll through my area a few days ago. I loaded up my local airport a few hours later and it was overcast. The MSFS was still acting like we were in a Cat 1 hurricane. So, outcast, maybe depends on the area of the world. Here, where I live, I find it's about eh, half an hour offset. I'm totally fine with a half an hour offset, right? I think that's miraculous that we can have that good a weather only half an hour offset. You know what I mean? Surely in the future, people are going to be like, oh my God, now that we have real, you know, real time in, within a minute in the sim, people used to wait half an hour. But man, for me, half an hour is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, look, that, you see that crab that the plane is doing to keep this, uh, to keep this, this radio? How we're not flying exactly towards the air, we're flying about 10 degrees off. That's that wind coming from the right that we were compensating for the whole time, but that probably we did not compensate enough for. And it does look pretty overcast, right? Ah, Lefty, I almost never use it anymore because live weather got so, so good. And nothing beats live weather in this kind of stuff. Like dual layers, weather transitions. Rex can't do it. Unreal Weather can't do it. So I use live weather and I'm super happy with it. Super happy. Yeah, our ground speed is a bit better than we expected. So that wind may be stronger. It blew us further north and gave us a better ground speed. 
Well, new spawns. Looking at both, the weather right now is good for both. It's Kev okay. So let's land at Keflavik, right? Um, but, you know, if we get there and one is sucked in, the other is better. Maybe we go to the other one. Oh, Arva landed already, man. That's awesome, dude. What were you flying, Arva? What were you flying? Because I still have about an hour to go, right? Well, less than an hour. About 40 minutes. Which reminds me. Food. All right, guys. I don't need the Nevlog as much anymore. Uh, I got the VOR, right? Obviously, you keep doing this in case the VOR goes off because you're the unluckiest person in the world and it just broke. But I feel pretty good here. So... Let me go grab some food and I'll be right back. And yes, Lefty, I can. I'll do that when I get back, okay? No, I'm not. I was just doing this. <laughs> That's going to keep scrolling what Fort just posted. So uh, I'm just going to show this and we'll keep this on screen and I'll talk us through that METAR. Deal? All right. Oh, look, I remembered this time. Oh, what am I saying? I never forgot it. Yes, yes, there are, Stooner. By the way, Stooner, did you have a question that I never answered? I think you did, didn't you? I think you did. Oh, yeah, Vokaisos. No, I love DCS, dude. I've even streamed DCS. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right, so. Weather Station BIKF. That's the IKU identifier. B-I-K-F, Bravo India Kilo Fox. That's how you tell FMSs. You want to go to Keflavik. That's how you, you report weather is using that four-letter IKU identifier. 
Okay. Then next line, smaller font. B I K F, okay. I know that's Keflavik. 281700Z. That means June 28th at 1700 Zulu. That's when this METAR, this weather information was issued. Okay. Then 24008KT. Okay. Winds from 240 degrees at 08 knots. KT for knots. All right. Next, 200V270. That's associated with the winds we just read, the winds that are 240 at 8 knots, but they're actually variable between 200 degrees and 270 degrees. So the wind is not blowing in just one direction, it keeps changing a little bit. Then, CAV OK, C A V OK. Ceiling and visibility OK. That means no clouds and visibility is great. Then 10 zero slash zero 07. Right? Hello, Ingo. Um, that is our temperature and dew point. The first number 10 is our temperature in Celsius, so it's 10 degrees Celsius right now in Keflavik. Slash, so now dew point of 7 degrees. And dew point is important because when your actual temperature gets down and matches the dew point, water in the air will condensate. The air can't carry any more humidity, and we call that a cloud or fog if it's on the ground. Followed by Q1016, that's our QNH, our altimeter setting of 1016 hectopascals. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, Coulter. <laughs> oh, Kozaki got the ILS already. Nice, buddy. Nice, nice, nice. All right, I'm going to start eating a little bit, so let me see here. Still maintaining about 5,000 feet. That's all right. Uh, what's our distance? Ooh, we're under 100 under a hundred let's go let's go oh this is awesome i can now now that i read that story guys i think i can bring this up you guys tell me if it's too much Ooh, hello yeah ingo but it is the first one that we're that we're gonna see instead of um Reykjavik. And we have good scenery for both. Kalum. If the ceiling and visibility are not okay, then they'll give you the clouds, the bottom of the clouds, right? How much altitude between the airport and the clouds? Uh, and that can be scattered, few, broken, or overcast. You kind of divide it into, like this is overcast or broken. That's broken, right? Because you can see a little bit through. And you'd have a visibility. So whenever you see Cav OK, they're not going to report numbers. They're just saying, hey, no clouds. Visibility is awesome. There's actual minimums for them to issue that, but you don't have to memorize those. And then, if they have, if it's not cap okay, they'll give you scattered few, broken, or overcast in an altitude, and they'll give you visibility numbers too. No, Coulter. No. It is AGL, above ground level. Because you need to look at those altitudes for approach. So if you see overcast 002, that's 200 feet above the runway, right? It could be that the airport is 10,000 feet in the mountains, doesn't matter. Overcast 002 means 200 feet above the runway. Do I still need a dew point then? Well, it's for you to look at Lefty and be like, oh wait, that temperature is really close. Oh yeah, by the way, I saw your question, right? It has to match. The temperature has to be the same as the dew point for fog to occur. And even then, it doesn't guarantee the fog will occur. It just means that the conditions are there and it may occur. BR low, I have Brussels sprouts with a Carolina Reaper sauce and uh, a bratwurst. For 
For now, it's cavalcade. Right. <clears throat> DC6, Papa Norris. DC6. I am going to go back to those at some point. At some point. Mm. BR, do, what don't you like? Both? So I love veggies, right? They're great for you. But I think they taste really good, too. Not all of them. Yeah. So, um, for example, for me, Brussels sprouts are very similar to broccoli. Um, yeah, I just, I love, I love veggies. Hey, I love bad food, too. But I also love healthy food. I just love food, period. Oh, the sauce is awesome. Ah, so you don't like, uh, you don't like sausages either, BR. It's a spicy. Rhodopsin. Most people make Brussels sprouts in a disgusting way. They're soft and mushy. That's not how you make Brussels sprouts, man. Not for me. <clears throat> um, I, uh, um, what's the term in English? I saute them. It's actually a French term, right? But that's how you say it in English. I saute them. I cut them in half, saute them. Um, some balsamic vinaigrette or vinegar, right? Sometimes a little pancetta in there. Uh, and man, oh, they get nice and caramelized on the flat part where they were touching the bottom. But they're not mushy. They're still crunchy like broccoli. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, exactly, Johnny. That's the key. You got to know how to make them. And most people don't. Butter is very important for most things, Christoph. Let's be honest. <laughs> ah, Pibal, see? They have to be right. Should be firm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm doing. I'm stabbing them with a fork. And I hear the crunch even as the fork goes in. Yeah, two cider. <laughs> By the way, butter or olive oil depends. Depends on what you're cooking. I saw that movie too. <laughs> Airlock. <laughs> It's actually one of my favorite veggies. Tool, thank you. I forgot to say, I put lime juice in them too. You gotta bring an acid to brighten things up. I make quinoa, put lime juice in there. I put lime in a lot of stuff. Mm. Both seem to be reporting about the same. So, go. They could be reporting about the same. Nitar is now. Taff is in the future. There you go, Christoph. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Maybe for you, not for me just yet. I see ocean, but that's okay. We got that VOR. 70 miles. Or, or 26 minutes. <clears throat> oh, that! Oh my god, I didn't even see that. I did not even see that. It's certainly a volcano. They have lots of volcanoes in Iceland. 
can we identify it? Oh yeah, right here. Look, this big beautiful guy. Sneffels, I'm gonna guess that that is the volcano's name. All right, so we're about, yeah, just outside of the, yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> Rice, cauliflower, hot sausage, that's awesome, see? There you go, BR, you don't like Brussels sprouts, but you're eating cauliflower. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Kroom. <laughs> Hello, friend. Hello, friend. It's going down still a little bit. I'm okay. It's 2,100. Not gonna, not gonna fight it. Not gonna sweat it. Plenty of fuel. That's awesome. UFO. I agree. Rice Cowley. Is very versatile. It's really cool. Oh, and you know a place I like to eat at here in the U.S. is called Bibi Bop. It's a, uh, it's healthier, and uh, yeah, they added riced cauliflower, which is awesome. Ciao, Lefty, ciao. Principal J. I have never seen it. Yeah, Fort hasn't seen it either. And we fly a lot. <laughs> but, but often the weather is like this when I fly, so maybe. Oh, another friend over there. Nice. Um... Bibi Bop is, uh, it's Asian. I'm not sure they associate with any one culture or country or even cuisine. But it's your typical, like, assembly line restaurant, right? You choose a base. It could be purple rice, white rice, um, japche, or japche, which is uh, uh, sweet potato noodles. Or they have what they call super green base. It's a, it's a kale and other veggies base. Um, and then you put toppings, whatever veggies you like, there you have different meats, you know, so it's like a little assembled bowl, basically, it's a bowl, and uh, if you want some sauces on it, and that's it. Oh, Kozaki has, oh, dude, you're already in, huh? Chipotle owns Bibi Bop, but well, there you go, makes sense then. I found a plane on the ground image. Yeah, I've seen a plane and the contrail on the ground image. I've seen that. Nah, Ninja, you haven't missed much, at least on my flight here. I'm still about 50 miles out. 56, 21 minutes to go. Um, no, people are talking, asking if we have found the big watermark in the scenery in the sim. And I, I haven't. I don't know if others have. I just haven't heard of it. Guys, uh, it looks like Aerosoft just tweeted something about the otter. Two slider, I have not, or two slider. I didn't talk about the triple seven, so. You guys know that Boeing is working on a new version of the 777, 777X. 
which is basically a yeah, modification of an existing aircraft. So shouldn't take as long as one uh, the, the original aircraft is certified. Should be a little quicker. But unfortunately, Boeing, for years now, has been in disrepair. And I hate to say this because I like Boeing, but man, they don't know. They don't know what they're doing right now. Which unfortunately led to over 300 people dying in 737 MAX crashes. And now, fuel, we got our duty. You cannot renounce your duty. Okay, about 18, about 18. Oh, sweetness. Let's go left. Five, your pressure remains, we're good. Yeah, you'd hope, right, two slider? But issues with the MAX, issues with the military aircraft, they build the uh, 767 or 767 tanker. They've been finding tools, metal shavings inside those things, issue with the 787. Now, in 777X flight testing, huh, you know what they had in uh, December 2020? Yeah, I think it was December. An uncommanded, uncommanded pitch input. Let that sink in. Uncommanded pitch. Right. Same issue as MCAS. Same issue as the MAX. So the FAA wrote a letter to Boeing recently scolding them and telling them, by the way, certification was supposed to end by the end of this year. The FAA said, you are more than two years away from certifying this aircraft. Because the FAA has lost all confidence in Boeing, right? Same with me. Same with a lot of people in the industry. It's like, dude, you guys just, you're buffoons at this point, right? Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not. I have a friend that works at NASA. So he works with Boeing Commercial Space. Uh, or sorry, Boring Space Design, I think it's called. And then there's Boeing Commercial Aircraft, right, that I've dealt with. Both, both outsource all software development to India. All. The Max software, all done in India. Hey, I'm not saying anything about India. What I'm saying is oversight and, and not having your own development in-house. It was cheaper for sure to do this stuff in India than in-house so I'm not surprised but I am very 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 sad about Boeing very sad yeah Johnny so I've hired uh, when I used to run flight safety training centers I've hired Boeing former Boeing test pilots and it was shocking man when the max happened I went and spoke to one of them and his response, and you could tell how sad he was, his response was, I'm not in the least surprised that this happened. He goes, Boeing went from being run by engineers and pilots to being run by an accountant or by accountants, right? And, you know, accountants know nothing about flying, know nothing about engineering. They know everything about numbers, but that's all they know. So they do what they know. They work on the numbers. Very sad. Very sad. <clears throat> uh, it's called Joystick Visualizer, Kiwendo. Uh, there's a command here in the bot that will give you the link if you want to go and download it. Um, guys, is there still an exclamation mark commands? Same is happening in the utilities industry. Ugh, man. Yeah, Andy, it started with the acquisition of McDonnell Douglas. You're right. Ah, there you go. There you go. Just follow that link. Wait a second. Wait a second. Not Nightbot. Not Nightbot. How is Nightbot doing that? Stick overlay. I didn't remember the name for it. How is Nightbot still doing exclamation mark commands? Airlock. I just pulled the trigger on a Piper Turbo 3M4. T-Tail just did it for me. Downloading right now. Drooling a little. Oh, let's go, buddy. New toy. New toy. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for it. I appreciate that. Well, 
we'll hire people from India. We can hire four for the wage of one local dev. Oh, sticks. That's good attitude by your company there. That's great, great attitude. <sighs> they put an engineer in charge. Yeah, Mort. You're right. You're right. I mean, it's no secret, right? It's no mystery. It's actually really simple. Really simple. But greed, greed, mark my words, will burn this planet. Like the story of Intel, but they switch back, so now it's run by engineers again. But yeah, we'll take three to five years until we see results right. Right. It's all about money, not about quality. Right. Right. Right you are, sir. Right you are. As sad as that is, it's also true. Ha! Ha! Sorry, Port. I, yeah. Welcome to Nightbot. Yeah, <laughs> too slight. Go away, Nightbot. Ah, uh, no, I fly everything. Uh, I do fly more prop. And I'll tell you, I don't fly the fly-by-wire Airbus because to me it's still really far from the real thing. So I, it's not that I... It's not that I'm a snob. It's that I like to fly planes that are complete, as complete as possible representations of the real thing here in the sim. I don't like when there are things that you read in the manual and then you go do it. And it's like, oh, that's not, that's not simulated. Oh, well, come on. Right? I want to operate them and enjoy them exactly like the real counterparts. Oh, there we go. Two-tone with the knowledge. Knowledge bombs. Ah, uh, Kozaki. It's probably set to 12, yep. Set to 12. We're not doing ATC really, right? I mean, we like to be realistic, but uh, I think that would have to be seven, wouldn't it? 7,000 for Europe. But was definitely not on my flow. Thanks for alerting me. Hey, Ronch is here. Uh, I had fun with that the other day. Grabbed a manual to a plane instead of using the startup secrets within MS, and it worked well. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that plane is either this or the DC-6. Maybe. Hey, two-tone for the win! That's awesome. Oh, I'm still eating, Crumb. I'm still eating, buddy. I talk, I talk too much, so it takes me a while to eat. Dessert's gonna be fruit. Um, probably nectarine. Or maybe some cherries. Got some really cheap cherries yesterday. Gotcha, Ranchi. Gotcha. I know, that's that's an amazing checklist, what Roscoe is doing. Skynet. <laughs> you know, Two-Tone, we laugh and we joke. But man, I am one of those people concerned about AI. Pretty concerned. Happy exactly that. So, two slider. I never ignore, man. I may miss stuff, but I never ignore. Um, do I do new landings as they come out? Um, oh, you mean like uh, airports? By the way, look at look at the breakup on the clouds here. We may just get there VFR. We may just get there VFR. Be afraid about the idiot who would write. Well, exactly, Cookie. That's why I'm afraid. That's why I'm afraid. I'm not afraid of guns. I'm afraid of the people that use the guns. Wow, Hammer. 300 people? Yeah, Ford. Exactly my feelings. I mean, guys, there's a reason why people like Stephen Hawking, right? Like, 
Elon Musk. There's a reason why these guys are saying, hey, AI, this could be a problem, guys. Those are decently smart people, aren't they? Man, I, I'm starting the, the polemic terms in chat today, aren't I? I'm stirring the pot, man. Not intentional. Airlock. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Well, Cookie, here's the thing. I'm not thinking tomorrow. I'm thinking, what about 20 years from now? Right? This stuff's going to take a long time to build. But all it takes is one day it goes over. That's it. <clears throat> what it is, guys, is that the problem is people, not AI. But I know people. I've lived 45 years on this earth. 45. I think the other day I said I was 46. I'm 45. <laughs> I've met people, and that's my concern. That's my concern, right? We do not, we are not good at thinking of all possible scenarios and protecting for those. We like to just kind of do stuff and see what happens. Airlock. <laughs> Youngster. Airlock. Sorry, I'm trying to chew and swallow, but I wanted to stop you. Because if you can, if you can be patient and read the docs before you fly, man, your experience is going to be that much better. Do it. Do it. <laughs> PH, yeah. There you go, Supra. Captain Boo is here. And he just gave out a sub to 6504K. Thank you very much, Captain Boo. I'm dying to see what our track is going to be on Little Nav Map. God. Wait a second. Captain Boo. Dude. Glider solo. Let's go, my man. Let's go, buddy. Oh my god, how was it, man? How was it? How long were you up? And and depending on where you are, like they have you come right back and land or could you fly for a little bit? Oh, I'm so excited for you. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, hopefully he's furiously typing away. Oh, sappy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Mm -mm. No spoilers. <laughs> wow. Oh. Solo. Sorry. I'm too excited. Solo is a very special moment. Very special moment. Um, oh. Oh, man. It's just you, right? You, for the first time, flying something on your own. Let's go, DC. Thank you very much, man. 200 bits. Whoa, DC. Are you seeing the badge you just won, buddy? Yeah, there you go, airlock, airlock. That was Captain Seppi. I see that. Hey, buddy. DC, that's amazing, dude. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. DC, 
One of the OGs. One of the OGs in the channel. Man, it's been a journey, huh, DC? Exactly, exactly. I. It's why I've been spending so much time in the DC-6, right? I want to make sure that people understand as much as possible about the aircraft because to me it's so much more rewarding when you can find out the things it can do that you wouldn't even know if you didn't read the book. Captain Seppi, I have some uh, Brussels sprouts, sautéed Brussels sprouts. They're still crunchy, love it. And some uh, brats, bratwurst. It does change how you experience the sim. I think so. The Trek IR, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Right. Don't think that you have to pay the prices that Trek IR go for. They are, I think, the best. But you can get really close for a lot cheaper or even free. My God. My God. Are we really here? Yes, we are. All right, I'm going to start descending, and this could be a VFR approach. And a new sub. Screw Oprah. This is the place to be. Let's go, airlock. Wait, airlock. No, never mind. Never mind. I love Brussels sprouts tossed in olive oil with salt and pepper and roasted in the oven. I like them sauteed because I like them crunchy. I don't like them uh, soft. But you can do them in the oven and keep them, uh, uh, keep them crunchy too. I guess it depends on how long, how long you cook them, right? Hey, there's the runway. Oh my God. Iceland, hello. Oh boy. <laughs> Holy moly. Just finish with the broiler. There you go. Can you grill Brussels sprouts? I never tried. Ah, oh, you can grill anything. <laughs> with this baby, we can go anywhere. <laughs> Dang, I really want a Toby, but it needs more support from the Sims. I don't know the Toby. Eye tracker, huh? 450 for 20 minutes keeps the sprouts crispy. Oh, okay, with olive oil and salt and pepper. Nice. Nice. I mean, look, salt and pepper, guys. Like, that's one of the surprising things for me in the United States, right? Is how many people don't use salt and pepper, or at least don't use enough. That's truly the spice of life, right? Salary, salary, the word salary comes from salt, because in olden times, the Roman soldiers were paid in salt, because salt was very valuable. If you are bringing black pepper, because black pepper used to exist only in the Orient, what the Europeans like to call the Orient, right? So you'd send ships down past South Africa into Asia, grab some black pepper, bring it back. Most captains of the time had instructions that, hey, if, the sea, if you get in a bad storm, the sink starts to get heavy, it's going to start sinking, right? You throw out the third class passenger bags overboard. Then the second class passenger bags overboard. Then the first class passenger bags overboard. Still sinking. Then you throw the third class passengers overboard. And the second class passenger overboard. First class overboard. The last thing remaining on the ship would be the black pepper. And the black pepper was so important that there was no throwing it out. If the ship is going to sink, that black pepper is going to go with the ship. You never ever throw black pepper, pepper overboard. Right? So... Because they they intensify the flavors of food so much more, but so much, so much. So I find that a bit crazy that people don't, some people don't use it enough, you know? Oh, man. It's amazing stuff. Oh, look at that! Nice job, nice job, guys. Thank you for that hype train. That's awesome. Hope you helps, too. All right, guys, I'm going to level off about here. The other runway is going to be north-south like this, but we're going to land on runway 28. So I'm going to pass it, 
and then we'll left turn and come back. Wow, four hours and 32. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I see somebody on final, nice. Oh, plenty of fuel, plenty of fuel, look at that. I was expecting to arrive with about 25, and I have a little bit more than that. A little bit more than that. Now, you see why the, uh, the forecast was what it was, right? Because these clouds right here, if they get a little thicker, yeah, they could totally make this an ILS-only approach, you know? Oh, my God. Captain Seppi, tell me about it, dude. Tell me about it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Iceland. Oh, that looks like some military spots, maybe. Guys, we found Iceland after four hours. Because for the last half an hour, we've been flying on VOR, right? Ooh, there's some airliners there. I think scenery is loading, so it keeps hiccuping, picking up like this. Angry One Horn with the raid. Hey, buddy, how's it going, man? Hi, Angry One Horn. Good to see you. Ah, yeah, Asian soy, rice wine vinegar, and garlic sauce. Nice, nice. I also put garlic in everything I cook, almost everything. Garlic is an amazing, amazing thing, too. And it's good for uh, inflammation and things, so if you work out, it helps. Um, soy sauce is an amazing thing, too. And I, I do put that in Brussels sprouts once in a while. Not always, but once in a while. <laughs> Bokeistas. Oh, ye a little fade. All right. Let's go pump on. Prop full forward. Mixture rich. I'm going to start slowing her down. That's our gear warning horn. Let it ring. Take that autopilot off. She's dive bombing here to the ground. We'll fix that. Oh, man. Oh, man. I got to look up some Icelandic food. No, not fermented shark. I'm good. Thank you. Gear coming down. And uh, I'll see if I can make some Icelandic recipes um, this week before we move on to what's going to be probably more known to our palate next week, which will be Scotland. Be lurking your channel with my earbuds. Wait, what, what did a... Uh, what did somebody beat you to for it? I can't scroll right now, buddy. Flaps 10. Okay, three green guests. Undercarriage, make sure pump. Deep fried pizza. Ooh. Is that, is that a thing? In Iceland? You're joking. Oh, I see. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thanks. No, I've seen Andrew Zimmerin eating that. And that dude can eat anything, so I... Yeah, no. Thank you. But no. Yeah, nah. Deep-fried Mars bars. Not a fan of haggis. Yeah, haggis is all right. Some of us were jumping ahead to Scotland, yeah, with the haggis. <laughs> hey, look at that. On the ramp. Two reds, two whites. Red over white. You're all right. That's not for a peppy like this, for a Vazzy. 100 knots, I'll start slowing down. All right, I think I'm going to park on the left here. That right one is too far, isn't it? That's, that looks to be the terminal. This looks to be military or airline or something, but... I don't know. Where did you guys park? Let's finish this flight well. I'm just going to do flaps 10. I don't need more flaps than that. Just kiss it, baby. That was the longest float ever, wasn't it? There we go. Down. All 
right. Flaps up. Uh, precision approach. Uh, yeah, instrument lights. Yes, Colonel Fork. That's right. That is right. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate that. Appreciate all the buttering happening here. That's very nice. Okay, Icelandic air. Here we go. <sighs> yes. Yes, it's good to be in Iceland. It's good to be the king. Is this a taxiway? That looks like a taxiway. Oh, and the timer just went off. Perfect! Oh, it's closed. Look at the X. It's closed. Not a taxiway for us. You smell the volcano. <laughs> wow, guys. Okay, we made it to Iceland. Holy moly. Holy moly. I know I shouldn't sound surprised, right? As the captain, I should be like, Oh, of course we made it to Iceland. And it goes without saying. Uh, no. I'm super excited that we've made it to Iceland. Super excited. Turbo giveaway. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Fork. I was gonna or Fort. I was gonna forget again. Yes, guys, we are giving away a Piper Aero Turbo, courtesy of II Sir, who is amazing. I'm just gonna pull over to the left. Uh, he's donated three. We've already given one out. We're gonna give the second one today, and the next one, and the next leg next Monday. That's right. That's right. Totally forgot about it. I'm gonna be honest. I totally forgot about it. I was. Well, excited with the flight and early this morning. Busy reinstalling flight simulator. This is definitely military. Definitely military. Hangers of that size? Definitely military. Keeping that RPM at least a thousand. Mm, it's windy too. I can hear it. Start shutting these guys down. Well, this looks like a good spot. A military, but no standing army. Oh, it's all um, um, sort of National Guard kind of thing. That people practice on the weekends. Alright, parking brake on. Okay, everything's already shut off there, so let's just kill it. Oh, actually, I gotta keep the beacon on. My bad. See, I got the beacon in time, but then I turned it off too early. Oof, that sound is beautiful. Mag's off. Alright, lights off. And let's turn the battery on. Alternator and battery. Wow, we did it. Four hours and 50 minutes. Man. Oh no, that's PM. Four hours and 36 minutes, looks like. Yeah, right there. Yeah, what Ford said. What Ford said. Um, Flow, again, man, depends on what you like, I think. I use a 50, whatever, 55-inch TV. Um, and it works for me, but that's also because I'm space-limited. I stream from my living room. So this is the TV in the family room, basically. You can set a clock to it. Are you talking about me forgetting the uh, the beacon or screwing up the beacon, I, I? You're an amazing sim streamer, Fabi Exceptional. Bravo. Oh, whoop and climb. Dude, thank you very much for saying that, man. That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, wow. Thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. Yes, the good usual lo-fi. Amazing adventure. Tell me about it, Leia. This is incredible, isn't it? Iceland, guys. What? What? Yeah, man, we're here. Oh, DC mission to Saratoga. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I didn't even check. Like, I have all kinds of Brussels sprouts in between my teeth. Oh, somebody coming in for a landing there. Nice. <sighs> Low-lying clouds for sure. For sure. Man. This is volcano land. That's what I love about this place, is that it's wild and still being foreign, you know? 
Uh, but among other things, you're an amazing storyteller. Ah, uh, Zephyr, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that too. Guys, it's a good time to consider supporting the channel. We're about to give away a uh, Piper Turbo Arrow. Uh, but before we do, if you'd like to support the channel, subscriptions are a great way to help me. Thank you. Scuzzle Blood, that mountain in the back there got me stranded in Spain six years ago. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I don't remember the name, but I'm going to try and pronounce it. Then we'll do the giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Hold on. I can't. I can't prep. I can't prep. So I'm going to get it up on the street. There we go. Okay. I'm not looking. When I turn it on for you guys, when I'm going to look and try to pronounce it. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Eya Fiala Yokul. Oh, I thought it was harder than that. Is that right? Eya Fiala Yokul? But that's what you're talking about, right? Whoever was stranded in Spain? <laughs> Airlock. <laughs> aye, aye. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Aya Fiatla Kudl. Aya Fiatla Kudl. Double I's gain a T sound. Oh. Oh, double L's gain a T sound. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I remember that, Bagnario. I remember that. All right, all right, all right. Are you guys ready for this giveaway? I don't know if you're ready. Are you guys ready? All right. Nice. For Got it. Pay attention, guys, because this is case sensitive. Case sensitive. Exclamation mark. I, I. Our benefactor of today with a capital E, I, E, or sorry, I, <laughs> capital E, Y, E, capital E, Y, E. You know what? I'll just put it in. I'll just put it in. No, like that. You got it. Let's go. Let's go. That's it. That's it. For your chance to win a Just Flight Piper Arrow Turbo. Whoo! Ho, 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 let's go. Attention, attention. We're about to begin our giveaway. If you're lurking, this is the time where you stop paying attention to your job and start paying attention to the stream. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Capital Fish. <laughs> Oystick, thank you very much for that, dude. OISTK. OISTK. For two months. <laughs> All right, all right. Ford, how are we looking, buddy? I'm supposed to pay attention to my job. <laughs> oh, we still got some IIs coming in, okay? Let's go, guys. Exclamation mark II. Our amazing, amazing uh, um, member of the community who donated three Piper Aero Turbos for us to give away during this trip. All right, 88 people are in, okay? Thank you, Smell. I know that some of you guys have it, so I'm not expecting it's going to be every viewer. And I know some viewers are probably not paying attention. I know, right, Airlock? There you go, buddy. There you go. And Airlock, I honestly, I feel bad, dude, because I know you went out and bought it. And I forgot to say, I forgot that we were giving away a copy. So I am really sorry, man. Should have said that. Should have said that. Stula, thank you for the follow. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rigged. Sorry, man. Okay. Yep. Sounds good for it. All right, guys. We're going to do the usual. We're going to have a little uh, drum roll as we do the drawing. All right, Fort. You ready? I think so. I just want to, you know, positive communication, guys. Challenge and response. Challenge and response. Bye bye, says more. Hey, Ninja is down. Had a good landing. All right, cool. Ninja, uh, we are giving away a Turbo Arrow. If you don't have one to enter, it's exclamation mark I I. Like I I. All right, guys, I think this is it. I think it's time for the drum roll. Here we go. Here we go. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Ready and. And the winner is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! T.R. Lind has won the giveaway. T.R. Lind. T.R. Lind, are you there? 
Are you there? That's amazing. That is amazing. I always like to see people win stuff, man. Let's go, TR Linz. Hey, David. <laughs> Rigged. David Lewis just recently. Yes, sir, he is. Months. Or she is. That's awesome. All right, TR Lynn, congratulations. Congratulations on winning a Just Flight Piper Aero Turbo. Uh, you got to get in touch with us on Discord. <laughs> yeah, Will, sure. Uh huh. Oh, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Thanks for being here and thanks for entering the, the giveaway. Um, TR, yeah, do you know, uh, can you contact us on Discord? Or contact Ford? In the meantime, in the meantime, so had about 19 gallons, no, sorry, 29 gallons of fuel left. Not bad at all. Yes, I will. Okay, TR, that's awesome. TR, congratulations. Super happy for you. Enjoy your Piper Aero Turbo. That's amazing. Guys, let's go look a little nav map. Let's go look a little nav map. Bring it up. All right. Not showing anything because I think it's turned off. Let me turn it on. Oh, yeah. It's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. The winds were stronger than we thought. You see this first band here, kind of goes straight this way, and then it bends, right? I think this is when we went down to 6,000 feet, and I took a new heading. Look, we were gonna deviate even further if we stayed on this one here. This one was kind of parallel, diverged a little bit at the end, because I was doing my uh, two degrees, one degree, I think I did it too much. And then we picked up the VOR and flew in. But this is what I was saying. Look, if you miss to the north, it's okay, you're gonna see the island eventually, because you're not gonna be super far off. If we missed this much to the south, and it was cloudy, for example, or whatever, right? We could have missed the island. Now you're saying, well, with the VOR, you're not gonna miss it. Yeah, but what if the VOR breaks down, right? All right, all right, all right, we did it. We did it. You would have hit the volcano, yeah. I was going straight for it. Straight for it, Kirk. <laughs> was a nice flight maybe i tried something like this in a week yeah or this week nice 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 all right guys we're gonna go raid somebody thank you guys this was all i i it's such a privilege to be able to do this such a privilege and you guys enable me so thank you all really amazing really amazing all right all right all right let us see let us uh, see what has happened. Thank you, Studer. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> Not to be an enabler. Thank you, Bagnario. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, let's see. We got Black Box, FS Labs. It's not Microsoft Light Sim. All these people with the wrong tags, man. Wrong tags, people. Wrong tags. Agent Squash, huh? Edinburgh Radar. Hmm, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Oh, Rodobson, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Hey, us. Did we rate us? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa. What? In-flight sim. Jumbo jet behind me. Mm-hmm. He's probably thinking, who's this plank right in front of me? Yeah, <laughs> Cal. <Calgary. It's> <laughs> Oh, me too, Hammer. Me too. Well, well I mean, I, me I still don't have confidence in it considering what happened this morning, but, you know. <coughs> yeah, no. Anyway. Ooh, test flying the 787. Okay. DC-6 from Zurich to... It's Italy, but what's RA? It's not Rome. Oh, it could be Rome. Uh, the secondary airport in Rome. Primary is Fiumicino. What's the secondary? Ah, I don't remember. I had to do a, a, a reinstall of the launcher of Steam. I, I reinstalled it on Steam. Ciampino. Ah, but I don't know if Lita is Ciampino, is it? Um, I had to reinstall the launcher. Steam had uninstalled it. But luckily, the, the actual files for the sim stayed because I didn't do the, the uninstall inside Flight Sim or through Add and Remove programs. So I just had to download the launcher again, install that, and it worked. On air, mobile flight simulator. Whoa. We're back to Iceland. What?
Interesting. Interesting. It is Champino. Okay. Thank you, in response. I thought it was, but I was like, ah, I don't know. I like cameras, man. Where are the people with the cameras? Where are the people with the cameras? Here's a camera. To the Alps, huh? Have we raided Bootstrap Boon? I feel like... Oh, hey, Janice. There we go. There we go. We found it. We found it. It's going to be Janice, guys. It's actually... Yeah, it's actually Janice, Sin. That's how she pronounces it. It's actually Denise, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, so... It's two names put together. It's Janice and Denise, I think. And she spells it this way, but it's pronounced Denise. Denise, my bad. My bad. Guys, thank you. I'm so happy we found Iceland. So happy you guys stuck around. Sorry we started late today. Little technical issues, but... We did it. Tomorrow, tomorrow, DC-6 airline flight, and it's a long one. So we're going to have time to study some of the systems, which is going to be amazing. Then we have case flight. It's a case study of an accident. And perhaps we're even going to try and fly that ourselves and see if we can survive. Thursday, we're back in the DC-6 for another airline flight. That one is going to be the longest DC-6 flight we've ever done. It's a six and a half hour flight from uh, Kolkata, India, all the way to uh, Karachi. Yes. Yes. Ah, uh, that's awesome, Airlock. Thank you. And then Friday group flight. So all the schedule is on Discord. You have a channel in there just for schedules. So you can go check that out. And do stop by the Discord and let's have a chat until the next flight. All right, guys. Let's go do this. Hey, I love you all. Thank you for the support. I hope you stay well. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.